I, I that's what I'm most excited about this season. I can't wait for maybe the third game of the season. I, I don't know when we'll actually get to see those guys go seven, eight, nine for the first time since Abreu will be suspended the first two games. But I I'm I can't wait for that to happen for the first time. I saw a piece by Matt Carwahara in the Houston Chronicle talking about the nasty boys of the early 1990s for the Cincinnati Reds, and I just want the Astros back three to have a, a name like that. Nast, nasty boys? The nasty boys. Let's work on nasty boys, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't, we can't be the nasty. We got to find our own. Well, you got to find a better one. We but... already had Deshaun Watson. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. That's true. Yeah. He is a dirty boy. Not a na- what was it? No, wasn't there their thing Glory Boys, right? Glory Boys. <laughs> no, I don't know. No, they had they had some like nickname for like the Deshaun Watson era like Texans, where it was like him, Will Fuller, and something like that. No, I think you're right, but I don't remember what it, it is. Some Texans, it some terrible Glory Boys. I don't, I don't know. I, I, that's a rabbit hole. I don't know if you want to be googling a company Wi-Fi. You might find things that you don't want to find, Paul Gallant. Mm. <laughs> he doesn't care. Uh, but like last night, the Astros, uh, you know, spring training, it, it was underway. It's still. They played, they played the Space Cowboys, and they lost, Paul. And, yeah. Uh, well, I heard that some people uh, might be uh, panicking. Well, there's there's a hero. There's a hero that's here to just remind you that no matter how good things might be for your really good team, that you're actually effed. And uh, his name is Panic Man. Think your favorite team has it all figured out? Think again. I thought what we had was special. Sure, for now. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Never fear. A superhero is here to remind you why your team's actually f- Up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Panic Man. Did you see the Astros lose last night? Not to a Major League Baseball team! The Space Cowboys? What the F is the Space Cowboy, Joe George? I don't even know what that is! What happened to the Skeeters? They got rid of the mosquitoes, Paul. Panic Man. <sighs> they can't score at home! What the hell? I mean, they're back in Minute Bay Park. They got rid of the Budweiser side or whatever the hell was distracting all these players. What's going on? They're playing against the minor league team. They got its nickname canceled because of malaria or something. What's going on? We can't un- overstate how pathetic it is that they lost to a, a GD minor league team that had to change its name that also airs on ESPN 90. 90- Seven, five, and two, five. Just 92, five. Okay, I got it now. Unbelievable! What are we going to do? We better panic, Joe. That's all Panic Man has for today. I can see <laughs> I sufficiently brought the mood down. Panic Man, away! Wow, that guy. That guy's something else. That guy's freaking out. Very handsome. That guy's really Whoa, worried. Where'd Panic Man go? Now it's just Paul again. Yeah, Paul's back. Got to come back in the studio. Well, I mean, can can we can we at least say like Jesus, I, 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 man above? Can we please, for the love of you know what, everything Houston? Can can we get some runs at home? We're not losing three to one of the Space Cowboys. I, I the, the jokes write themselves. They Look, do. I get it. It's a one time thing. This is this is like a. Uh, um, when I was at Syracuse, Syracuse would occasionally play this little small Catholic college called Lemoyne, and okay. they would lose to Lemoyne every now and then. Like it happened a couple of times, and it was the worst thing ever. It doesn't mean the season's over, but it's embarrassing. Still, it's still embarrassing. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. I don't even know who played last night in, in the uh, Astros uh, Space Cowboys game, but I I hope that we don't have to deal with uh, runs at home issue again this year. I was going to say. I really hope not. Well, I, I really mean, hope not. Would would have been better if they would have lost like seven to six? Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> the guy be- starting was not an Astros starting to open a pitcher or anything like okay. that. Okay, okay. And then because they play the Space Cowboys again, right? Yeah, they play they, tonight. They yeah. have time for the Better run it up. Yeah, we need to bounce back. Yeah, run it would, up. Would have been better if they won then lost? I think losing first the way they lost. Is and like then winning? The, is the worst possible outcome. I mean, look, and it could be worse. I mean, you have another minor league team coming to town on Wednesday. They're schmucks of New York, so you'll you'll be fine. 
They can lose two in a row and bounce back to start the season. Listen, I don't want to. I don't want to be that cocky after losing to that big space Cowboys. <laughs> I mean, Joe. You need we, you need twelve to hours. Minor league team. Twelve hours of you of humility, please. Yeah, we need to. We, need like, a, we, need we can't call the Yankees a minor league team when the Astros <laughs> literally lost to one. Maybe the Space Cowboys should be. Maybe we should have relegation in baseball. Oh, the Space Cowboys are moving up. Do you yeah. think Space Cowboys up? Oakland A's down. There's got to be. At Wouldn't least, beat the Astros now. There's got to be at least. It is because the Astros literally lost there, to them. There's got to be at least one, at least one person in the greater Houston area who prefers the Space Cowboys to the Astros. There's got to be one. And that guy. Congratulations <laughs> the to you, people sir. People of Sugarland. They, they have to be a Sugarland resident. What if they weren't? What if they were like Rosenberg? What if they're Missouri City? Oh, like yeah, that's like Calvin. Close that's close enough. <laughs> it's not technically Sugarland. Though. I know, but it's close enough to where they're they're, they're your more local team. Travis now, Scott is the biggest Sugarland Space Cowboy fan there is. No, you know who, lo- who got the loss last night, right? No, Rafael I Montero. literally don't know who got. Yeah, Rafael Montero. Are you, oh, are you serious? I was I was joking. Yeah, he was. Oh my god! One inning, one hit, <laughs> oh, one earned no. run. Oh, oh no. Rafael Montero started the season with a big fat L. He need he needs. We'll some see run you support. in Sugarland, Rafael oh, Montero. No, no. I know, yeah, against his future team. All right, uh, D'Amico Ryan's Nick Casario. <laughs> all the coaches and GMs are meeting with the media. D'Amico gave us actually, I thought some some interesting tidbits. We'll kind of rapid fire through them next year on Glott and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5.
You are back with Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Paul and Joe. My God. Tell that idiot to shut up. He sounds like a dip bleep. Panic, man. Getting yelled at. Some people just don't respect his art. Other people just feel that he's revealing uncomfortable truths. And the uncomfortable truth yesterday is that the Astros lost to the Sugar Land Space Cowboys, guys. Why was Patrick Crane just yelling at me about the Skeeters? <laughs> Come on, there's no fake New York, real New York accent happening there. Yeah, I didn't say, oh, forget AC, forget about it. Oh, Gabagool. <laughs> Uh, so to, to Patrick Mico, is known to do every other word. D'Amico Ryans was meeting with the media, Aaron, Cody. There's a couple other people out there as well. So I don't want to just uh, those are the tweets I saw. But he, he gave us some insight on, on some stuff that was going on. He did. Um, so obviously the first and me mentioned this just from what we saw from Tank Dell's personal Instagram and stuff like that, that they expect Tank Dell to be ready for offseason workouts. I, I've been thinking about that. What we talked about yesterday a lot, actually. And the, the panic that people have about Tank Dell and his future. I think people need to chill. Need to chill. Why is that? I I was looking back to his college stuff, and he really is a pretty healthy football player. And the concussion, when you go back to it, like that's the play where he gets like upended. It's a really awkward play. And then he gets rolled up on in which, you know, Nico, Noah Brown, anyone that's blocking in that situation potentially breaks their leg. I don't think he, he didn't break his leg just because he's small in stature. In that moment, he got rolled up on. It, it, it happens in football. It should not happen to a no. receiver of his size because I think most people would agree that he shouldn't have been in that spot. Never. And he should never be there ever again. There were some people that were pushing back on that online in the immediacy after it happened. Oh, it's crazy. football. Yes, it is football, but it is bizarre that he was basically in a scrum. Of all the players to put in a scrum... That is one of the guys who was going to do the absolute least for you. The only person on the field who might have done less was kicker Matt Amendola, who, by the way, was a beefcake. Mm -hmm. Matt Amendola was ripped. Like, that was a big guy for a uh, kicker. So, uh, just a thought. But to your point, yeah, the only thing that I really am concerned about him from an injury perspective is getting blasted over the middle mm -hmm. and taking – hits to the head mm -hmm. a la Wes Welker and the amount of hits that he took to the point where at the end of his career, his helmet looked like that of the great kazoo for a dated reference. He's that little green guy from all yep. those Hanna-Barbera mm -hmm. cartoons. His helmet was massive. I think I know that one. Yeah. I think I know that reference. Some people know it. Do you know that reference? I'm dating myself a little bit. No, but weirdly enough, Dell made a reference to that like 45 minutes ago. Oh, so I've heard that's strange. Great kazoos. Okay. But it's, he got rolled up on, but people were talking about him like he's Will Fuller already. And that's where it's a little bit extreme of the need to add a wide receiver because you're worried he's going to be the next Will Fuller. Those are just not – they're not the same thing. They they are not – he he got rolled up on on a bad play. He never should have been in there. There's no reason for him to ever be in that position. If your argument is that you're going to tell the other team that you, they're, you're running the ball when Tank Dell comes off the field – who cares? The Miami Dolphins do not have Tyreek Hill. Jeremy went through all. Jeremy charted all of it for two games where they took the Tyreek off the field every single time they were in the red zone, basically, because they don't care. Because you don't need Tyreek Hill in that situation. Same thing with Tank. And like I get it. Like the morons on Twitch, like they're arguing with me about how this is some dumb bad take because he's small. Get but him. like he got rolled up on. Yeah. He a, a fat guy landed on his leg. And it broke. Like, he didn't tear his hamstring running over the middle of the field. Fuller's hamstring just kept on aggravating itself. And that is an injury that is a recurring one. I'm with you on this front. He's small, so it's going to lend itself to more injury. But I think there's a lot of people out there that are clamoring for another wide receiver entirely because he's small. they think Tank Dell is going to get hurt again, but they're unwilling to say that they think Tank Dell is going to get hurt again. So that's the only logical explanation for going after another wide receiver when you have two good ones already. Yeah. And you have a quarterback like C.J. Stroud who's going to elevate all the receivers around him as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, D'Amico said he doesn't care where Okuda and Henderson were drafted. He likes their length, their sticky coverage. Sticky. Plus, creates some competition. <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't I like call. sticky. They're, they weren't that good, so. 
that's what I'm wondering. What is it that D'Amico Ryan saw from these guys? And when did it? I, I brought this up a couple of times. Was it in the games that the Falcons and Panthers played against the Texans mm-hmm. this past season? But I'm not going to act like I've seen enough film on them to determine whether or not they can have their career salvaged. Did a live stream last night. Brought him up. Some people suggested, well, better spot. Maybe things are different. And they were in pretty bad spots. Henderson, Jaguars, Panthers, Okuda, Lions when the Lions were still turning things around. And most recently, the Falcons, who were not a complete disaster, but obviously were not good last year and had a lot of changes happen in the middle of the year. Yeah. Um, and then he talked about the being tra- trading out of the first round because of the depth. Of, I uh, To this point where they trade out of the first because they want to get the extra assets. I think that I, I like that move a lot that Nick Casura made. And and they should be excited about it. I, I saw people tweeting today some of the, I don't know, second round mock draft stuff that they're seeing. You're looking at a lot of interior offensive linemen, which is what one of the things the Texans need. Interior defensive linemen. If you want a wide receiver, there's going to be good wide receivers there when you pick at 42. There's going to be good corners there when you pick at 42. There will be players available when they pick yeah, at 42. Yeah, like, there are going to be really – this is a really good draft. I think there will be some guys available. Uh, some guys. Yeah, I, I think there might only be – 41 players in this draft. Mm. I, don't I don't know, man. They might just walk up and be like, <laughs> I don't know. The draft S-O-L. just ends there, right? There, yeah. there was only 41 draftable players this year, not 255. I guess yeah. I guess we draft Paul Gallant, safety, short crest preparatory school. Listen, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. And look, a lot of people are doubting a 34-year-old white man playing defensive back, okay? It's like the rookie, but for the NFL. 35 in a couple of weeks. People are doubting him. You've never seen Invincible? Oh yeah, and I am invincible. I, I, I was gonna say like I, I like, am, uh, that, that reference me. was right there. Except for, for yeah. except for I'm taller than Mark Wahlberg and fast. True. Whoa. Would I have stopped 9/11? I'm I'm just asking the question. Well, would that be put on my draft either. stock? <laughs> he, he said he would have. He said he would have. No, on the plane. It wasn't because he was small that he didn't do it. <laughs> was he too <laughs> small he to stop 9/11? No, because he didn't have a flight. Tank Dell too small to stay healthy. Mark Wahlberg too small to stop 9/11. I Good. just saw something that Seth MacFarlane was supposed to be on one of those planes. Did you guys know that? Yes. Yeah, I heard that. I didn't know that. I saw it was, it was like an interview that's going 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 around again. I had no idea about that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, look. Uh, <laughs> Would he know? Seth MacFarlane could he be drafted? Ah, oh, pass. He's, he's he doesn't scream. He doesn't scream athlete. A that B he's, yeah. he's got to be he definitely late screams, 40s. Uh, he definitely screams theater nerd. Well, his hair is still jet black. Cool. He might be still young. So is Mike Sersevsky's. <laughs> like, right. And he's he 50. says he's never dyed his hair. He's 50. So he's never dyed his hair. He was supposed to be on the 9-11 plane, but wasn't. Mm. And still has uh, jet black Are hair. Are these character concerns for his draftability? I don't I know. Think so. I don't know. Okay. I mean, if Caleb Williams painting his nails is a character concern, Seth MacFarlane painting his hair might be. You know what? Caleb Williams is going to be a great football player because he paints his nail- nails. Jalen Green taught Jaylen me Green that. Jalen Green paints his nails. <laughs> Jalen Green taught me that. Great PR run. Great. Like, you know what? Like, paint your nails, be good at basketball all of a sudden. I, I saw when, when I was interviewing, um, you know, part of the media scrum after the game last night where uh, we're all in a oh, circle. And I noticed I noticed the interview, the fingernails, and I was like, good for you. He didn't stop. He didn't stop, and all the haters told you to stop. Be you. Well, I think he's got a sponsorship deal. On his fingernails? I, I If he does... I'm 100 percent pro that. I, 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 that is, hell yeah. I swear, someone told <laughs> me that he has a, money, like he has a like a, a nail polish deal or something like that. Hmm. That's uh, hey. Sh- should we should we do something? Just yeah, are we missing do, something here, Todd? Should, no, should, should we be calling Todd up here? Right. And, and I mean, hey, like I'm, Ulta, like, <laughs> come, like let's go. At us. A lot of people have put me into this box as if I'm like either one in the closet or two metrosexual. And listen, if that helps us make money, I'm I'm totally willing to play along with that. And if we are looking for somebody to endorse here at ESPN 97.5, 92.5, if you want to get your art out in the world, I mean, I'm on Twitch. I'm looking hot today. Yeah. You know, I, I will let you paint my nails. In fact, I'm, I'm thinking about this, Joe, just as we riff and talk about fingernails which okay. every man wants to listen to when they're talking when they're hearing somebody talk sports Jalen Green paints his nails if the, if, the, if, the, if the Rockets make the playoffs check that if the Rockets don't make the playoffs I will paint my fingernails okay but time out clarification here. yeah I, I know you're saying if they don't make the play-in if they, they don't make the play-in I'm just making sure that they, they don't, don't have make to the win, play-in because they have to win two play-in games to make the playoffs I believe if they if they don't make the play-in game I will I will paint my fingernails so if they finish as the 11th seed yeah okay 
we're doing, we're we're making that right now. This yeah, is but a no, full I, tank. I, I believe. Listen, I'm on the bandwagon. I was there last night. They won, even no, though they, they played wait, kind of you, bad. No, didn't, you, didn't you just say if they don't make the plan, you'll paint your fingernails? If they don't make the plan, this is me saying they're going to make the plan. Because I, if they don't make the plan, I will paint my fingernails. Well, I, no, but you should be in support of the Rockets. So when they do make the plan, that's when you paint your fingernails. All right. Work, we're, we're working on this. You know what? Maybe, the, I don't know. You determine. Do I paint my fingernails if they make the playoffs? I think it's or do it. I not paint my fingernails if they make the playoffs? I think if they make the playoffs, he paints them. Well, okay. A, it's the playoffs if you play a seven game series. No, so if they make no, the play in. 10 seed is in the playoffs. They're, they're fighting for the play in. The play in is the, is the yes. crown achievement. Yeah. I just want to, because you're switching between play in and playoffs. It just. The playoffs are the play-in in the NBA. No, they aren't. Yes, because the Rockets are fighting for it. That's what it is. If the Rockets weren't fighting for it, it wouldn't be that. Okay. You know how this works. I, I guess. Uh, Sorry I'm yelling a lot today. It's okay. Long night. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you want me to make the decision? Yeah. Um, I think it's if they make it, because then as, as long as they're in the play-in slash playoffs, yeah, cause you, have to keep, you have to keep solid, painted. Yeah, because we don't want to view it as a punishment, because obviously it isn't. That's look true. At, look at yeah. Jalen Green. That's true. Yeah. We're, so we're, we're celebrating the Rockets. Okay, yeah. thank, thank so you guys for bringing do. me to the light, because yeah. here here I was, you know. There's a show meeting right, right there in the yep. middle of the show. It, it was, yep. but it was a good show meeting. It was productive. and, and More you know productive. What, than you know what we usual. learned? We learned to not shame people for their appearances, yeah. and that we should embrace what makes people different. Yep. That's what we did. And That's the Rockets winning. We embraced the Rockets we winning. And we'll discuss that next here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. First, let me tell you about my friends at Highway Cantina. So, I went to this place a couple of times last week. The first time I went, I had their Texas margarita. I have found my margarita solution for whenever I go over to the ballpark to watch a little baseball. It's nine seventy five. Coincidence? That price? It's fantastic. They put some special stuff in it. You got to try it out for yourself. But Highway Cantina is so much more than a place to get margaritas before going to a game downtown. This is a place that has a fantastic array of food. I think a lot of people, when you go and get fajitas, you're looking for generally beef, right? Like Beef is the best. This is the best chicken fajita I've ever had. I don't know what they do with the spice or the seasoning or whatever, but it is so good. And this is a really just, it's a casual experience with fantastic food here at Highway Cantina. So if you're looking for something to do in East Downtown, whether it's a happy hour with some people from work, looking to impress the boss with a big meeting, or you're looking to go to a game, I'm telling you right now, this is one of the best restaurants I've been to in Houston. And I'm not making that up. In a place that has as many good restaurants, Highway Cantina. It's fantastic. Check it out. It's on St. Emanuel. It's right by the basketball and the baseball arenas. Highway Cantina. Treat yourself.
It's Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Paul Gallant and Joe George. Rockets got another W last night. Paul, you were in attendance. I was. How were the vibes? I know you were curious before the game. By the second half, the crowd was full. That's just a downtown Houston thing. Yep. Always late arriving. But in the second half, that's where Jalen Green took off. It was a weird game because Dylan Brooks, Fred Van Vliet, and Green were awful in the first half. They were three for 21 at one point. It's not good. Guess what? the most points in the first quarter? Uh, was it Jock? Jock Landale had 15 points and was perfect from the field in the first quarter. Hey. Didn't he end with, like, 17? He ended yeah, with yeah. 17. I oh, feel yeah. bad for him. He had a chance to hit a corner three in the last oh, minute yeah, he to get 20, and he passed it up. And he seemed mad that it got passed to him. Too classy to to take that three. He doesn't want to fight. He doesn't want Dylan Brooks to fight. And he's passing up on a chance for 20. I mean, that was probably the best quarter of his career. The first per- quarter? <laughs> perfect from the field, 15 points. It, it, was, it was a big game for the bench. Like, the bench actually stepped up where – the starters were not playing well. Aaron Holiday had some nice moments. Um, also, uh, Jay Sean Tate. Jay Sean Tate mm-hmm. had a couple of good moments as well. And Amon Thompson made some things happen. But once Jalen Green hit a three-pointer and on the very next play, basically uh, uh, picked off a pass like he was a defensive back and just blew past yeah. everyone on the court going like 100 miles per hour. Coast looked like coast. the fastest person in basketball. This is John Wall-style speed. And he just hammers home a dunk. And when that happened, you knew the game was over. Yeah. So Blazers are not good. It took the Rockets a while to get going. But I thought what was interesting was the way that Jalen Green responded after having a dreadful first half, actually having a very good second half. And that's why, to me, in a weird way, this game is like, this game carries more weight. And I feel more positive about Jalen's game on a game like today than when he hits a bunch of threes against the Wizards or, you know, is just killing some other bum team. It's like, this was actually a game where stars will have from time to time where in the first half is not a good game. And then you come out in the second half and you respond and you do enough to give your team even just like, not just the actual scoring, but just kind of give them the juice. Like you're saying, hitting the three, getting the, uh, the uh, transition dunk on the next play, like getting these kind of plays that, you know, you look at the stat line, you're like, uh, you know, not, not really a great night, but the way the where his makes were concentrated seemed like the most important time for the Rockets to make a run. They blew out the Blazers in the third and fourth quarter. And that's what you need from your, your best player. It, yeah. On a bad night, you could rely on you can rely on Luca. You can rely on Giannis. You can rely on you know going back to Kobe or Tim Duncan. And not that Jalen Green's in those categories, obviously, but if he's supposed to be the best player on your team. When they're struggling, that's fine. But in the second half of a game or in clutch moments, you still have to trust that player to come through. And, and they did last night. And now they're a half game back of the Warriors uh, of the playing tournament. They play and, Miami tonight at 630. Yeah, and, and Miami is kind of had a weird season. But, you know, they're clearly – they're in, they're a seventh seed right now in the East. It's still Miami. Exactly. You know it's going to yeah. be a tough out for Golden State. Right. It's it's both of these teams are not what they used to be, but the name brand still holds and you do expect them at the very least to be competent and not morons out there. And Wednesday night is and we'll we'll go back to the Rockets War stuff here in a second, but the the Thunder game on Wednesday, I can't wait for. This is cuz this feels like the first test. Like uh, the real the real real test of the way the Rockets are playing and to now go against the Thunder who are a very very good basketball team this year and seeing what the last week or two is, how that can translate to tomorrow night's game. Uh, Udoka said that, hey, we've played some good teams over this stretch when asked that same question after the game. But at the same time, I, I think he knows that this is different. This one it is, is very much different, especially with the way that Green is playing right now against a team that has some – very good defensive players you know like do you want to drive through the lane while chet holmgren's range isn't anywhere near you Mm -hmm. and and 
you know, same with SGA. Like there, there's some yeah. good, there's some good defenders. Got, on Got to do it against Lou Dort to show me, show me something. Do they Lou still have Dort. Lou Dort. Yeah, I forgot they. Got he's, awesome. a, yeah. he's on a pretty good contract. Defense only, Lou Dort. Oh well, that was 2020 Lou Dort. Oh, 2020 Lou Dort now is he's not 20. Little, he's evolved. He's got, a, he's got a little offense now. He's yeah. got a little offense. Yeah. He's oh, gonna boy. make. He's gonna make some threes. Remember when he just open? He terrorized James Harden. In that series, in the bubble, well, but so the Thunder are any defensive mastermind can do that. Sure, it's not that challenging. He's yeah. got just got try to hard defense and try hard, and he'll be like, oh, I can't pull up. Oh. So the Rockets are are two and are one and two against the Thunder this year before tomorrow night's game. But um, with, with the Warriors and chasing after them, there's been a couple comments that were were um, bulletin board material, I guess you could say. I I think the bulletin board material of of today's world is much. It takes much less to be well, considered yeah. that. Just take a look at like soft. every single Chiefs Bengals story over yeah. the last two years. Like look all their studio ball. <laughs> uh but Draymond Green was asked if he's even thinking about the Houston Rockets, and here's what he had to say. How much are you now kind of tracking the Rockets? No, I don't give a damn about the Rockets. I love the answer. It's the correct answer. It is. I, I mean if worry if about you, yourself. If you want to compare it to Jalen Green after the game, it, Jalen Green at that media scrum, and, and Sean, we've got that. Uh, he was asked by Adam Spillane about um, – he was specifically asked – sorry, I'm having a brain fart all of a sudden. No, he was asked was about t- uh, if teams should start taking notice. Exactly. It was, it was basically, sh- hey, what's the last game – what can you take away from the OKC games that you've played before? Here he is. I'm playing a whole different style of basketball right now. So, uh, like I said, just just focus on doing what we're doing and um, you know, putting defense first. Jalen is uh, nine straight for this team. Or are you guys at the point where maybe other teams should be paying attention? To what yeah, you got yeah, for sure. They need to start paying attention. For sure. <laughs> These tightening play and standings, is that something you guys are talking about and aware of at yeah, this point? Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm looking at it every day. I, I was watching the words last night. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, we're making a push. We got to go, like I said before, and we execute it. So, we just got to stay the course. Thanks. So, you'll be locked into the Warriors Thank tomorrow you. night, too? Yeah, for sure. So, the last two comments I like is, all right, he's, he's 21 years old. I like that he's being honest. And he's saying, yeah, we want teams to take notice. Because of Draymond's not telling the truth. Yeah, he's I think trying to be Draymond Green. You're also yeah. if you're if you're the Warriors, you're four time champions. You won two years ago, so it's not even like ancient history that you've won championships. Being like, yeah, we're worried about the eleven seed, like some eleven seed with twenty two year olds as their best players. Like, like he has to. You have to project the no. We're worried about ourselves. If we play like ourselves, it doesn't matter how many games in a row they win. Like mm-hmm. we're. We're the Warriors. We're gonna figure it out. But if you're the Rockets, you're like, yeah, I want, <laughs> I want to put the league on notice. Yeah, this is this is a city's under new management. You don't you don't want to be, you know, yeah, we'll we'll be back to the Rockets that we used to be. And it's like, no, no, no. The Warriors want to be the old Warriors. The Rockets don't want to be the old Rockets. I, speaking of the old Rockets, I, I also thought interesting in those uh, words from Jalen Green when asked about how those games against OKC relate to this game that's coming up tomorrow. And he said, we're playing a whole different style of basketball right now. And I think that is a loaded comment because that could be basically confirmation of his interactions with a couple of local Rockets media, right? I mean, he said, they're not using me right. And now all of a sudden, the way that they are playing, where you can run up and down the court and there's no traffic, essentially, it has been working better for him. So I imagine when he said that, yeah, he's thinking, okay, well, obviously things are different than the last times that we played against Oklahoma City. But with the way he's playing right now, why wouldn't you be confident that this is the right way to go about it when you're putting up as many points as he did? I mean, he had 19 points in the second half after a wretched first. You yeah, know, man. on pace for his, like, 36 points a game kind of night that we've been expecting out of him the last couple of weeks. They're 11-13, and 13, uh, or 11, and they've won 11 of 13 since they last played the Thunder on February 27th. So it, it's, it's been, it'll be a month tomorrow since the last time they've played. But they are. They're playing totally different basketball. This is a totally different basketball team. It's not just because Alpi's out. The defensive effort 
the style which they're playing, the pace that they're playing. I know that the pace numbers look the same, but the way that they move up and down the court with effort and speed is so different yeah, than they, it was before. The people are, the players are actually moving faster. Yes. <laughs> like they're actually just moving faster. It's the same amount of like fast breaks. It's just, I mean, you, you have Amin Thompson and Jalen Green running up. Now. Yeah, you have some freaks. Thompson's a freak. Uh, it, yeah. it, it's something else to see him in person because he's awesome. He's playing center and you see him on the court and he's not as tall as you would expect him in person. When you watch on TV, though, he seems like he's six foot nine, even though he's what six six. Yeah, six six, six seven range. Yeah. And then uh, before the game, Ime Adoka was asked about Jabari Smith Jr. suspension. He this. said, "Quote: If a guy grabs you, you're gonna react, but the throwing punches is the thing. So he'll learn from that. If you're not gonna land the punch, you might as well not throw it. <laughs> Hell yeah, I like that. Y- he's right. If you're gonna throw a punch and get suspended, you better connect. So he's not." telling guys to punch never he's saying if you punch connect yeah yeah he's saying don't don't punch if you're not gonna hit him yeah <laughs> like who like who knocked out tim anderson last year tim anderson did not connect a single uh, punch jose Bray? and then or no oh, jose, jose ramirez. ramirez and then jose ramirez okay. knocked him out or when R- rugnet odor got punched in the face no, oh, no he, he punched Jose someone in the face yeah. Bautista. Uh, Bautista that's right he punched yes thought it was gonna be talking and it was not so if you're going to throw well, a punch, with those fists. you better land them. I agree, Adoka. That's a great philosophy. I mean, how about just if you're in the NBA and you're going to fight, how about you actually have to fight? Can, can we stop the hold me back? Like, how would those NBA players feel if all of a sudden the hold me back guys are just being essentially like in Gladiator where Commodus and Maximus are in the middle and Commodus is like, help me out, guys. Come on. Come on. It's not funny anymore. And then he gets stabbed in the neck by his own knife by uh, Maximus. Like, I, I, w- I don't want to see that violence, but I do want to see everyone who's being like who's supposed to be holding back. I want to see them sit back and to see what actually happens. Yeah, and, and don't let the refs in. Like no, uh, just let it just just let them just let them agree to mutual combat. Yeah. We're in Texas. You can do that here. If they bring basketball back to Seattle, you can do it there. It's just there are rules. like the NHL. Like, like, bring bring fighting back to basketball. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it uh, back. Just because uh, Rudy T got smoked that one time, yeah. there's no reason to stop it forever. And the malice in the palace. Yeah. Know. Yeah, but just don't involve the fans. Just punch. Just punch the players. Punching the fans is kind yeah. of funny. Yeah. I mean, if that one punch. <laughs> the guy landed, that looked like that, Turtle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Turtle yeah, would have yeah, died yeah. if that punch would have landed. That that was thing was flying in. All right. When we get back, in case you missed it, all the stuff we missed over the weekend and yesterday that didn't happen and that we did not talk about, we'll discuss next. But before we do. We'll tell you about our friends at LaBerge Lake Charles. Sean, Brian, myself, we're there this weekend. It's an awesome spot if you want to go bet on games, if you want to go to a casino. Both those things were incredible. We had a great time. They have a 24-foot video wall, 19 betting kiosks, 22 slot machines. They have dining and drink specials, and there's 45 televisions to watch games. So they have all you need to watch and bet games. Plus, when you're there, you can download the ESPN Bet app, you know, if you just want to drive over the border and make some bets and come back, you can do that too. But the ESPN Bet app is what you can download to bet remotely while you're there. So you can go to the kiosk if you want. You can go to the counter, or you can just download the ESPN Bet app. So any way you want to bet, you can do it there. Plus, if you're not a Pen Play Rewards member, make sure you become one today. Download the app, and when you do, you can win up to two thousand dollars in Pen Play cash. Plan your next trip to La Burge Casino Resort Lake Charles. And download the Pen Play app to start earning rewards today.
Patino expected to be named next head coach at Louisville. Get out. His son. Oh, <laughs> oh that's cheating. Oh. Gotcha. I, no, I was about to say ball sack sports. No. But then I realized I can't just say ball sack after the word patino. <laughs> well, you just did. Well, I, I guess I said before. <laughs> yeah, and so, I said I can't say it. Uh, Richard Patino, I guess, is going to be the next head coach at Louisville. He's as merge as the top Why candidate. not just hire Rick? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> If you're gonna do it, you might as well just go all the way. The Red Sox brought back Alex Cora. Yeah. Like, why, why not? Why not? Uh, why not? Uh, USA beat Mexico this weekend in, in the Concacaf Nations League final. That sounds made up, but it did happen. It was up the road in Dallas. Yeah, it does sound made up. It is made up. There were lots of moments that some would say marred the match, specifically. Lots of battling going on. Yeah. One man went viral. He tweeted a picture of himself leaking all over the place with a caption saying that after Mexico uh, officially lost, fans started throwing beer. Someone threw a battery or a beer can, but he had to get five staples for that. There was some brawling going on upstairs. And the game was suspended in the last two moments, uh, two minutes, because, as generally happens with Mexico soccer fans, there were homophobic slurs. Mm. And I saw batteries being thrown, too. Fans had stuff thrown at them as well. Stuff. It's not good. I don't understand. But USA wins. Yeah. Feels like feels like USA kind of always beats Mexico. It's true. These days. Especially recently. The U.S. has actually, I think, lapped Mexico. I feel like that doesn't help the... The batteries and slurs. Definitely not. <laughs> I feel. Like, I feel like there'd be less if they were winning. They have, of course, that one thing that they say whenever there's a goal kick that is in Latin American culture not as big of a deal as it is in American American <laughs> culture. So uh, there you go. Uh, last night, a uh, women's basketball player for Stanford, uh, Cameron Brink, got thrown out of a basketball game. And she just yelled, bleep you, right at the ref. And I watched this video, and it was awesome. I think we need more of this. I mean, you're already being thrown out. Yeah, and I think... What are they going to do? The season's she, over. She's a senior, too, so she's yeah. never going to play again. So is that how you want your career to end? Telling yes. your ref to go F herself? You throw me out of the game, my last college basketball game, I'm telling you to bleep off. It's, uh, yeah, it's senioritis. Yeah. I would have regret about doing something like that in the week afterwards. I would, in the moment, feel great about doing it, but I would feel bad. As long as you don't get week. teed up, it's fine. Well, yeah, especially if yeah, you cast your team even further because of a tee up or something like that. I think Stanford ended up winning too. Oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, so then maybe this is a bad idea then. If they won, you have to lose the game because now you might be suspended if they won the game last night. So that that's bad. That's not good. Oh, uh, Vince Young got knocked out. Yeah, yeah Tokyo Joe's Whoa. shop bar. That's over on 19th and 20th, where I regularly go to. It's been yeah. a while since I've been, been there. Could have been you. Could have yeah. could have been me. Well, it could have been me, like Mark Wahlberg stopping 9-11. Yeah. It could have been you me save Vince who Young. stepped in for Vince Young. If I stepped in for Vince Young, would I be part of his friend group? Do you think he'd bring me around? Yeah. I think if you took a... If, I would call it a sucker punch. Just ba It's a kind of a grainy video, but... Yeah, because there's a confrontation. It's, it's but unclear. It's unclear. I think it's a sucker punch. De it depends on Vince's involvement in this fight. Yeah, Whether, if he's being a peacemaker here, then it's a it's not a great look for the punch thrower. But if he if the I don't know, I couldn't make out like what happened. I I kind of the only video I saw was as it was already cracking off. Yeah, so literally yeah. cracking off. Yeah. On, Vince it, Young's face. It's hard to tell, but yeah, he got he got knocked out. It didn't look. It good. was like asleep too. He got he got knocked out like some of the dudes in Roadhouse. Mm -hmm. By the way, I saw Roadhouse. Oh, in I'm case a, you missed. I'm gonna watch it tonight. Did you like it? It was good. Yeah, well, it was pretty I, good. I, I it, it does what it needs to do. Lots of violence. Conor Very McGregor, mindless. Conor McGregor. It feels like they just kind of put cameras on Conor McGregor and said, "Go do your thing." Do you Kobe think? Connor. Improv. Yeah, Carlton. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to watch it tonight. <laughs> try. Yeah. I'll do my best. Um, <laughs> have you seen Dune 2 yet? Nope. What's this? I can watch this one at home. I don't have an excuse for this one. I have you seen anything? I've seen a lot of things. Dune 2 is just not one of them. Yeah, but you're going to go watch a Marvel movie. 
Well, the next Marvel movie doesn't come out till when's Deadpool come out? July. Oh, that doesn't. Mar- that's not a Marvel movie though. Yeah. So I got. It's I got not really a Marvel I got, movie. I got plenty of time. Now it's a Disney movie. Okay. Is uh. Is P. Diddy in watching his airplane fly to a different country this generation's version of OJ? <laughs> well, sadly, we don't have a drone that's flying behind the private jet. Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't break into uh, R- Rocket's Trailblazers True. to do it. Yeah, so right. P. Diddy, his home got raided. His home's in LA and Miami got raided as part of a sex trafficking investigation. And then his jet flew to Antigua. Right. Right but, away. But supposedly... Even though his jet went to Antigua, he was seen at a Miami airport. So maybe yeah. he flew back. I don't know. It's a good question. I would assume he's just gone. Gone? Like, well, at least for now. He's until, trying to be until gone. the heat dies off. I don't know. Can you, I mean, I guess even you go to Antigua because they what would no- you do if you, your house was raided for sex trafficking? Hypothetically, uh, of course. How would I wiggle my way out? How would of you that, get out of that? that uh, if I had a jet and a lot of money like P Diddy, I would fly to a country with no extradition. And I think uh, I think P Diddy's uh, falling <laughs> like, the, fall the Joe George playbook. <laughs> I, I think I think that's your only option if you have but, that much money. I mean, the CIA could always get you, of or the FBI, they can. or whatever. But you're too. If you're P Diddy, you are too high profile to hide anywhere. Yeah, I mean they track. Well, you don't. Plane. You don't have to hide. You just have to be in a place where the government, where that that place's government won't give you. To yeah, the you American. have you have to pay that government enough to not let the CIA get to you. But he's not the kind of person that would be able to go off on his own. He's gonna have like a crew of people. They, well, there's yeah. definitely some person they could get as an inside man that could take him down. Yeah, because they will focus on this or, as opposed to I don't know fixing bridges and stuff. Oh yeah. The, does the CIA run bridges? No, but did you see the bridge? It's yeah. The federal government. Okay, I'm just making sure, Sean, because that was. It's just a, it's a, it's a funny either or for the CIA to have two bridges, two envelopes on their on their desk, and it's bridges in Baltimore. Look, I got questions. P Diddy. All I know is that there's this viral TikTok going around that apparently P Diddy's uh, main security guard was Michael Jackson's the day he died. So I have questions. I don't know if they're connected or not, <laughs> but I have questions. I don't know. I don't know what it means. <laughs> You're just throwing something out there. I just saying, have questions. I don't know what it means. Connect the dots. But there's people are saying there's connections. I saw a TikTok. Yeah. yeah. That, followed by yeah. anything. A, a, we don't yeah. know if this is even true. B. That, no, it, that's part true. That he, he was Michael Jackson's security when he died. Okay. Based sure off this is. TikTok. Based off of this TikTok. Yep. It's true. It's on TikTok. It's real. You got to get off TikTok. That's why the government's trying to ban it because it's it's truth. Because they're giving the truth out there. Of, about who? <laughs> and you're falling hook, line, and sinker for about it. About who P Diddy's? <laughs> yeah. You're the reason yeah. that people get the same misinformation and disinformation as a get out of jail free card. I'm just could, saying. I've questioned. You just see. The, <laughs> yeah, I can tell. A 90 second TikTok about. Yeah. <laughs> about zooming mm-hmm. in on pictures of of Michael Jackson and P Diddy. Yep. Being like, you connect the dots. You connect the dots. <laughs> Which is not a not a conspiracy theory. No. There's literally no theory here. I should be I, that's what I should do. I should I should focus on being a conspiracy theory TikToker. Honestly, you'd probably make bank. Yeah, probably. For Those the people they have months, so many the, views. The, the app shuts down. Yeah, before yeah. TikTok gets like, you burns get to the, the ground. App shut down if yeah. you do that. All right. Uh, the Astros play in two days are countdown counting down to those final minutes. Until opening day is next year on ESPN 97.5 and 
Come on, George, on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5, hour two of the show. Um, I, Sorry if I went too too deep there on the conspiracy theories, guys. I Keep going. Worry. I would uh, say you didn't go deep enough. Yeah. That, that's our real problem is that you just said <laughs> Michael Jackson and P. Diddy had the same security guy. And you some, connect the dots. I don't know, sex trafficking, Michael Jackson, P. Diddy, security guards the same. I don't think there was anything with Michael so, Jackson on wait, that Wait, so is the security guard the sex trafficker? I don't know. I think he's just around when bad things are happening to people. That's what I think's happening. So he might be a bad security but guard. But think of all the good times <laughs> in yeah. the 15 years between those two. Can we talk about P. Diddy? He's not that good, for the record. I'm not a P. See, now, he doesn't seem like a good guy. This is an actual take. This is good. I yeah. don't like P. Diddy's music. What does he sing? I couldn't even tell you. Like, I don't. Bad Boys for Life, which yeah. uh, has a new meeting now. Uh, he, he did that. <laughs> he did that one song, right? That was a remix of uh, "That's Just the Way It Is" by mm-hmm. Bruce Hornsby and the Range, right? Mm-hmm. That's just the way it is. Things will never be the same. That's just the way it's oh, yeah. Is that changes? That's by actually Tupac? changes by Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> <That's the wrong. laughs> Listen, uh, okay. you want more musical takes like this and some TikTok takes from Joe George? Like this is this is what this show. This is, is all the about. place for you. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is the this place, is for, place you. for you. <laughs> all right, and our Astros opening day countdown. Also the place for you. <laughs> By the way, his name is Diddy. It's just Diddy now? It's Diddy. And is he like Ron Artest and just keeps changing it? Can't change his name? Maybe. So the song I was thinking of was a remix of uh, I'll Be Watching You called I'll Be Missing You. Because it was about a dead person. So I was kind of warm. Yeah, but you were. All s- knows music. <laughs> Yeah. Now that's what Paul calls music Album 12 0754 That's Tupac D that's, Tupac that's... P. Diddy There is a difference actually There is a difference One of them's a, dead A big one <laughs> yeah. A big difference Well wasn't he with Tupac tonight He died No He wasn't No No but some have theories That you can that probably go down on Shug TikTok night. for I thought No I thought he was at the I thought he was at the fight that night too he... I can't remember I love all those shows They finally arrested the Keefe D like a month ago, on murdering Tupac. All right, Astros countdown. Uh, so, oh, best opening day plans are what? Where are you going before the game, Paul? We Highway know your Cantina. Highway Cantina. I'll also. Well, we'll also be at the decoy. But I'm going to Highway Cantina. Uh, so if you're going to the game, go to Highway Cantina. Right. If you live in that area, go to Highway Cantina, or come hang out with us at the decoy. Yeah. Because the Killer Bees will be there. Hell yeah. Six to watch the game. And do their show. We'll be there. So come hang out no, too hang when out, they open. Hang out with us at the decoy. And then hang out with us at Highway Canteen. Yeah, Hell do yeah. both. And leave yeah. leave the Killer Beast to do their own. Yeah, the yeah, Killer Beast. Uh, yeah, come hang out. We'll 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 go with you guys. We'll caravan. I'm not gonna drive any of you. <laughs> no free rides. Yeah, no free rides. You can call your own Ubers to make sure you can get there. <laughs> yeah. You're basically like, Yeah, we'll drive you. No, no, no we no, will no. not. No, you can follow us. We will not. You I, can follow Paul. Don't don't follow me. Don't follow me, please. You don't like when people follow you and, and see you and don't tell you? I don't want people to follow me. No, I like to surprise people and just show up places and then Irish exit out. I, Irish exiting is great. Something I've learned I love in life. Do you do it to, will you do it to everyone, like at a party? I or... will generally tell my closest friends that I'm out. Okay, but then like the, the non-closest friends, you might just... Yeah, I used to feel the need to say bye to everybody, but then you end up saying bye to people twice. F that. Yeah, or you say bye, and then you get stuck in one last conversation. It kind of defeats the purpose of saying bye to everyone. It's best to do what Paul does. Uh, best place to watch a game at Minute Maid is where? Do you like the Crawford Box? The Hornitos Bar. Yep, yeah. very good. That's why the Astros have been distracted all these years and why they're losing to the Space Cowboys at home. It's because they're distracted because they see that there's – and El Tiempo in center field. Mm, and they're just like, ready. They're like, I'd rather be there. I, I want to, you know, all these fans rushing onto the field, I want to rush into the stands. Get that frozen, delicious goodness that's way better at Highway Canteen. Mm, sounds pretty good. I'm so excited that I'm not going to be trapped 
and pressured by the existence of, you know, that place at Minute Maid Park because I know that I can just go to Highway Cantina now. For a way, for, for a much more reasonable price. A reasonable price, margarita. I'm going to go in there before the game. I'm margaritaed up. I'm ready to go. I, mean, I, don't, need a, I don't need a second one. We, we are a professional journalist. And this way, I won't be drinking with a credential anymore. I will say it's almost two for the price of one. It is two for the price of one. It's got to be pretty close. I don't know how much they're extending. Texas sized. The El Tiempo yeah, prices this Texas year at the ballpark. Um, do you, are you a Crawford Boxes guy when you go to, a, like, if you go as a fan? No. No, I don't want to pay for those. No. Yeah, I've never been to the you, you can't, and you can't really watch from behind the Crawford Boxes, uh, boxes either. You, you kind of have to, there's like a, there's a rope essentially, and you have to basically see past everybody who's generally standing in that yeah. back row. So you can't really see from that area. Uh, what is your belief in the um, when when you look at this this team this year? What is your belief that Kyle Tucker is going to be like an MVP level player this year? Do you think he's going to be close to that and can like really carry this team from that from I don't know, third in the lineup, maybe fourth, uh, maybe. I, I, but honestly, I don't know. The playoffs don't have me feeling great. Yeah, you you right seem now. more down on 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 Tucker than most. I feel like that's something I'm learning about you. Well, I mean, he sucked in the playoffs. No, it's true. It's, mo- it's what have you done for me lately? And okay, if he has a good regular season again, like he did last year, does that make me feel better about giving him an extension? Yeah. Uh, to an extent, yes. I guess it's sort of a question of all right. Well, what do you expect from your outfielders that are in the minors? Going forward, and and are you expecting him to actually put it together in the playoffs when he needs to? And he just did not at any point last year. I'm not sure if this is a, a, a weird take or anything, but I'm almost more confident that they would find a way to keep Bregman over Tucker Why is at that? this point. I still think there's some loyalty to the that 2017 team. And Springer and Correa, those guys, it was pretty clear to let them walk because of their health. They, and they and they really made the right decisions. Where Bregman's on the field, and and yes, his numbers are not what they were when he almost won the MVP in 2019. But he's still one of the best third basemen in baseball. He's still very consistent with the bat. He has one of the best eyes in all of baseball. I just wonder if Jim Crane would rather go short term deal for Bregman than long term for Tucker and, and Junior Bronco. With a good point. It is easier to replace an outfielder. They've been hyping up uh, as well some of their outfield prospects of late. Big time. So I, I think when you look at Tucker, feels like they're already preparing us for two years from now. A world without him. With Bregman, I do not legitimately know what your alternative is unless they're trying to hype up Joey Loperfito into being like yeah, the third or, baseman of the or future. Or Will Wagner. Already. Right. And they're just they're prospects. Yep. Like the, until they until they show up, because you it, prospects are such it's such a such a crapshoot. Look look at Jeremy Pena. People didn't know who Jeremy Pena was. Very few people did. And then he came up and he had an absolutely incredible rookie season, and he won the ALCS MVP and the World Series MVP. Mm-hmm. There's no reason why Will Wagner in theory couldn't do that to replace Alex Bregman or Bryce Matthews, who took in the first round what last year. Maybe he has a big time you know, spring training. And that's the guy that they've mentioned by name and that everyone seems to be talking about on that front when it comes to a potential Tucker replacement. I wonder what Tucker can realistically get. I know you've been off on um, Boris of late and what any baseball player can get on the open market. So um, maybe that helps the Astros out, but uh, I will be intrigued to see if they decide to do a deal with Bregman over a deal with Tucker, but I think we're gonna have to wait and see and find out on that one. Yeah, because Tucker still feels like a ten-year deal, or eight-year deal. That's what he'd be looking for, probably. Yeah, I would imagine if he hits the open market, that it is it is going to be a much larger, much more expensive, and long-term deal. And those are just clearly things that Jim Crane does not believe in. Even though I've always been fascinated by what would Jeff Luna have done when yeah. he was here, like what would he have done with Correa and Springer? What ended up happening? Would would Luna have traded them? Will Luna have found a way to get them a deal done? I, I've always been curious. I wish there was a way to remove the cheating scandal just because of that. Because none of the things haven't continued to go re- very well for the Astros. But it, it just, it would be interesting to see someone yeah. analytically driven what they would have done. All right. Otani met with the media yesterday, I guess. Um, he, he spoke 
yesterday to the media with a prepared statement. But he also wasn't the only betting scandal in the news yesterday. We'll discuss that next year on ESPN 97.5 and 925. This is Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Now back to Paul and Joe inside the Veritex Community Bank Studios. Looks like it's officially official that Cal McNair is now the controlling owner of the Houston Texans. That was voted on today. The Houston Texans just released a couple statements, one from Han- from Janice and the one from Cal. So Cal McNair officially in charge. Pretty funny how far we've come with Cal McNair over the last couple of years from so many here, Mm -hmm. specifically point at Joel Blank, acting like the man was incompetent to where we are now, where with a little help from Hannah McNair, of course, you look at the Texans as very well run. Obviously, a head coach can do that. Obviously, a quarterback can do that. Obviously, flushing Jack used to be down the drain can do that. Obviously, getting rid of Bill O'Brien's all-time bad vibes guy can do that so lots of changes have happened but i would say that through it all were the texans ever cheap no, no. robert Kraft. i mean they, they never had to do what robert Kraft did today robert Kraft had to publicly basically apologize he said he uh he re, he he read the the nflpa report and realized that he was just getting dumped on by his players by their facilities and stuff and realized he said i think he said that things were not as bad as he realized 
uh, with the facilities and everything. I thought he was going to apologize for the documentary. That's <laughs> that was, what that he should have apologized what I for. He, was gonna he should have apologized for that. I've I've never done as much of a 180 on a guy as I have. After really? Just all the details from this. Yeah. Interesting. I, I get, like you saved the team, but like, dude, you did not have nearly as much to do with what went down over that 20 year stretch as you tried to portray in that documentary from what I understand. And I don't even want to watch it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to dislike him anymore. I'm already mad about the documentary, just glossing over a 21 game winning streak with two Super Bowls, for God's sake. So Shohei Otani met with the media or he was in a room and the media happened to be there. Uh, the, there was no cameras allowed. He read a statement. The interpreter would relay what he was saying. I, He's either the, the biggest liar and fraud on the planet, or he's an idiot. I really don't think there's any other choices. He is either the most naive, dumb person in sports because he's saying that Ipe, his interpreter, was just stealing money out of his account. I, I guess I don't really, maybe I really don't understand the relationship, Paul, between a person and their interpreter. But giving someone your bank account information when they're just your interpreter doesn't really add up to me. I I just I really had I struggled like with what he said because it really makes no sense, honestly. It's very fair to be suspicious of this entire thing. I watched the press conference. They've got a new interpreter out there because remember, Shohei Otani at least doesn't feel confident enough in his grasp of English to actually speak and explain his side of the story so he's relying on somebody else to once again relay it for him you know whether he was as you said a naive idiot or he's lying to people what i can't get past and and i touched on this yesterday if you have that much money and you've been in the united states for this long how the hell have you made practically zero effort to learn English or get better at learning a language in a country where you now live? And I don't ask that to be xenophobic. I ask that because if you watch this press conference, it is very clear that he was the last to know about everything Mm -hmm. because he did not have an understanding of English. There was a team meeting in the Dodgers clubhouse, and what he's claiming is that He had no idea what this meeting was about. He didn't 100% know why the spokesperson for the Dodgers was speaking to everybody and why his interpreter was speaking in English to the rest of the Dodgers. He found out, based off of this press conference he did, about everything after the fact. And if we are to believe him, and I suppose we have to now because there's no other facts out there, to me, it's, it's just another, like, reality check dude why didn't you try to learn this language mm-hmm. what were you doing and i do rich people really not look at their bank accounts ever they just realize that there's five hundred thousand dollars missing twice maybe not every single day because if you were making what shohei otani makes yeah does it I mean, even make it so much is it money. even a blip if you lose what five yeah. million dollars that, that part is like weirdly the most believable part. i guess is you're that, probably like, right 500 grand could just leave his bank account and he's like I, I don't know did i did I have to pay like whatever property tax today? <laughs> like it's just like oh, okay. Is that is that uh whatever? Is that just coming out of my paycheck? <laughs> like I, I don't know. But uh yeah, Ot- this I feel like a lot of it is it, there is a cover up, but I I don't know if the cover up is him betting or him paying an illegal bookie, like basically paying for Ipe's like uh gambling debt mm-hmm. and. His lawyers being like, yeah, it doesn't matter that you're paying for someone's debt. It's still illegal to wire someone four and a half million, do- uh, an illegal bulk- bookie, four and a half million dollars. And that's why, like, there's a weird cover up going on. I feel like that's more likely than he's actually a degenerate gambler, you know? Yes. Because I feel like there'd be more pointing at him if he was a degenerate gambler. Because, like, if we're being honest, like, we'll talk about the Jonte Porter story, like, most of these guys are kind of dumb when they get caught. Like, these guys get caught in the stupidest ways possible. Like that uh, Kayshawn Bouti, the uh, LSU receiver who played for the Patriots, who signed up for a, whatever, a DraftKings thing mm-hmm. with his mom's name. 
and his mom has the same last name as him. Uh oh. Like like all these, all these guys get caught in the stupidest ways possible. So the fact that there isn't like some easy like A to B how he gets caught makes me think that like he might not have actually gambled. Maybe he was more aware than he's letting on, but I th- I don't know if he's like the Pete Rose of baseball, or I guess Pete Rose 2.0. No, yeah, I mean, no. the one thing that's been the most consistent, because Otani's story from what originally was reported by ESPN to what's being said now, because the timelines are kind of contradicting themselves, the only thing that's been consistent is that there's been nobody on baseball. So that's where... The idea that like that a lot of Astros Twitter is out there trying to run around with that he's going to be banned from the game and stuff like that. It's it's nonsense. It, it's, it's trolling. I, I don't think anyone actually yeah. believes it. It's retaliatory trolling for what the Astros went through during 2017. Hurt people hurt people. But Otani did say, I think, some very, very, very interesting things from this perspective. You better be right. Quote, and he read this. This was he he was going back and forth between notes that he had in front of him. He did not look up from the notes that he looked at for this part specifically that the interpreter read back to us as, quote, never bet on baseball or any other sport, never have asked anybody to do it on my behalf, never went through a bookmaker. And you really want to put on the tinfoil hat. There's a lot of different directions you could go there. For example, if you go back to when Deshaun Watson was doing his press conference after he was with the Cleveland Browns, where he kept on saying like the same three things over and over again. I never hurt. I never disrespected, mm-hmm. etc. cetera. Those women, sometimes you need to have something to go back to, to fall back to, and you want to have it right in front of you and written down so that you remember it specifically. Because sometimes these things are a little bit tricky, especially if you're going to be speaking for 10 to 11 minutes about a very confusing story where there's already been multiple different accounts that seem to contradict one another. But to go back to, again, what he said, quote, never been on baseball or any other sport, never have asked anybody to do it on my behalf, never went through a bookmaker. Whoa, you better be right. Because you are saying never for a lot of different things, not just one thing. It would be one thing if he was saying, oh, well, I had no knowledge that he was doing this behind the scenes. And honestly, I think a lot of people would probably be like, yeah. But now you're saying, yeah, I never been on baseball, Mm -hmm. any other sport, or if I ask anybody to do it on my behalf. I remember Rafael Palmeiro saying that to Congress before. They don't like to get lied to. That's the kind of stuff that they like to get their you know, hands dirty with is if somebody lies to them. And obviously he's not lying with a uh, – and he's lying to the media here potentially if he's lying, not to like actual investigators. But that's the story that they're probably going to tell those well, investigators. They're telling we'll everyone it's that it's, it's, it's theft. It, it is, this is theft. This is not Otani gambling. This is not Otani betting on games. This is theft. They've made that so clear. And if there's any – any inkling to this that he is going to that that's not true he's going to get buried and like it it is a you can't use an illegal sports book whatever like it's not going to probably lead to an all-time ban like pete rose if that were to come to fruition but it's still bad but you're right they 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 better like have everything all their all their eyes dotted and t's crossed because they are very firm in their stance and in their story and there's already holes in it going back to the timelines of just when Otani found out about all of this. Mm-hmm. The holes began at the start, and the holes are there because Otani either chooses not to get better at learning English or because it's been difficult for him. And whatever the case, like at a certain point, man, like some of this is on him. I know he's going to, you know, look at the interpreter. And obviously, the interpreter did some really skeezy things here. Of course. But. I mean, he didn't even know what was going on until well after they had announced what was going on in the clubhouse. And and now all of a sudden, like, there are so many stories out there and it is really difficult to keep them straight. And I suppose this press conference was an attempt to organize all of them. But, okay. Um, I mean, you welcome this guy in who's at, at, at best case scenario with the way that they're portraying him now was an incredibly manipulative liar. You let this guy in. And there was there was no follow up on it, and you were just totally fine with it, the, the status quo. And I, I just I just don't see how somebody earning that kind of money, who's clearly wanted to play baseball in the United States, mm-hmm. I just don't see how somebody like that would put no effort into being better when it well, comes to having a grasp of the English he language. He does speak English though. Like there's clips of him speaking. English. He does, but like you keep saying that he has no grasp. That's of the but the, but language. that's the way that it's that 
it's being portrayed to us is as if he has no grasp of it. So that's what they said in the clubhouse. They said he had no idea what was going on in the clubhouse I think when the translator spoke to everybody. I think that's the cover-up for I, I knew I wired him four and a half million yeah. dollars, and that's illegal. <laughs> So he's using the language as a shield then. It works yes. for now. But, which is it, 100% what I would do. Yeah, it, but it works Thank for now. Know. But Ipe is not going to. The idea that this guy is just going to go to jail and just be a little church mouse and not say anything, he's going to rat. Like, if there is anything to this, that's why, to your point, they better be telling the truth because if they're not, it's going to easily come out. And then within hours of this press conference ending, we walk right into the Jonte Porter NBA gambling scandal, which this one was super easy to prove because this <laughs> that, idiot. Again, that's why I kind of believe Otani is because all the ones that are proven are so easy to prove. Yeah, because this guy, it's if you don't know the story yet, there was a bunch of pro- – there's two nights this year where Jonte Porter of the Toronto Raptors, formerly of the Mizzou Tigers, he, because no one knows who he was besides being Michael Porter's yeah, brother. Yeah, he's Michael Porter's <laughs> exactly. brother. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I was like, oh, that's Michael Porter's brother. He, two nights this year, uh, the unders on his game props, Cat, were the most big, were the biggest payouts of the night. So this is something that DraftKings specifically and the other sports books are reporting on. And then they realized in these nights that John Say Porter was playing four minutes, five minutes, and then it had something wrong with his eye and left the game. And then played two days later and had a very, very good night. And then the next time it happened, it was the same thing. All these ticket, these two tickets cashed on his unders, and John Tay Porter, once again, left the game early, and he has been pulled from action in the NBA. And, and both nights, it was like the number one, uh, the number one like winning bet yeah. of the night of like anything of anything was Jonte Porter unders. No, and they the capped two nights they cash and they cap these wow. for this reason. Like, like you yeah. can only bet a certain amount of money on player props, on goofy Super Bowl props, and stuff like that because it's so easy. Because any 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 water boy or Gatorade boy can bet the Gatorade prop bet. I'm guessing, and they, they they cap it for that reason. But this one is – this is not Otani. This seems cut and dry. You're out for good. Oh, Adam Silver. He he can't play again if he's doing that. He needs to send a message. Because this, is, this isn't what Calvin Ridley was apologizing for with props that involved his team winning. This is like you're leaving games. You are – you are right there. Yeah, I will say it is uh, again. It is out. It is funny how the these uh, leagues are like they're getting betting scandals, but not like all the way like match, match fixing because yeah. this is like Jonte Porter unders. Like this is not really affect. This is a guy who's barely in the NBA. Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> it's like, honestly crazy they have props for this guy. <laughs> yes, the amount of money he just lost over some small gambling winnings is crazy he was making like a million dollars this year yeah and he probably won like five grand on these bets maybe 10 it's idiotic his brother his brother makes like 35 million dollars yeah year man just call your brother like, hey come on guys it's a disease it's a disease okay? yeah this is stupid cut him some slack yeah, he's getting banned for life yeah, I know. He should. Well, you, you you have to send a message. You you have to you have to <laughs> I can't wait till his lawyer comes up though. He's like, he's got a problem and he's working on it. It's fine. He's, it's fine. The integrity of the game hasn't been nope. affected that much. He's fine. Yeah, I mean, I I, th- I feel like we talked about this when show the Shohei news broke last week. It's like there is going to be a mm-hmm. like big <laughs> max match fixing scandal. This is not it. Like <laughs> within this year. Yeah. Yeah. This is not it's a big... It's crazy it hasn't happened yet with how many things are legal here. But well, that's generally, where, but it that's seems where to get found out, like that pitching coach on that uh, college yeah. baseball team. Because yeah. that's why... But that shows that this is... That regulating gambling is working, actually. Because because you have to sign up, and you have to put your social security number, and the leagues are tracking it, and the sports books have partnered with the leagues. That's how they caught all the Lions players. That's how they caught Calvin Ridley. That's how they caught... The leagues are not catching these guys. The sports books 
are catching these guys and telling the leaks. So they're doing the actual policing themselves. Yeah. Well, that's good. I suppose the conspiracy theorists would counter argue, Joe. They would say, hey, they're maybe not getting everybody, though. And it is certainly possible that some of this stuff is slipping through the cracks. There's they're no doing, I would imagine these books are going to do a very good job to protect themselves, especially because yeah. they don't want to be accused of some sort of inside job or something like that where they're involved in stuff like this. And you can't know everybody. You know, uh, you know Porter, he could have easily just wired his best friend from high school all this money and said, hey, dude, I'm leaving after like the first five minutes. My eye is going to be hurting. So take all my unders tonight. And why don't you just send that money back to me and keep 20% to yourself? That's pro that's also happening, and they can't stop that, and they can't prove that. But You got to do small bets, though, if you're going to do it, man. But like, if you're the number one God, winner for a specific dumb. prop on a given night multiple times, like it, one time would be something. Again, and, this is why it's so, like, all these guys are so easy to catch. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's even possible he wasn't the one placing the bet. That wasn't made totally clear, actually, so... It is possible, like, his buddy was doing it for him. I've been watching this TV show with a guy from um, uh, Office Space called uh, Louder Milk, mm -hmm. and I legitimately just watched an episode about, like, gambling addicts and stuff, and it, it is very funny to see just how absolutely, like, bad at gambling some of the most degenerate gamblers can be. Well, what, what, what does Bruno owe? Bruno Mars owes MGM. Oh, it's like $50 million. $50 million? Dollars? And that's but that's from that's from like poker, I think it is. Yeah. Just go on tour, you'll be fine. Yeah, just walk. Yeah, back. that's the thing. If you're Bruno Mars. You go on a tour, you're good to go. The fine. problem was he was he had a reg residency in at Vegas. BMGM. Yeah, <laughs> and so he was like <laughs> doing his residency, and then just like losing all his money. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> Holy crap, fifty million. Yeah. yeah. Man, I I don't think I'd be able to live in Vegas. I don't think I'd be able to live there, man. Uh, what, you think you're gonna get fifty million, or I no, like, no, no, no. Your equivalent mean, is like fifty G's. I think anybody. I think anybody who li like I'm surprised Celine Dion hasn't dealt with something like that. Or Celine Dion has, was gambling on like underground chicken fighting or something like that. Bono lost all of the money he made off the sphere. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll get to uh, our our ten minute drill next here on ESPN ninety seven five and ninety two five.
Uh, some news that came out today from the NFL. We'll start with a holiday. Christmas Day. It's on a Wednesday this year. The NFL, even though it's on a Wednesday, said today there will be a double header on Christmas Day. They have no shame. So Wednesday, <laughs> we'll have two football games. Thursday, we'll have one football game. Saturday, we'll have a couple. Sunday, we'll have a bunch more. And then the college football playoffs start the next two days after that. It's going to be a glorious couple days. The last Wednesday NFL game was Steelers-Ravens in 2020 due to COVID. I I don't understand why they got to have a game every single day. Well, this seems that they just want to take Christmas from the NBA. They already have. Uh, th- that, that's why I think this one's this is a little bit different than just having a game every day. They they want they want Christmas. Is this vengeance for former Mavericks owner Mark Cuban saying that fat hogs get slaughtered? Oh. It almost feels personal at this point. I think they're trying to ruin them. The NBA used to tip off on Christmas Day, That's at least mattered. as far as people started paying attention, mm-hmm. even though it's, you know, a month and a half into the year. The diehards are there. I don't need more football every single day of the week. I don't need it. I like having it on a couple of days. This is me complaining as someone who watches sports for a living more about the fact that I'm going to have to watch games every single night now. Because that's the league I care about the most. Mm -hmm. But uh, this annoys me. Uh, We found that the Texans will start the season. We'll get more into this later. The Texans will begin the preseason against the Bears, the Hall of Fame game. Great. Another preseason game. Exactly what I wanted. Another preseason game for the Texans. They're back to four. Nice. Show bet for uh, Bears-Texans. Let's save that one for the regular season game. Uh, I I, I think it's time. I I I I think it's time to abandon them. I don't really need Tyler Bajant versus uh, Davis Mills in my life because that's what it's going to be. You're right. But that's, I'm not, I knew that there te- might be a little Caleb Williams. I knew the Texans were going to play in this game. You knew? It was pretty Andre confident. Johnson? Yeah. yeah. First I, time Trey's getting the Hall, like first Texan in the Hall of Fame, you're going to have the Texans Bears, represented. Devin Hester. Yeah, that's a good one. So you have Hester and, and Mongo, uh, who played on the 85 Bears, both going in. And then you have, and you have, uh, Mongo? Steve Mongo McMichaels. Oh, McMichaels. Everyone just calls him Mongo. Even when he wrestled in the WCW for a brief You mean time. people in Chicago called him? I mean, he's pretty well known. There's there's Mongo, also Alex Karras, who plays Mongo in Blazing Saddles. So I, I I've I've never heard of Mongo before. Okay. Well he's also going in. And then you have Trey going in. So I'm not I'm not surprised that the Bears and Texans are, are starting their season that way. Uh there's gonna be a, a third challenge flag this year. Right. If you get one of your two challenges right. You get a third. You get a third one, as opposed to if you get both of your challenges right, you get a third now. This is lame. Yeah. You, you, you just have to go 50% on yeah. challenges. You should have to go. You, you should get both right, and then you get a third. This is this is dumb. I don't like this. No, one. I like it, but more replay doesn't necessarily lead to a better product. But sometimes you're going to make a challenge, and they're not going to overturn it. Then don't challenge it. What, you're supposed to know that they're not going to overturn it every single time? Sometimes it is cut and dry, and they just don't change it. That's true. Sometimes it's very clear that you it, it it looks like a overturn and they don't do it, but I don't I don't love it. Just yeah, why don't you love you'll, it? Go fifty percent. That third one's a participation trophy. <laughs> it's a participation yeah. trophy. Yeah. Just had to get one of these right. I can't wait. So, someone's gonna remember remember that I said this, and then it's gonna win the Texans a game. <laughs> They're gonna call me an idiot, and I'll say you know what, well deserved. You you challenge a play in the first quarter. Get it right and yeah. be like, sweet. I got two more. I got two more in the bag. I can just any any time. Yeah. Honestly, this is just more TV commercials. It is. That's yeah. what this is. One hundred percent. This is like, hey, how can we get more TV commercials? Let's give the coaches another challenge. We'll go to break during the challenge, and when we come back, we'll have the answer. Someone's gonna use. Or they'll coach, have the double box. <laughs> yeah. One coach is gonna use it as like an extra timeout. And they're just gonna challenge a play that has no chance at getting overturned. And just like, well, I already have another challenge. Exactly. Like, this is just a fourth time out this half. Yeah, this is that's fine. Um, uh, JJ McCarthy. So we mentioned how Jim Harbaugh said his uh, JJ McCarthy's pro day was the best he's ever seen, which is just gassing up your former player. But some of the sports books followed suit, and they moved JJ McCarthy to a from a plus twenty five hundred to a plus five hundred betting odds 
uh, to be the number two pick. Now, Jaden Daniels is still a minus 175 betting favorite. Drake May is still head of J.J. McCarthy. But it's it's quite a line change. Um, that means nothing to me. You don't think McCarthy's going to be going that early? Uh, this is the one thing I would never bet on. Will Levis, last year, Benjamin, Albr- Benjamin Albright pointed this out yesterday. When the fourth pick was on the clock, and you could go on websites and still bet live odds, Will Levis was a minus $1,000 minus one thousand bet to be the fourth pick in the NFL draft last year. He went, in the, the second, favorite? He went in the second round. Was minus 1,000 the favorite? Yeah. But he minus 500 is a lot. Or plus 500, yeah, is what, he, is what McCarthy is. Okay. I just don't think the betting odds are necessarily reflective. Like the point, like everyone, like the the books were like Will Levis is going fourth. He went in the second round. I would never bet on this. Yeah, unless they have like a line in on one of the GMs. And sometimes like they do. Yeah, sometimes they do. Sometimes they know some information, but like when stuff like that, it's like there's actually no. They don't actually know that if the Colts will want Anthony or uh, want Will Levis or not. Yeah, they want Richardson. Like, yeah. everyone thought they, they were going Levis. They, they picked a quarterback. They picked yeah. the, the different one. Yeah, I just... But it is... He's going to go top 10. That I'm pretty confident about. That J.J. McCarthy will go in the top 10. Yeah, the Vikings, at the very least, will trade up for him. Yeah, if, if, they didn't, if they don't trade up for a quarterback, then... I guess I would just be confused about the Texans trade, because that's what I thought they made. That's what I thought the Vikings made for it. Yeah, that makes to sense. to get ammo. They're probably trying to package them together. Best case scenario, they're probably hoping that the guy falls to them at what eleven. So yeah, uh, did you watch the explanation uh, the NFL put out today about the new kickoff rules? Yeah, I read it, and I, I like the explanation that it's the XFL, the mm-hmm. best. It's just the XFL. No one can move until the ball is kicked and, and received by the returner. And so, they're what on the thirty. 30 or 40 yard line so they will be lining up at the receiving team's 40 yard line to kick off nine members of the return team will be in a setup zone between the 35 and 30 up to two returners can line in a landing zone between the goal line and the 20 no one other than the kicker and returner can move until the ball hits the ground or hits a player inside the landing zone touchbacks will be marked at the 30 yard line no fair catches allowed my biggest issue with it is what falls after that, is that they did not vote yes on the 4th and 20 or 4th and 15 onside kick, and now you have to tell someone you're going to do an onside kick, and I guess they're going back to the the way they've been doing the onside kick? Because I don't think you're doing the onside kick from that new kickoff location. I don't know. That's confusing to me. I don't. I don't. The, the, the kickoff I don't like location that is the like where the kicker is kicking. It's the same. It's, it's the, the same. Players okay, so the players will go back. Yeah. Okay. But I they're not doing it gladiator style. Yeah. Like back in the day. But there's no they're surprise onside kicks anymore. So now if the Texans are losing, you know, to the Bills, they will. Have, D'Amico will have to tell the referees who will then tell the Bills that an onside kick is coming. Yep, the Sean Payton onside kick in the Super Bowl could never happen again. I don't I don't enjoy this part of the rule. I'm the fine. onside kicks are hard to return as it is, but yeah, the surprise onside kick is legitimately the probable uh, you're going to have the highest probability of recovering it of any kind of onside kicks so and now you got to report it. Takes a little gamesmanship out of it. Uh, they they've been too, making too much happen with the kickoffs. I get it. Sometimes people run into each other full speed and it's a violent collision, but mm-hmm. I mean, this is the NFL. This this happens. Sucks what happened to Eric Legrand, but it, yeah, and uh, I think it was a former Texan tight end that had the same injury with the Buffalo Bills. Um, it sucks, obviously, but I don't I mean love stuff it. like this is still going to happen. I, I don't, I don't think it that is. this prevents it necessarily. And they're so confident in it that they have decided that it will only officially be active for a year, and they will revote on this next season. Oh, I don't like that either. So they, it's it's like when they. You That's kind of how they do everything. Though. Yeah. When they make a new rule, they're like, "We'll do it. We'll see how it we'll goes. Do it for this year and then re up." I don't think they'll go back. But if they, if you put it they in, won't you go can't back. go back. You look like an idiot if you go back. Yeah, no, this- I mean, the only way is like if this fails somehow, which I don't really get how they does because you've already had a football season worth of proof that it works. Yeah. The XFL season. And it's supposedly it's going to be it's it's supposedly much more exciting. Yeah, that, so, that's why I'm okay with the surprise on kick going away. 
is that a like how many surprise on ki- onside kicks do we get in an NFL season mm. versus how many crappy <laughs> kickoffs where it doesn't you don't even have to watch the play yeah happen where it's like a ceremonial like and it is there it goes he yeah. kicks the ball out of the end zone we're starting the game now where this is adding a football play to football yeah so who's the kick returner for the Texans next year. Is no, they, got, they got two who returned kicks for touchdowns last year. You got Damian yeah. Pierce, and you got Andrew the Beck. One, the only Andrew Beck. Put All Andrew right. Beck back there. Andrew Beck, Beck for kick return twenty twenty four. Best. Okay. Uh, speaking of the NFL and the NFL families, Deion Sanders, he's got takes on his kids' future. We'll discuss those next year on ESPN 97.5 and ninety two five. You are listening to Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Paul Gallant and Joe George. Gallant George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. So Deion Sanders was meeting with the media. He was dropping some interesting some interesting nuggets on, on, on the future of, of his son and, and Travis Hunter as well. 
and that, well, first of all, Shador Sanders will not play in the cold, Paul. He will not play in the cold. And this is going to be an Eli Manning situation, apparently. He's playing in Colorado already. Dude, that's what I thought. I thought the same thing. When does it start snowing in Colorado? Probably as early as... I'm, I bet you they get snow in October sometimes. Yeah, Colorado's got wacky weather. Yeah, I'm sure sometimes it doesn't snow until January, and sometimes it snows in October. I do know that we used to have family friends who would winter in Arizona and live the rest of the year in Colorado. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming it gets cold there. So, okay, willing to play at one of the least successful Power 5 college football programs of the last 20 years mm-hmm. until Deion Sanders got there, but unwilling to play in the cold. Got it. Did yeah. It- Denver and Denver, close enough, whatever, had uh, three feet of snow this uh, this year. That's okay, it. okay. Well, it's about eight inches in October, two inches in November, three inches in November. What do you make of the? This is going to be Eli Manning, basically, just saying straight up, like he's not going to play for certain teams. F you. I I think it's putting a crazy amount of pressure on. The reason why J.J. McCarthy is going to go in the top 10 this year and the reason why people think Bo, Pen- uh, Bo Nix and Michael Penix could be first-round picks this year is because if you listen to anyone that covers the NFL draft, they are already saying that next year's draft is not what you want it to be for quarterbacks. It's always the opposite. There's always Next year's always better. And they're looking at next year's class and going, eh. Like you have Quinn Ewers and you have Shador Sanders, who I like both these guys. But Shadur Sanders There'll is... There'll be someone else, though. I, I, that's there, always, I there always is. I don't understand why people are, like, doing the projections like, right yeah. now without a full college football season. I feel like, yeah, use the most recent season as an example sure. to determine whether or not a guy is or isn't a guy. This is why the draft industrial complex, everyone needs to just slow their effing roll. No one knows what the hell they're talking about. They are full of it, and I get it. Some people actually do study it, but we're talking about guys two years down the road. I'm supposed to seriously believe that you put in the work about a guy that's going to be in the draft class two years from now? No. Oh, for sure. But I mean, like the idea that even Dion thinks that his son is good enough to it, be yeah. the first round pick in the draft is crazy. Is, is he a first round draft pick? Honestly, I don't know that. Probably when people were doing the mock drafts during the season for this year, they there were people that saying if he came out, he could have been a first rounder this year. But I, I, look, he's a good player. There's no denying that. But there's also a lot of Colorado baggage, mm. which is they are hyped because Deion Sanders is there. And I get it. Some people are going to do their due diligence and study and make sure that Shadur Sanders checks all of the boxes as far as quarterbacks that you're looking for in the draft. But, I mean, my response to somebody talking about his draft status in a draft class that has yet to take form yet is, F you, you're already saying this? How about don't get blown out by the first good team that you play? In a game that was over at halftime. Do something this year. It's early. I'm surprised. This surprised me by Dion. He's pretty calculated when he talks about his kids and their futures and his team and their future. Someone asked him, Dan Patrick asked him during the Super Bowl week about uh, if he would guarantee a Super Bowl, I mean, a, a, a Big 12 championship this year and making the college football playoff. He said, no, I don't do that. But then to already say that your kid who's the quarterback on that football team is good enough to pull an Eli Manning? That sure sounds like a team that's going to go to the national championship to me this year if your son's that good at football. I, I'm just, I'm surprised. Eh, eh. Caleb Williams went like eight and four. Good point. Touche. <laughs> Touche. Drake, Drake May didn't win anything in North Carolina. Touche. Good point. LSU. Huh? Yeah. They were Aiden pretty good. Daniels. Two, nine they, were, three. they were pretty good, though. Did LSU have nine wins? Uh, yeah, I think they Yeah, they lost nine, to Alabama and to Florida State, I think. Yeah, so. and then maybe a bowl game, which no one cares about, because those things aren't relevant to the world. And plus, Jaden And then J.J. McCarthy was the greatest quarterback I've ever seen. National yeah. title winner. The greatest quarterback any of us have ever seen. Champion. We just didn't know it at the time. But he, Jim Harbaugh <laughs> told us, and the odds changed that much the guy, in one the guy, epic day. <laughs> the guy who called, like, 57 straight run plays every single game <laughs> says, <laughs> says he has the best quarterback in the world. It's crazy. <laughs> I... We listen. We don't see it the way that Jim sees it. At least, at least, 
and, and that's, their, that's an Sanders, us problem. At least Deion Sanders lets his kid throw the ball. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh makes his kid hand it off. Yeah, Shador Sanders is in uh, versus Colorado State is Empire. having this incredible football game, and leading them back, driving down the field to Colorado get the game State. tied up. But yes. Colorado State. But yes. But Basketball if, school. But if that was a Michigan game, Jim Harbaugh would be giving the ball to Blake Corum and not letting J.J. McCarthy throw it. It's crazy. Because he's a team player. The, the difference of these two quarterbacks, but the hype that they're both getting kind of blows my mind. Yeah, it's bizarre to me. Too. I am team Shador Sanders, though. I think he will be good. But I, he, this he, is a little much. He might be. He might not. But like, I see this, and I'm just like, F you, dude. Yeah. Like, who the hell are you? Yeah. I say the same thing about Caleb Williams. Like, I get it. I get it. You want to have control over where you go, and you think it's ridiculous that the NFL draft exists. But this is how they try to keep things competitive. That's why the bad teams get to draft good players. And this idea that you're different, that you're special, just flies in the face of team sport mm -hmm. so hard. F you. That's what I think. If you are somebody who has the talent to make it happen in the NFL, we'll see when you get there. But this idea that you should have control before you even get there to me, it is absurd. Yeah, it's entitled well, because you've done nothing. And someone pointed out that, you know, Eli Manning did the, did the I mean, literally, they're calling it pulling an Eli Manning, which I'm sure Eli's like thrilled about. He's like, yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> and, but you look at his dad, his dad, NFL player. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 One of the best ever. Uh, John. Uh, Elway. Or Jim, yeah. John Elway. He uh, his uh, he could play baseball for the Yankees. Like he had a credible threat to play baseball for the Yankees. Bo Jackson had a credible threat to play to play baseball. It's like this really only happens when your dad is either an NFL player, an NFL legend, really, or you can play another sport, or you can play another sport. It's yeah. The only time this happens. Yeah. It's annoying when it happens. It is, especially because I just I, don't see. I don't even re I don't remember the Eli Manning thing happening. So like, yeah, I was pretty it, young when that happened, happened too. <laughs> This, I remember this, it. This would be kind of a first, but just be good enough. Just Some brand be good enough to be worth it. Be projected to be the first pick in next year's draft before we start th saying things. Like <laughs> yeah, this. that's what exactly. Like, like is, he, is he even pick fifteen right now yeah, in that like, draft? He like, might be. I don't know. Let the way too early 2025 mock drafts come out. See Shadur Sanders number one overall, then make the statement, and I'll hear you out. All right, before we go to break, tell you about my friends at O Athletic. Check them out at oathletic.com or 767 North Shepherd. I was just there this morning getting a workout in, getting a nice nice little treadmill run, a little arm day today as well. I uh, set up my training session with my guy Cam next week uh, so we can check in my progress and just see how everything has been going for me. So if you're like me and you want to lose weight in 2024, you want to put on muscle, you want to lean out, O Athletic is absolutely the place to do it. And if you don't know what to do on your own, they've got personal trainers and they have over 100 classes a week from weightlifting to Brazilian jiu-jitsu, boxing, MMA, agility, weightlifting, all of that for you at O Athletic. Check them out at oathletic.com and tell them Joe George sent you by.
We just uh, published a video on YouTube from the Killer Bees yesterday discussing if D'Amico Ryans or Ime Doka is the better coach. Do you have thoughts on this, Paul? Well, what do you think first? I would lean Ime Doka because as much as I love D'Amico, the defense did not take the step that I was hoping it would this year. It was good, but I was... What we saw from the offense and C.J. Stroud is kind of what I was more expecting from the defense and the offense to slowly come along. Not that it wasn't good, but it, it really it didn't take the like the elite step I had hoped. And as much as I love coaches in the NFL and I love D'Amico Ryan's, C.J. Stroud I would still lean is more of a reason for their success as the quarterback of this team than D'Amico or Ime Adoka. We've seen this team with these players be a disaster for two years. And he's made them a 500 basketball team and has them in playoff contention and seems to be coaching out all the terrible habits that they have from Steven Silas. So it's not nothing against D'Amico, but I think it's Ime Adoka. And it's probably not close. I, I, I think Udoka making the finals also helps. It's almost over from the start. Yes. And also to what you were saying a moment ago, for NFL coaches, it really is more about the quarterback, right? I mean, Andy Reid finally gets a quarterback. He wins three Super Bowls. Bill Belichick wins six. He's got Tom Brady. I would say that the latter three were mostly Tom Brady, while the first three were mostly Bill Belichick's defensive scheming, but also just a team that never screwed up and made mistakes. I think, though, to what you were saying about D'Amico Ryan's expecting the big lead from the defense year one, expecting really anything from them year one. Mm-hmm. They didn't have the talent to make that jump. That's true. The quarterback's going to bring the level of talent up on the offensive side of things. So I'm not going to hold that against D'Amico Ryans as much, but I'm with you. I do think this is a rather easy answer because Udoka, what he did with Boston is a part of what he has done. And now what you're seeing where much like in that finals run with Boston, it feels like the Rockets are catching their stride at the absolute best time of the year. You want your team to get better as the season improves, even if March basketball is kind of difficult to determine what matters and what doesn't matter, he's doing it again. And I think the biggest thing for Doka is like he's coming in after a couple of coaches, excuse me, one coach could not get the most out of players that some consider to be, as far as talent goes, some of the best young talent in the league. Yeah. And, and it's no disrespect to D'Amico. That's what's uh, a great thing about this conversation is that D'Amico Ryans is, was deserving of being coach of the year. He didn't win it, but he had a great year. But Ime has done so, so much this year that it, you just you have to give him credit for it. And, and, and kind of philosophically, I just would always say an NBA coach can do more because it's really – it also feels more like a one-man band because, yes, he has assistant coaches, but do we know any of them? Like, like besides when they talk to Vanessa – like, Royal like, Ivy, I think, is one of them. I think he knows. I don't know. You might be right. You might be right, way wrong. That coach might not be a real person. That might he's be definitely a, fake, a real person. That might be a fake name. And I don't he's know. A point I'm guard for Texas, so he's a oh, real okay. person. Oh, so that's why he knows it. It's not because he's a rock <laughs> coach. It's because he played for Texas. Royal Ivy is a... That's the kind of bougie name that some broad on one of those HBO shows would be named. Sounds like a Sex in the City extra. Gossip Girl season four. Or OnlyFans. Uh. <laughs> oh, you know a lot about that life. I don't want anyone to know about that account. Uh, so uh, let's get to some Astro stuff. Uh, the, the We were talking about the lineup earlier. With Pena and, and Diaz, do you, if, if those two guys uh, have the take the next step, is that how that take we've talked about before with John and Lance, that they have the best lineup in baseball, really comes to fruition? Or is there another path? Because for me, without Pena and Diaz really emerging as as really talented players, I think the Astros still fall short of teams like just like the Braves. And maybe that's it. Like, like the Braves, the Dodgers, and, and that category. Just without those two guys, I struggle to see them having that best lineup in baseball. So you're you're saying you're asking me if I think like those two players are they the key to it? They're definitely part of the key. I, I think more than that, though, it's like, can they stay healthy the whole year? Because I mean, if yeah. you have Altuve and Alvarez, I, I don't know. I feel like, and, and that might be an if, 
with Alvarez and maybe it is with Altuve getting towards his mid thirties. But I, those two, I don't know if I can expect anything out of them really. Um, Pena and, and, um, uh, who's the other name? Diaz. Diaz. Yeah. Like Diaz, we've seen him do it, but it's a whole game season. Uh, it's a whole season that we're talking about now with him and with Pena, Pena, I really don't know. I, I feel like he should be better than he was last year. If those two are hitting, yeah, I, I would imagine they would be the best lineup in baseball. Um, but do I know whether or not they're going to hit? No, I really don't at this point. Yeah, no, we, yeah, we'll find out. It's yeah, you never know because there's always adjustments in spring training. That's that's probably the spring training thing that I never know what to really make out of it. You know, like Jeremy Pena starts spring training this year and he's got this, you know, his this new swing where it's, he's launching the ball a little bit better. It means nothing to me because. Half the time, the pitcher you're facing is not really giving you real stuff. They're, like they're they're working on things, so it's 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 hard to tell from spring training what's going to translate or not. Because if it translates, then Jake Myers is the starting center fielder, and the Astros are awesome. But we don't know if that's going to be the case. Uh, but you brought this, you put this in here about the um, this article the Chronicle put out about the Astros smoking fastballs, and the reason why I mentioned Pena and Diaz is because the biggest flaw of those two guys is the stuff that they chase. And if they just stop chasing the, the sliders and, and really sliders and curveballs outside the zone, then it really will help them go so far this year. Cause I, I love reading the story about how the Astros just mash fastballs on a consistent basis. Yeah. I was surprised to see Chas McCormick was third in the majors and run value created against four seamers, which sounds like a made up stat, but it's Jordan's <laughs> Jordan's 16th Altuve's 21st. And they played in 114 and 90 games respectively. Tucker was second. Alex Bregman was 34th. And you would imagine that will go up with him in a contract year. So yeah, they hit fastballs and <laughs> I would hope that everybody could take a thing or two from Alex Bregman, especially the Chazes and Jeremy Pena's and Yiner Diaz, who really felt like they were chasing in key spots when uh, in the ALCS against the Rangers. Is is Chaz that guy to you that he was know. last year? I don't know because you asked because talk about JP France and you've always seemed kind of less confident in in JP France. Correct, but I don't. My belief would be that Chaz is is close to the player he was last year. I don't, I don't think we see a major drop-off. Well, yeah, I, I, I think he carried over what he did in the World Series yeah. into last year. That's one of the reasons that I get weirded out with this, like, moving Dubon exclusively to that super utility role when he played well in the postseason last year, and now all of a sudden we're saying, okay, well, Jake Myers, a guy who wasn't even active for that series, they're going to give him a chance over Dubon. I get that Dubon's got the versatility, but it's one of those things where I'm expecting Dubon to do what he did for the most of last year, this coming season. Mm -hmm. I, I think you should operate that way until it's no longer the case. And then you make a change. Yeah. I've always, the way that they talk about Dubon, I I wonder if we'll be okay with the amount of playing time he has. It's just not going to be consistently at one position. Like They've talked a lot about rest and making sure that these guys are healthy throughout the entire year. I, I do wonder if we're going to see Dubon really be like a, you know, playing five out of six games a week and playing potentially five different positions and just being all over the place this entire season, which I'm for, but also like you, I wouldn't be opposed if they just at some point made him the everyday center fielder and had Chaz playing left. I'd be very happy with that. And Jordan Alvarez only be a DH. More often than not be a DH at least. I can't wait till uh, opening day lineup comes out. And to see Jeremy Branham's tweet when Jordan started in left field. What's wrong with Joe's Joe lineup. Espada's lineup now? Yeah, he's going to tweet what's wrong with Joe's lineup. And uh, good luck with the responses to that, Jeremy, because I know what the, the Twitchers will, will say. What are they going to say? Well, they're going to blame me for the lineup is what's going to happen. Why are they going to blame you? Because it's what's wrong with Joe's lineup. Oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to catch strays mm. pretty consistently. That's Jeremy's theory, actually, that I'll, I'll catch strays. He should just say, what's wrong with Dusty's lineup? That's what I said, too. Yeah. What's wrong with Dusty's lineup? Because Dusty's still in charge. He's just not here. Especially because it will drive the people that Jeremy uh, has driven crazy, even crazier. And I, I'm here for that. Yeah. That, that, I'm here that, to get random texts about uh, yelling at me about Jeremy, something he's tweeted. I'm like, I, I'm not his dad. He's older than me. He is a father. That's true. He is. And you are not his dad. No. 
Did you have something there, Sean? What? I thought you were going to say something. Well, so. I was just going to say, if if I'm Jeremy, I'm also kind of looking for an exit ramp on having to tweet that every single day. True. Because <laughs> it, it seems know, that exhausting is, to be that, like, especially because he's normally on the air when they tweet out the lineup. He's addicted to X. Yeah. He's addicted to that it. That is true. And also, he feel, I feel like he might be smart enough to figure out some like algorithm thing to, to auto-tweet it. Well, you just need to like set alerts for the Astros, but no, the problem is, yeah, you would get so many tweets throughout the day. Yeah, they, they send so many tweets. All right, uh, Paul says I have to make a choice. I don't, I don't yes. think I, I don't think I have to make a choice, but Paul says I have to make a choice. And, and Cal McNair is uh, unhappy about something. We'll discuss that next year on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. My bookie, my bookie. Dot ag promo code bet nine seven five. You sign up, you get a deposit bonus of up to one thousand dollars right away for you to play with. NCAA tournament, the real round number three, number four, right around the corner. And I mean, come on, people, we're looking at that game. Between our beloved Cougs, the Houston Cougars, four-point favorites over the Duke Blue Devils. And you're thinking to yourself, they don't respect us. They don't respect the Cougs. They don't respect Shaka. They don't respect, excuse me, the Shasta. (laughs) I don't know why I started thinking about Shaka Smart there, right there, for a moment. They don't respect you. Paul doesn't respect you. Maybe you make that argument. But Cougs are four-point favorites, and they're going to win by 400000 You know it. I know it. MyBookie.ag, promo code BET975, is where you can go to bet on our beloved Cougs. The over-under for that game, 134. Uh-huh. I mean, we just saw the UH Aggies game hit a pretty high number against Duke. Isn't it going to do the exact same thing? MyBookie.ag, promo code BET975, to bet on that game and many more as we are in the Sweet 16 of March Madness. It's MyBookie.ag. Again, promo code BET975 for an awesome deposit bonus. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere, only with MyBookie.ag. You are back with Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Paul and Joe. So, Paul, you said I have to make a choice. Yeah. Do I really have to make a choice? I have to choose sides. I think you just may as well. Just get it over with. 
but, but you don't you don't, you're not choosing between the Patriots and the Texans. Yes. Why do I have to make a decision? Because you don't root for the Patriots. You root for a godforsaken awful franchise and you don't live in Chicago well, anymore. Why can't I have both? Why would you want both? Well, usually they both are good defense, no quarterback. Uh, both usually have a really good defensive player. Tell me about the last Sunday the Bears made you happy. The last Sunday the Bears made me happy. Well, it was probably until Cody Parkey double doinked it. Probably. So that Sunday was happy up to that point. Up until that point when I, I thought they were going to win that game and so then like go to the Super Bowl. January 2018. Yeah, when did the Eagles win the Super Bowl? 20, the 17-18 season. Yeah, so that would have been 2018. So that was, yeah. that was six years ago. Yeah, that was the last time they probably made me happy. This is... This is the problem. So the Texans are playing the Bears Hall of Fame game. Yeah. To open up the preseason. And obviously preseason games are dumb. Yes. Maybe you want to gamble on this to actually make it entertaining. It's not like you're going to be seriously rooting for either team here unless Caleb Williams plays. But, man, just rip off the band-aid, dude. You, you, you've been here long enough, and the Bears have had no yeah. success in your lifetime. But None the in your lifetime. They're never going to play in the Super Bowl. The Texans will get to a Super Bowl and win one. The Bears obviously will not. That's what I mean. Just so you, I don't you live have here to, now. So I don't really have. They're not really competition. You I can live have here. Both. I can have both you, teams. But you live here and they've never won. What's the what? Like oh, I have such pride in the Bears. Like, that's the only reason. If the Patriots had won, I would be out completely. Completely. They're still my team. No, they're not. They haven't done anything for you. They're a terrible organization run by an old lady. Yeah, but we've all we've all got people like that that are in our lives that you that you They're love them. They're not family. That you They're, love them and that they don't do nothing football, for you. Football is not family, despite what Roger Goodell might be trying to push. They're, no, just just give it up, dude. God, family football. That's all that matters. Yes, in and that order. There's better football here. You, you there don't is. have I to know there stay is. on this. You don't have to stay miserable your whole life. You live here now, you know, doing a daily radio show in Houston, Texas. Do you, do you want to still pay attention and have the passion for this team? Do you do you need it in your life? I I, I think I do. What, I still need it. What what is it about it that you I just need? can't I can't quit it. It's like a drug. But it's not a good drug. No, it's not a well, mo, well yeah, it's not yeah, you know. Well, not, you know what? To to be fair, most drugs in used in moderation, you know, like they get the job done. The trick is moderation. And where are you at with the moderation with the Bears right now? Uh, well, it's just my my moderation is pretty good. When, it's, it's when they when they when they when they are not good, when they are out of the playoff hunt, which they were in the playoff hunt until week 14, 15 last year. I didn't watch the rest of this. I didn't watch the rest of the games. Joe, the aftermath from this narcotic for you is ranging from Fenty to crack. Crack being the top. Not that I have done I either. I don't know I a thing not. about either. All I know is generally people do not enjoy their experiences after those two. And if the Bears had won in your life, I would get it. They made that one Super Bowl. They did. With it was fun. Lovey Smith. It's great. They had that one year where didn't they make the NFC Championship game in 02? Oh, two? Oh. Uh, they, oh made one? they made it in the tens. Yeah, they made it to twenty ten. I just Jay can't. Color's I can't quit season. them. I can. Lo I can love both equally because they're irrelevant to There's each no other. There's no reason to love both equally. There is. If the Patriots play the Texans, I, I I will be honest. Like I don't know how I'll feel about it. But they but they matter to each other because typically in the past for the Texans to try to achieve something. In theory, they would try to go through the Patriots. Yeah, they genuinely would have to do that. But The Bears and the Texans are never going to play in the Super Bowl. Now, since they don't have to, and since I live here and don't see myself leaving anytime soon, now that I'm here, I look at it and I'm like, it doesn't matter the same way to me. And if it were Texans-Patriots, I truly do not know how I'd feel. If it was a playoff game, I feel like I would be obligated by oath to pick the Patriots entirely because they went to nine Super Bowls and six. they won six of them. Actually, they went to 10 Super Bowls and won six of them in my lifetime. So, like that that's why. But you, you have nothing holding you back. I know I have nothing holding me back. And you're here. I know. I just can't quit them. But you should. I can't. I think I think if Caleb Williams doesn't work out. If, if okay, we can put you know what? A, if we Fair. can put a five-year yeah, five clock All right, this on is Caleb it. Williams. This is it. If this doesn't work, I'm, I'm out forever and ever and ever and ever.
Because it would be different if they had, like, the what, – what's their actual pick? Like, the ninth pick, right? If they just didn't have the number one pick in this year's draft and you're like, oh, my God, we might have to draft J.J. McCarthy to be the next quarterback. Actually, you would probably just keep Fields, mm-hmm. honestly, if that was the scenario. Yeah. But it's – it, I think this – you don't want to get out now because now it's like, well, yeah, I don't know. What, you're you're one quarterback away. Maybe maybe we have the quarterback. How many yeah. times have you said this? How many times have I said that? Cade McNown. Uh, uh, probably like four times. Rex, Trubisky, Fields, and then Caleb. You forgot about Cade McNown. I never said that about him. Yeah, but he was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, he was pretty good. He wasn't yeah, like he was. He, he's, he was he's, the fourteenth best quarterback. I mean, he was never like that. I never thought of him as that guy. He's your Matt Schaub. Yeah, exactly. Got yeah, it. that's why it's so easy for me to like these teams because they're all the same. They, they are pretty similar. They're as all we, the same. As we talk about that's it. That's why when people say like hey, Joe, about, like like Junior Bronco, Junior Bronco will not stop bitching about this in the chat. Like, just go away. I don't care. Leave forever. Don't come back. Like, I do not care anymore. But like, they're all the same. That's why it's so easy for me to root for these teams in Texas because. All you have is the same exact thing. The Cubs, they were terrible. They were terrible on purpose. Yeah, they won up. a World Series. Now, they didn't keep winning like the give Astros, up. but the Astros were terrible on purpose. Mm-hmm. Won a but World Series. Good. The Texans, until C.J. Stroud, great defense, never had but a quarterback. And then now they're good. So now it's a little bit There's different. There's so many convenient bandwagons to jump on. The though. difference is, is that the Texas teams, right, when they become good, stay good. Unlike the Chicago so, teams. So, so join them. I am. You li- you live here. You you have a you have a child here, a wife here. Your families are here. My son's gonna be a Texans fan. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like you kind of ran out of steam on that one. Yeah. I'm gonna let him decide. I'm not gonna push him. You're gonna let him decide. Other. You're not gonna push him. BS. If you're if you're still rooting for the Bears, you're gonna be like, this is this is. Who no, I grew up I'll, for. I'll let him decide. Let me tell you about the time that Anthony Thomas, the A train, ran for 150 yards against the Steelers. Excuse me. Excuse me. Against the Packers in a 28 to three loss. Let me tell you about the let me tell you about the times that Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers absolutely ruined my franchise and kind of, you know, did dishonorable things to But them. the but the the clock is official. If Kayla doesn't work, I'll be out. But the, the, you're going to make excuses. It's Kayla Williams. You were doing this with Justin Fields last year. You were I know. talking yourself into it. This is different. Just, just quit. No, it's not. This is your intervention, about, man. How about, how about, we're giving you a way out. It's, I can't. It's how Caleb. About, how about one year? No, it's not fair. What? What? No, if he doesn't, if he's not as it good as CJ Stroud, you will know. Boom. Eject. Oh, if he's not the best rookie quarterback in the history of the NFL. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's the standard. Legitimately, that should be the standard. You will know. You will know within a year if he's the guy. You will know because he's probably not the guy. That's how it always is. He's probably not well, the guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you'll know if he's the guy by the end of the year for sure. So you can get out after a year. Eject. All right. The clock is the clock has started. So Cal McNair's the upset. clock has started. Just get off. Just get, they're, they're playing. I the, can't. What? Why? I love them. Is is your are your family is your family going to disown you if you abandon your Chicago heritage? They left too. No, because we're Texans season ticket holders. That's what I mean. <laughs> what are you doing? You have you have even invested in this product. You have an out. I love them. They're playing. I love you, you the Texans. You don't love them. You don't. I do. Yeah, you don't. You love the Bears. No. You don't. Last year when you I was at home. You can't get away with polyamory. The Texans got the big TV when my son wasn't watching Bluey, and I got the Bears t- on the little TV or on my phone. Well, why not just take them off the TV altogether? I just can't quit them. How much are you paying for Sunday ticket to watch the Bears? Oh, no, legal streaming? streams. Come on. Free 99. Okay. I don't love the Bears that much. Pay it. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you're paying for Sunday yeah, tickets, Sunday tickets too I don't almost understand it yet. It's yeah, illegal. It, it was, I was really disappointed <laughs> when I saw those prices. Uh, Cal McNair's not happy about the uh, Texans jerseys getting leaked. Right. Uh, and uh, Cal and Hannah did a very good job of fixing this because it seems like it was something they actually had to improv. When the leak came out, that's when they called Nico and Tank and got them to dress up in the uniforms. Good move. That was very quick that they put all that together. Yeah, and wait, looked, so they did that in like a day? D- apparently. I think they did day up. Cause I, was, I figured that this was something that they had like in like waiting. Like yeah, I thought the, the photos, photos, that the they photos had. were ready. I thought that's how it leaked was that, you know, they, they had obviously that random – I don't know, Walmart employee that was in the <laughs> Derek Stingley jersey. But then it was on its way to shoot the promo stuff. They had the promo stuff. They just didn't do it because they're not going to announce it for another month. But no, it's like, because we talked about it during our show. Like, we t- we talked about it at whatever, 
one o'clock. Yeah. That apparently there's pictures leaked, and by like four o'clock. I think they, I think they did it within three Reddit. hours. I I I think that whatever happened, yeah, it seems yeah. like they turned this around very quickly. It's, that's at least the way that they described it when they were speaking with people at the NFL owners meetings. And to their credit, I mean, that's pretty damn. That's pretty damn impressive to turn something like that around over the course of half of a day, let's say, after seeing how awful that leaked photo looked. That's why they had to do it. Because it was embarrassing looking. Like, it, even if even if those uniforms are, for the most part, similar, it, it was an embarrassing look Just, to have that guy. Hannah was even like, he was his socks weren't even up to code. I, I, I love that. She, she made that little comment there. Because Cal basically was like, yeah, you know, we had to improvise, and we did really quickly. And then Hannah was like, oh, I hate that, that little bastard did that she didn't say that wish she had though wish she had like you could read it you could read it in her eyes she was like she let cal take the reins for the most part and then at the end she's like she's like a little, little short a little you know what uh, by the way paul congratulations on uh, your victory in the killer bees fight club bracket oh i won he did win whoa i i don't want you guys to have voted me to commit a hate crime what the hell oh but johnny's next though so. you guys should have voted for brandon now I've co- committed a hypothetical hate crime. My favorite part about this is the oh, other... I didn't even retweet it. No, I didn't. W- I didn't want to be a part of this. The only person to make it through the Killer Bees Fight Club bracket from the Killer Bees was B Mac. B Mac. B Mac's a big body guy. Yeah, he did Watches be- some wrestling. Took down Gordy. So oh, Gordy's Gordy's a small fella. That's, that's I'm, a... I'm still recovering from my loss to Matt Thompson. <laughs> that's a tough loss. Damn, dude. you lost an old man, dude. Yeah, yeah I, I was old man strength. That was tough for you. He eats McRibs. That's tough for you. I, I didn't know I won. Honestly, I, I saw the the last I saw, I saw like Brandon was winning. And I, 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 I'll be honest, I voted for Brandon. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to have committed a hypothetical hate crime. No, it was an agree. He was in a grant. He was tweeting about it. Yeah, I know, but I still I don't That's not a hate crime if you guys it was mutual combat. No, because I didn't I didn't agree on this combat. Well then you're the one being attacked. I'm being, I'm being put, agree. Jeremy is using me for That's my true. body. He is. All right, the Jaguars uh, head coach, Doug Peterson, he says the Jags are back to being the hunter. Were they ever really being hunted? And we'll discuss that next year on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5.
This is Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Now back to Paul and Joe inside the Veritex Community Bank Studios. So Doug Peterson uh, was talking to ESPN.com, and he he used the, the words that he said, I guess we're going back to the, the hunter again in, in the AFC South. Do you ever feel like the Jags are even being hunted? Because I never, they were good. Yes, the year they went, you know, last year when they you know, beat the Chargers in the first round of the playoffs. But they weren't the the Peyton Manning Colts or no, they weren't like the really good Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry type. They clearly thought they were, though, based They're off of this not. comment. This is some arrogance from Doug Peterson. I get it. You won a Super Bowl. Congratulations. But not there. They kept you around for a very long time after that Super Bowl win, too, huh? Yeah. No one in the AFC was hunting the Jaguars. Maybe they're taking them a little bit more seriously. And really what the AFC South was in a post-Urban Meyer world was the Stone Age. Mm -hmm. So you got no one really hunting each other. You, you had a bunch of people that are fighting with one another with sticks and stones and no actual weapons. Mm -hmm. And last year, the Jaguars were eight and three and blew it. They finished the season nine and eight. I also think this is, it's, it's a loser quote to be, to be talking this way about chasing the AFC South. Don't you have bigger expectations like I it. would think so. I, I think that we perhaps in Houston look at the AFC South a little bit differently than we should. I think at times we seeing as we've seen the Texans win seven division titles since 2011. Yeah. We kind of look at this division as a God given right. But you, you won a playoff game. Then you started the season eight to three and uh, eight and three. Your focus still going forward should be getting back to you know, the playoffs and beyond and not just making, not just winning the division. You should have that, that franchise, the coaching staff and Trevor Lawrence should have higher expectations for themselves this year than just worrying about like saying they're going to hunt for the, the AFC South championship. That just seems I, I, low I, bar. -ish. I, I think that they were trying to make it seem as if now they don't have everyone that has targets on their back. They have targets on everybody else's back. But I really do think it's a very arrogant way to look at yourself when you won a game against Brandon Boob Staley and the Chargers where Trevor Lawrence threw four interceptions in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. No one was looking at the Jaguars after that game and saying, oh, wow. Well, actually, check that. Some people were. These people are dumbasses. The people that thought that Trevor Lawrence rebounding from throwing four interceptions in the first half against a team that has choked and choked and choked and choked for years and years and years. Like, that actually meant an effing thing. Mm -hmm. That makes me angry the people that bought into that whatever i told them i told them what i had to tell them this idea that the jaguars though were a serious consideration in the afc because they hung in there with the kansas city chiefs in the divisional round of the 2022 to 2023 playoffs that is a joke it's a joke yeah so uh, they're I, i'm sure doug peterson in a way is is saying well okay now we don't have any pressure on our shoulders anymore. No, you do. You have Trevor Lawrence. And this is what the last year before the rookie deal um, turns into a big time extension a and big time extension. I, I do think that the conversation about winning with the quarterback on a rookie deal is, is a tad annoying, but at the same time, if you're ever going to win, you got to be now. And okay. Bringing in Darnell Savage from the Packers. That's going to change it. Mitch Morse center from the uh, Buffalo bills who was cut. He's 33 years old. That's going to change it. Um, Eric Armstead, right? Like they brought Gabe in Davis. They're they've brought in guys who they believe have had playoff success, and think that these guys are going to make, I guess, Jacksonville a more serious operation. Yeah, and the and the follow up to this would obviously be, you know, are the Texans the the hunters or the hunted? If we if we go down this Doug Peterson path, they're the hunters because I am. There is. CJ Stroud's too good to celebrate winning the AFC South ever again. You got one out of it. You got one. I like that. That's it. You, you got to celebrate your winning the division this year. That's a Texan season ticket holder talking, not a Bears fan <laughs> yeah. talking. But like it's your, your, your quarterback's too good to be focused on hanging banners of winning a four team division. 
the expectations for this franchise have changed because you have a quarterback who in his rookie year became a top five quarterback in the NFL. You are hunting the Kansas City Chiefs. You are worried about the Baltimore Ravens. You are worried about the Buffalo Bills and then whoever you potentially play in the Super Bowl. Don't worry. about Like, win the AFC South, that's a low ball. But it's an afterthought, right. It, you know, a real man never stops hunting. It's true. Because then you win another Super Bowl. That's what they say. And another one. You know yeah. what, you know what, and another one. Ask C.J. Stroud what his favorite AFC South championship is. What he'll say. The next, the next one. one. Yeah. But then also the, the things that happen after that. Yeah, it's yeah. Not as important. It's not as important. I, What's your favorite AFC championship game appearances? The first one. The, 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 but the, then. The only one. The next one. The only one that will happen. The next one. Yeah. I think with with where they're at right now, like they are. You, have, you always have to be the hunters. I This this idea that you, you, you all of a sudden stop being that. No. you. Whenever you take your foot off the gas that's when teams generally catch you. And that's why what the Chiefs is do, Chiefs are doing is so incredible. And and what the Patriots were doing before was so incredible. You you can never really have this sense of, oh, we've achieved something. And that's what I at least got from those Doug Peterson comments is that they really felt like they had achieved something mm-hmm. in that first season. And, okay, they had the 8-3 and three start last year, so maybe you could tell yourself, well, no, they just had a late season swoon and they're – Eight and three is more of a reflection of who the Jaguars are than the way that they finished the year. But honestly, I, I feel like the Jaguars are a, a, a very above average team. Um, and I, I I think that Doug Peterson gets a little arrogant from time to time. I think that's one of the reasons that he and Howie Roseman didn't see eye to eye in Philly and why he's gone and Roseman's still there. Yeah, I, you can you can relax and have the letdown if you want a championship. Like, that, that's the only way. And I wish it wasn't like that, but I mean, look how many how often teams go back to back. So the Chiefs just did it. When's the last time it happened in baseball? The early two thousands. Last time it happened in basketball would have been some LeBron or uh, Curry team. Yeah, the Warriors. So like, it, 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 there's a reason why it doesn't happen. So the idea that you're now less complacent because you didn't win the AFC South after the year before winning a playoff game is crazy to me. And I hope the Texans never have that mentality. Yeah. Because the expectations, they just need to change. Like, I, they've annoyed me today very clearly. But, like, the one thing with, like, the Twitch that, like, I give them credit to is that, like, that they, that the reason why they get annoyed Don't with give the, them credit. That's the Texans. The terrorist I know. But, like, the reason why they get annoyed with the Texans conversation is because so many people in this city have such a low bar. Like, making the playoffs is, and winning the AFC South has been no. this fun story. But it, it, that's true, but the reason the reason the Twitchers are doing this is because these people think that, like, regular season baseball is good. Like, this is this is their problem. I know. This is their burden, and, and they're just constantly going to try to troll. I know, but, just, like, but to their point, I, I think they're right. There's there no, are, they're never right. They're, there they there said, are too many people. They've in, never in, said one thing that's right. Uh, and they come many, back, and I, I love them for it. There are too many people in this city who like who have too low of expectations for the Texans franchise, and with CJ Stroud now as the quarterback, that should change dramatically. Yeah, people people talked about the Texans like they were like a Cinderella in the in the yeah. uh, final or in the in the college basketball tournament or like a a like group of five college football team playing against power five teams whenever they would go up and or whenever they would make the playoffs. It's like Man, you know, they, they win the home game, and then oh, then they have to play, like, the Patriots or Ravens, and then, you know, they, they, of course they lose. But yeah. I think with C.J. Stroud, it's like, no, you actually have a chance to win real stuff because for the first time in franchise history, you have a legitimate, like, top, top, top of the line quarterback. Even, even in the Deshaun Watson days, like, he wasn't – as close to the top of the NFL as of quarterbacks in the NFL as CJ Stroud is like he, he CJ Stroud is c- closer to the top than Deshaun Watson ever was right like in the Watson, quarterback hierarchy mm. Watson had that one year where people were like he should be an MVP and they were four and twelve <laughs> yeah that too yeah <laughs> that too yeah. is that he was he was a great quarterback on some crappy teams yeah. And C.J. Stroud was a great quarterback on a pretty good team and hopefully is going to be a better quarterback on a much better team going forward. But the Deshaun Watson teams that were crappy were expected to be good. This team was expected to be crappy and turned out to be yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that, that's why even though I also have my doubts about the strength of schedule and the opponents they're going to play this year, 
it's going to be challenging. The expectation for the Texans this year is to win two playoff games. At, at a bare two. minimum, I'm always a step-up guy. Like, once you win one, you got to win two. Then you win two, then you win three, and then you win a Super Bowl. Like, it, like, it, oh, th- it might take either. four years, but those are my expectations. Like, I maybe I'm unrealistic because I, you know, I'm a Bears fan. Uh, and I don't know what good teams look like. You don't like. hold the Bears to these standards. That's what the Bears did, right? They yeah. won. They went from the first pick to the ninth pick. Uh, this okay? Is- <laughs> progress. That is progress, people. I want progress. Four and progress. Years and they're picking 32nd. Yeah. <laughs> I want progress is, is winning one playoff game to winning two playoff games. See, this is just this is a battered a battered husband right here. I just want to sell Not with your actual wife. I mean, your, your sports wife, the Chicago Bears. Yeah. This is a battered man who is holding another team. To different expectations. I wish I could hold that another. team to those expectations. I can hold the Texans to a different expectation because they have a quarterback. Yeah. Unlike the other team. All right. That's it. I'm done being bullied for this segment. No, <laughs> we're not bullying you. We're helping you out. This is what this is what the person who never changes anything says. I'm being bullied. Okay, addict. You're a Bears fan. Get out of the crack house. Garbage time. That's next. First, let me tell you about my friends at Pendleton Whiskey. You know, you've had a long day. You realize you root for just an absolute drag of a football team. You know, you're laughing the pain away sitting next to uh, the person that's talking into the microphone right now. You know what you need? You need a tall, refreshing glass of Pendleton Whiskey. You know what I do? One rock, two fingers. Glorious day because Pendleton Whiskey captures the unique spirit of the American West. In every single bottle. How is it made? Oh, let me tell you. It's the finest northern grains. It's cut with Mount Hood glacier water. It's barrel-aged in American oak. And it honors a heritage that inspires us to live boldly. And to never lose sight of the values we believe in. Unless it's being a Bears fan. And taste the moment wherever we may be. A taste of true Western tradition is always worth raising a glass to. So discover more at PendletonWhiskey.com at Drizzly.com or get a bottle of Pendleton Whiskey at your local liquor store. Pendleton Whiskey, it's true Western tradition. You are listening to Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Paul Gallant and Joe George. Oh, man. 
Uh, I love I love expectations conversations. You do? Sometimes it really upsets people. Today they seem to be not too upset, but who cares if they're upset? I know seven zero three two. This is the big boy chair, Joe. F these people that uh, are making you feel down. Uh, seven zero three two Texans look at AFC South banners like Celtics. I'm assuming the rest of that is supposed to say championships. Um, well, I mean, they really will they break? Can they take them down at some point? They can consolidate them. You gotta win. You gotta win like three Super Bowls, I think, to consolidate them. Now that you've committed, you have to keep them up. I really, yeah. You're a but wall they're... decor guy. But now you, that, you're but... like me. I don't like to have blank spaces in the walls in my home, so I buy stupid stuff over and over again because I like shiny things. Yeah, but now that Cal is the owner of the Texans, that should be his first act. Is we don't celebrate division titles. Sorry, Dad. Also, they're kind of running out of space. Well, there's yeah. the other there's the other side of the Raptors. Yeah, I mean, give there's plenty give, of space. Give CJ five more years. Now you're out of space. No, I, I, I'm okay with it until they win three Super Bowls, and then you consolidate, and you can turn it into one banner that says like AFC South champions. Boom, 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 boom. That boom. I'm, the that Celtics I'm okay have with. stuff like that. There are yeah, a couple of I, Celtics banners that are like that are like yeah. yeah, the Rockets do too. You're right. Yeah. Yes. I just you gotta get rid of them. You just gotta you gotta find a way. Whether you consolidate them or you win Super Bowls to get rid of them. I mean, that's what the Astros did. They used yeah. to have the division pennants out in left field. Oh, that's and, true. And now it's just World Series appearances. Yeah. And hopefully, when the Texans win their first Super Bowl, you know they can actually get the uh, the the cover off of the banner, unlike the Astros in two thousand. Was that 17? You're when saying they when? It off? I think it, it was 17. By the way, you're giving yourself another out to jump off the Bears bandwagon, not onto the Texans I'm bandwagon, because you're saying when the Texans win a Super Bowl. I'm, I'm focused on the Texans right now. You I'm know not the Bears are the never going to do that again. Probably. You'll true. always have 85 when you weren't alive. And when I was negative seven. All right, it's time for garbage time. Negative seven. Interesting. Speaking of, did I do my math wrong? Oh no, I didn't. No, I, I'm. That surprised me. Eighty-five. You were negative seven. Yeah, I was. I was born ninety-two. Oh God, I gotta blow my brains out. <laughs> I'm so old. I'm so old. What are you born like eighty-four? <laughs> oh my God, that hurt even more. It was eighty-five. Eighty-seven. Eighty-eight. Eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. <laughs> it's all right sean was born in like 2000 <laughs> uh, i was not alive for a rockets championship hmm. well listen speaking of the houston rockets we, we didn't really touch on this yesterday what are we to make of these claims that are unsubstantiated that jalen green is not just having a baby not one with dry michelle not two allegedly Three, because a model and another stripper are also claiming that they are, one, pregnant with Jalen Green mm. to the same time as Drya. This is the Oof. stripper. The model claims she had Jalen Green's baby last month. This comes from a Twitter account that doesn't seem to have much that's actually corroborating this report. Yes. I got to say, uh, watching Jalen war- uh, Jalen Green warm up dancing around he did seem like somebody who is one not bothered by the many uh paternity allegations in addition to not being bothered by getting robbed of winning western conference player of the week the man seems to be uh living his best life right now and i i feel like we need more proof before putting more rumors uh, like this out about uh jalen green his fingernails they look sick and if the rockets make the playing tournament i in solidarity am going to get three women pregnant <laughs> <laughs> No. If they make it, no. If they make it, paint your fingernails. If they miss it, boom. <laughs> that's that's, that's too much to put on. What me. a wager! That's too. That's too much to put on me. I mean, one's a stripper, so no you can, one wants okay, to have okay, sex okay. with me. I'm good on that path. Okay, one baby mama. Okay. <laughs> Unbelievable, yeah. you yeah. guys. Just because Jalen only has one confirmed. You yeah, it's one. only you only have one <laughs> confirmed. It's, one it's, as it's, they're as they're confirmed. Stop. You, you only have to have. If they make the playoffs, I will paint my fingernails. If they don't, 
three baby mamas. Uh, the guy with the handlebar mustache in Yellowstone, actor Forey J. Smith, got kicked off an airline yesterday in Houston. Why? Because he refused to sit beside a passenger wearing a mask. Some allege he was drunk in a video that he posted to Instagram after the fact. Based off of his character on Yellowstone, that would not be the most surprising thing in the world. Is this man method acting, or was he truly upset about someone wearing a mask next to him on a plane? I mean, I get why you're kind of, like, tired of people wearing them. I'm weirded out by it at this point, but I'm also not going to be like, excuse me, I can't sit next to somebody with a mask. Because I want to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. Even if there's a fatty boom batty sitting in the seat right next to me and, and um, my uh, my arm is caught in between their arm and their, their rolls, like even then, I just want to take off, get to my point, yeah, and that's get fair. out. Yeah, I don't know why you get so upset about this. Yeah. So it's it's like a, like a mask mask, not like a... Like Michael Myers mask? No, a oh, mask okay. mask. I, I would get it if it was like a... They probably wouldn't you know, let you on a plane with a mask A Wolfman mask. mask or, you know, some sort of, you know, a different kind of mask. And to wrap it up, a guys. A president's face like he's in Point Break. That would be funny. Yeah, it's like the Richard Nixon. <laughs> Playground bullies earn more than socially awkward children and enjoy high-flying careers per research. Yeah, no wonder you're so good at this show and I'm not. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Clearly, uh, do I seem successful to you, Joe? Do I seem successful? It's not your first radio show. It's my first <laughs> that's radio what I, show. Well, that's what I mean. I've had a lot of radio shows. Yeah. How many of them were my fault? To be fair, he's way older than you, though. <laughs> and he might have three and baby that moms. <laughs> you know, the Galan and George show, it's been great. All right. That does it for us. Just great. a reminder. If the Rockets, at by Paul if the Rockets make the playing tournament, Paul paints his fingernails. If they miss it. He's got to get, no, three, he's gotta get not three baby mamas. Not uh, the happening. Killer Bees with Joel, Jeremy, and Brian are up next year. See you later. Peace.
Ooh, what up, H-Town? Hey, how we doing? How much are you now kind of tracking the Rockets? I don't give a damn about the Rockets. That's Draymond Green. Prior to that, it was Joel Blank. I am Branham. It is Brian behind the glass. You know what day it is. It's a Taco Tuesday edition of the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. I, of course, am the innovator, the creator, the whatever of Taco Tuesday. Uh, Rockets won another basketball game yesterday. Draymond Green says he's not concerned about the Rockets. He didn't give a darn about the Rockets. He probably should. They're only a half game back out of the play-in. The Rockets continue to play some good basketball. Nine in a row for the Houston Rockets. Uh, This is getting pretty fun if you're a Houston Rocket fan. No doubt about it. I mean, when you watch this team play, and obviously that was a game you were supposed to win last night, whether Jabari played or not. But the fact of the matter is, is you just keep seeing positives that allow you to give them superlatives to say, hey, this with each passing game, this season is a win, even if they don't make it to the play-in game, no matter where they finish. It was one thing to say, hey, they won 22 games a year ago. Just trying to win more than that would have been an accomplishment. But in year one of Ime Udoka, to do what they've already done, to be over 500 at this point in the season and be a half game out of the play-in game, I mean, that's massive props, all the kudos in the world to the entire squad. I wanted this team to play high-stakes basketball, and I got off of that a few weeks ago because the Rockets started to struggle a little bit into the All-Star break, out of the All-Star break. Uh, What was it? There was like six games. Was it six games back out of the 10th spot? Six Mm -hmm. games out of the play, and I was like, there's no chance they're catching Golden State. There's no chance they're catching the Lakers. Yeah, they're getting a bit of a funk. I was like, you know what? This just doesn't feel good. I don't think that they're going to get this like going in the right direction like enough to where they could catch Golden State. And that's whenever I started to say play for ping pong balls. What an idiot I am. Who came up with that stupid idea? I I did. Uh, But they've turned it around. They're playing at a high level. They're winning every game they play, it seems like. Jalen Green's playing really well. Complimentary basketball. They're connected. They're playing at a high level. This is great. This is Even if you don't get into the play-in, which – I think they got a shot. Even if you don't go in, get in, you're playing high stakes basketball right now. Yeah. You're 71 games into the season. You have 11 games left, and the Rockets are actually playing for something. When was the last time the Rockets had a dozen games or less where they were playing for something? It's been a few years. That's a good question. So this young team is getting to play high stake basketball. They're getting to have these, you know, the, these games that are meaningful, that are impactful, and I think that goes a long way in helping a young team. I don't really care what a team team's record is whenever they're young and they're growing and they're developing I do care if they're playing high stakes and this team is playing high stakes basketball and I think it's going to accelerate the growth that they have as a team uh we we, you know Jalen Green gets a lot of the the talk but this is a total team effort like Jalen Green yesterday it it wasn't his best game that he's had in his last dozen or so now he still scored 27 when he had a poor shooting night which I think is maturation as a score and something we've talked about Mm -hmm. can he get you 20 25 when he's not shooting well well, he did yesterday. It took him 26 shots, but if the Rockets are counting on him to score 20, 25 points, you got to figure out a way to get there. You can't have these nine-point games, these 12-point games, when you're the lead scorer. So I like to see Jalen Green have a 27-point game when he didn't shoot all that well. So that was cool to see. But this little stretch that they've been in and the next 11 games where they're playing high-stakes basketball and knock on wood, maybe they can get into the play-in game, I think it accelerates the growth as a team going forward. There's nothing else to consider but the fact that it's going to give them, it's going to accelerate. It's going to give them experience. It's going to give them motivation. It's going to give them an understanding of what kind of what, what kind of effort it's going to take and what kind of execution it's going to take in order to do these kind of things consistently and be where some of the best teams in the league are. It's a great precursor to what's ahead for this squad. And with every passing game, especially against bigger opponents, you're going to find a, a young team that's getting experience and understanding what it takes to be a winning team in this league. It's valuable whether you make it or not, as you said. And the biggest thing is you can say that, hey, they're playing they're, they're playing great basketball. They're playing the right way. To me, Jalen Green was a tale of two halves that it, it, about, say, 15, 20 games ago, he would have mailed it in at halftime and just understood it, just basically would have said, this is one of those nights. It ain't it for me. And you probably wouldn't have seen the, the 180. The second half 180 was so encouraging to understand that, hey, I still got to keep taking my shots. I still got to keep getting others involved, and I got to do what's necessary for this team. Then on top of all that, Jeremy, when you look at it, you're playing without Alpi. You're playing without Tari Eason. You're playing without Cam Whitmore. You're playing without guys that you're still evaluating, but you think are going to be big pieces of your future going forward, 
and yet you're still winning game after game after game to be in this position. People thought I was crazy whenever I said I really like this nucleus. Like, I, I really like this nucleus. We said that maybe three, four weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Now, they're, they're nowhere near their ceiling. For them, like, I, I've said that this has a chance of being a championship nucleus, and I, I still believe that, and I think it's becoming more believable now than it was a month, two months, six months ago. Because all of the guys, if, if you're looking like is 100% is the ceiling, Jalen Green is like at a 30. Like right now, he's like at a 60. Uh, Alpi Shingun's maybe closer to his ceiling, but is not to his ceiling yet. Amin Thompson, nowhere close to his ceiling. Jabari Smith, nowhere close to his ceiling. Cam Whitmore, nowhere close to his, ce- his ceiling. Tari Eason, nowhere close to his ceiling. They, I think that the Rockets, maybe outside of Oklahoma City, have the best collection of young talent to build around. Now, can they all reach their potential and turn into a championship l- nucleus? Time will tell. Right. I will say that they have the right coach to get the most out of them, and I think you can look at this season as a you know, a tell to that. I, I thought that Alpi Shingun was on a trajectory to be the, NF- the uh, NBA Most Improved Player of the Year. I credit the coaching staff for that. Jalen Green's probably the NBA's Most Improved Player over the last two months. I question I- I- – Give compliments to the coaching staff uh, for that. So I'm really excited where this organization's going. I like the roster. I love the coaching staff. And I am very happy that with 11 games left to play in the regular season, this team is playing meaningful, high-stake basketball. And I think it's just great for the evolution of this team. Here's the other thing, Jeremy. When we were talking about all this, and I think the key word in the nucleus was, is this a, is it a championship caliber nucleus? It doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. I think uh, it absolutely matters. I, I don't think it does. Because, because hear me out. Whether it is right now where it sits currently or not, you with every passing game, you have enough resources, if it's not, to do what you need to do to, to bump it up a notch if you have to to make it better. Because we keep talking about, well, even if you add these draft picks, where are you going to have room for them with all the guys you already got? But if you keep stockpiling talent, similar to, I agree, with, I think the most talent, young talent in the league is OKC, simply because Presti's just stockpiled draft pick after draft pick. But at a certain point, he found Shea Gilgis Alexander. If he wants to go find another veteran, he's got so many young pieces that teams are interested in and so many draft picks as well, he can do something with it. So whether you're championship caliber or not, you have one of the premier rosters for the next five years in the league just where, as it sits now. If you find out a year or two from now when you get to kind of where the Texans are looking at getting to that next level of being like a contending championship caliber team and you need to make something happen, you have enough pieces around your puzzle that you can utilize them to get where you need to go. Yeah, and this this is going to sound very nitpicky, but if you have a championship nucleus, it's easier to make those trades because your value of what you have is better. Like, and if you have better value of what you have in your you know arsenal, that makes it easier to make those trades or easier to get that target that you want. So I think the value of what you have on the roster always matters. Like, if you have a championship nucleus, well, it's easier to trade those pieces for pieces that you really want. If it's a non-championship nucleus, now you don't have as much value around the league. So that, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. That's why, to me, it matters. It always matters the amount of talent that you have on your roster, even if you want to make moves in, in the future. But to me, it's like if you're a championship caliber roster, you've got – in today's NBA, you're supposed to have three, but you have two dominant superstar talents in the league, uh-huh. and, and you have a third one that's close. And even if you don't have that right now, you have so much talent. You can go get one if you need to. 8437, I was not expecting the Rockets to close the gap like they have. I understand that they haven't had the hardest schedule necessary, uh, but Adoka has them playing really good ball right now without Shingun. Look, if you have a really easy schedule now, it's because you've played a pretty hard schedule mm-hmm. prior to this. So the, the Rockets are just trying to take advantage of the pocket of the schedule that opened up for them. If it's easy now, it means that it wasn't easy prior to when the easy schedule started. Like NBA, you play 82 games. They're all going to be pretty darn close to balanced as you can get. This isn't the NFL where you play 17 games and your schedule looks a lot different than somebody else's schedule. This isn't college football where you know Alabama plays an SEC schedule right. and Miami of Ohio Ohio plays a MAC schedule. You play 82 games in the NBA, it's going to be pretty darn balanced over the uh, the 82 games. So the Rockets are taking advantage of the easier part of their schedule, sure. But that means they already played the hardest part of their schedule. So I, I don't really put a whole lot of stock on that. Now, the Shingun conversation is interesting to me because I know that we've talked about Jalen without Alpi. We've talked about Jalen with Alpi. I think that there's – I think they can play together. I think they've sh- they've shown times this year where they can play together. Now, is it easier for Jalen Green to get his without Alpi? You don't have to feed the post. You have a guy that's playing outside of the three-point line instead of in the low post. I think it's a conversation worth having. 
Well, I think the bigger conversation is can Udoka create an offense that can actually appease both of them? Because when you look at the great look, when you look at the big man combinations, whether it was Wade and Shaq in Miami, Kobe and Shaq in the with the Lakers, uh, no matter who you pick, when you have a big presence, a big man presence, and you have a wing presence. There are offense, and it doesn't have to be the triangle, but there are offenses that can take advantage of both. You don't have to facilitate. Early in the season, I think they were running everything through Alpi. Yeah. Now you have the ability, because of what J- Jalen's shown you and because of the flexibility as a coaching staff, now it's on the coaching staff to develop an offense that can actually do both, can facilitate Alpi at times, can take advantage of matchups can- and facilitate with Jalen at times, and not take a step back no matter which one you choose to go to. Yeah, I, I think it's. I think the biggest thing for them to coexist in the best possible way is if Alpi can develop a, like a consistent three-point shot because I think that Jalen benefits on this five-out offense you have Jabari that's playing the five I know he wasn't there yesterday because he was suspended a game but if your center can play outside of the perimeter outside of the three-point line tons of space and I think Jalen Green is great in space uh, so I do think that there are benefits to Jalen Green offensively with Alpi Shingun off the floor now how do you marry the two to me, is Alpi developing a consistent three-point shot? I think that'll that'll do wonders for this offense going forward. And there is some thoughts that Alpi might be coming back at yeah. some point. This they said season. last night before the game he was getting shots up. He was working on some things. So was Cam Whitmore. So by the end of the year, you might have two of those pieces that we were talking about being out being back for you in case you need them down the stretch. That's just another shot in the arm for this team that already has shown they have they they got a real chemistry going on right now, and they've got everybody involved. That would be fantastic. I would, uh, if Alpi does come back, I'd bring him off the bench. I'm not changing the starting five as you're hot. I'm sorry. I, I honestly am only bringing him back if he's 100%. Well, of course. Well, but even I, if he's 100%, I, I, no, I'm only going to bring him off the bench. I wouldn't go, of course, because I think some teams, if they're in it and they got a chance to win, you know, to, to catch Golden State and, and actually secure the play, they might go all in to the point where they push him back too soon. He's too valuable for your future to push him up. Uh, push him if he's not 100%, but if he is and he can help you, put him back out there. I mean, he's a sprained ankle. I don't think him playing on a sprained ankle is going to lead to, like, amputation. No, like, I didn't say that either. But. Like, I mean, he's, he ha- obviously has to be healthy enough to play, but I'm saying if he's cleared and they make the decision to play him, I'm not I'm not putting him in the starting lineup unless you're struggling. Like, that's not a move I make unless I start struggling. If you continue to win, hey, uh, let's let's roll with what's we're hot. Uh, Alpi, you're gonna come off the bench for us for a few games. Sorry, until until you, you know, we we. And it might not even be because of Alpi. It might be because you're just winning games. Seven one three seven eight zero ESPN HRMP listener line. Seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. We're on the Twitch Twitch.tv slash ESPN ninety seven five. Joel's at Pac Man Joel on Twitter. Brian's at Sack by BMAC. I'm at Jeremy Branham. We're on ESPN as well. Just search. We're on YouTube as well. Just search ESPN Houston. We'll get your uh, your reaction to the Rockets. Seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six also a couple of questionable headlines that i saw out there am i being too curmudgeon again it's the killer bees on espn 97.5 and espn 92.5 
Coming to you live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's the Killer Bees. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Here's Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. He's Blank, I'm Branham. Joe George hanging out with us too. Peeping in, seeing what we're all about. Still in show content. Remember he did that in his first week of the uh, the show. There was a will a bit. What was the will a bit? Big deal, little deal, no deal? And then it's like show two of the Killer G's, and he's like doing that that segment. Yeah, he's he's feeling pretty good about himself these days. What'd you call him yesterday? What did I call him yesterday? Oh, the Probo- um, Probo- uh, probationary probationary, probationary talent. talent. Yeah, probationary yeah. talent. <laughs> uh, seven one three seven eight zero ESPN. Call him Lovey if you want, or Cully. I don't want. Okay. No, I don't want seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. We get to the headlines. I'm going to throw by you to ask. Am I being too much of a curmudgeon? I'll ask you in a second. But eight four three seven. I feel like I've been seeing Van Vliet going three for fifteen too often this year. At this point, I'd rather see Jalen Green taking those shots instead of Van Vliet, or at least give those shots to someone else. Even though Jalen Green wasn't shooting too hot yesterday either. Eh, yeah. I mean, I'm I hear you, Texture. But somebody else has to take the shots, too. Somebody Like, Jalen took 26 shots yesterday. Van Vliet took 18. I think that's a good ratio. I do, too, because I think that Van Vliet has really – you have to understand a couple of things. You didn't want James Harden back on this squad, and if you did, we should probably end the conversation there. But Van Vliet, you had to spend the money. You got a guy who Adoka really wanted, who was going to be a coach on the floor and do a lot of things to kind of help the development of young players. And he, he's capable of making big shots. I don't. I was watching. There was a time where they were struggling mightily on offense in the first half, and he took a, a a good amount of his shots right then and there, trying to keep them in the ball game and do some things. Jalen doesn't need more shots than he already takes because a lot of times he shoots himself back into a rhythm. So I'm fine with with the the numbers they put up last night, the shots that they took, and I think that you would probably want Fred Van Vliet shooting the majority of his shots more so than a lot of guys on this squad as they're. They're kind of fitting in and, and getting things squared away, too. I'm not sure how you get to Harden here because this was a very, like, because this you had roster. to spend the money in free yeah, agency. But the and the big discussion for right, the big the money was those two guys. About the, no, but I'm just saying, it was money, it, he's the right guy. And, and, and obviously, everybody's fluid in a situation right now where things are changing with Jalen having the ball more, doing more things. The, the 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 everything you heard was the alternative to Van Vliet was going to be Harden. Yeah, but the text specifically I talking that, about the amount of shots they're going it, up now. I'm taking it from the standpoint of Fred's been the right guy, and early on when they were trying to figure stuff out, he had to take those that many shots. But he's talking too. about now though. He's not talking about early in the year. But I don't or have like a problem with what personnel. he did last night either. The shots that he took. Yeah, I, I don't either. Like we're kind of on the same. I just don't know why you, you pulled back to like the off season when he's There's talking about like yesterday's are, game. A lot of people right now that I've seen. Are, are getting, like, a little too critical of Fred Van Vliet. I think he's been a good teammate. He's obviously making a boatload of money. He's not complaining. He's just, you know, he, his role has changed, too, as these young guys have taken on a bigger role. Yeah, if he's, if he's like, three for 20, like 20 shots is probably too many. But yeah. I, don't, I don't have a problem taking 15 shots even on a cold night. Now, if Alpi was playing, maybe it's a different story. Uh, Jabari doesn't get up many shots, so, like, even Jabari in the lineup doesn't really change that approach either. Uh, so, I... I it sounds like I'm always picking on cron.com. Uh, maybe it's not so much I'm picking on cron.com. Maybe I'm picking on their headline writer more than anything. They had a Jalen Green story. You know, Draymond Green, we bumped into the show with it. I don't give mm-hmm. a darn about the Rockets. Well, well Jalen Green yesterday was asked, hey, are you scoreboard watching? Are you keeping track of the Warriors? You know, trying to see if you get into this play in spot. Here was Jalen Green after the game. I'm looking at it every day. I was watching the Warriors last night. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, we're making a push. You got to go, like I said before. And- All right, so the headline on the Cron from this, Cron, not Houston Chronicle, Cron.com, Houston Chronicle, two different entities, uh, owned by the same company, but two different entities. The the headline says Jalen Green pokes fun at Draymond Green as playoff race tightens up. I don't think he was poking fun at Draymond Green, do you? Not at all. He was being honest. That's some clickbait stuff there from Cron.com. He said he's scoreboard watching is what he said. Look, I I think a lot of people went overboard on the Draymond comments, too, because when I first saw them, I was like, well, there's got to be more than this because everybody just feels like they need to say, you know, all this stuff about what Draymond said. He said one sentence. He doesn't give a damn about the Rockets. So what? Who cares? But from Jalen's perspective, he's giving you the honest feeling of a guy that's part of a team that's a half game behind the team that with full of veterans that's won championships that they want to catch. And, and it's like scoreboard watching in baseball. If you admit that you're scoreboard watching, that's great. You know what that means? You're competitive. You want to win. I have no idea where where Jalen Green could possibly poke be poking fun of Draymond Green here. Do you see this at all, Brian? No, no. Like, I'm, is he poking I'm, fun at him at all? I'm 100% with you guys. That, that was absolutely 
baiting for clicks. There's no way you could take the tone that Jalen Green said, the words that he used, and come to the conclusion that he was making fun of Draymond Green. He was asked a question like, hey, are you tracking the standings? Which, why wouldn't he be? Because they're at now a half game back at the Warriors. And he's like, yeah, I watched the Warriors last night. Look, I, 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 How was that ever... How could that ever be construed as a as a shot at Draymond? The thumbnail, the thumbnail to click on the story says Jalen Green throws shades at Warriors as Rockets eye, and then it says dot dot dot. And then if you click the actual story, it says Jalen Green pokes fun at Draymond Green as playoff race tightens. That, In that, no way is he sending a reach. shot to Draymond Green at all. That no. is the author. Putting- He's answered a question. Well, it's that simple. Jalen was answering a question. The author is yeah. trying to put in the context where context was not actually there. No. Right. Like, what in the what is going on at the Cron? Cron again, again, Cron.com and Houston Chronicle are very different entities. I feel like I'm being sent a cease and desist. I'm, I have not been I have not been threatened. I have not been given a cease and desist to make it very clear that Cron and Houston Chronicle are too. And I like some of the people at the Cron. I've met some people at the Cron. They do fantastic work. I'm not even sure the author of the story. Are you literally telling me that they're not owned by the same company? They're, they're owned by two- the same company, but they're run by two totally oh. different people. Like, the newsrooms aren't even together. Oh. Houston Chronicle and Cron.com do not coexist. So you'll never see the same columnist from Houston Chronicle. Well, sometimes they will. Like, I've seen Houston Chronicle use a Cron columnist to write for the Houston Chronicle. So I think that they're, like, their top fill-ins or okay. their top, like, hey, we have another story. Hey, will you go freelance for us here? Mm-hmm. But they're employed by Cron.com. Like, this Arthur was Michael Shapiro. I don't know if Michael Shapiro is actually, like, I don't know if he's writing the headlines. I have no idea. So I'm not poking fun think, at him. Yeah. I don't think that he's the one that I'm, I'm, I'm throwing my ire towards. But to say that Jalen Green pokes fun at Draymond Green as playoff race Titans is literally inventing things. It really is. The only way that that happens is if you get some player that, you know, unprovoked sits at their locker and says, unlike others, I'm watching, I'm watching the team that we're chasing every night. I'm watching the Warriors every night. Then there was no question that he was directly answering. There was no – then you can you can try and put those two and two together and, and at least have some kind of basis. There's no basis for this. He just answered a question that was asked to him in a post-game scrum. Yeah, I don't think there's – am I crazy here? 713-780-3776, or is this some clickbait and stuff? I want to start I want to start doing that. Just be the maverick against all these people that do all this clickbaiting stuff. I don't like it. I don't like people that engagement farm whatsoever. Here was another one that I, I question – I question the headline here a little bit. Uh, this is for MLB.com. It's from Brian McTaggart. Go Cougs. Uh, they had to do, I'm sure Major League Baseball forced them to do this. They're, they're, you know, editor or whatever. The most important thing we've learned from each team this season. For the Houston Astros, the most important thing that they've learned this season, Joe Espada is the right man for the job. Is it too early? Yeah. He's literally not managed early. one baseball, one Major League Baseball game in his life. How do we know he's the right man for the job? We don't. After spring training. I mean, you think about this, and the first thing I think about is, do you think Denver Denver media put out Nathaniel Hackett's the right man for the job before he coached the game with the Broncos? <laughs> I mean, man. If they did, I'm sure we can find it on Old Taste Exposed. Look, and I think no. that Joe Espada is the most interesting manager in the world, but he's not managed a single game. That's what I'm saying. The big th- My point being, whether you, you, know, you got a new coach, great, but you can't pass judgment on a new coach until, well, look, we've seen Cully, we've seen Lovey. You, you have to wait and see how it plays out. I'm pulling for Joe Spada. I think he's a smart baseball guy. I think he's been around this this team and in this organization long enough. He's going to do a, a great job. But at the same time, how do you know he's the right man for the job right now when he's never managed a Major League Baseball game before? I mean, except for filling in for Dusty if he gets tossed. Look, I, I think missed. it was a good hire, and I think for that sure. he's going to be good. But in no way can you say right now that he's the right man for the job. Like, if they go 81-81 and 81 and miss the playoffs and then never make the postseason again and the golden era is dead, we're going to look back at this headline and be, ooh, boy. Th- ooh, doesn't this just boy. come off as someone who didn't like Dusty's style of managing and see something like Jordan batting second? Like, oh, Joe Spot, a right man for the job. Like, they're, just, they're jumping to – declare it because they like his style or maybe sticking to the analytics more than Dusty did, and they're just jumping to conclusions. Yeah, I don't think McTaggart was that guy, though. Like, he was fair to Dusty. Like, he was never critical of Dusty. You think McTaggart wrote his own headline, though? Well, if you read the little, like, one thing you've learned, McTaggart, it, it does have his tagline under it. It said, a spot abided his time under a pair of World Series winning managers in Houston. Hinch and Baker finally gets his shot after serving his bench coach. So, it's, I mean, it's about a spot. Okay. Up. All right. That's fair. Then. Maybe, yeah. he, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's, it's certainly a, a jump to conclusion, if nothing else.
Best you can't, case you can't say that yet. Yeah, I no, think, and I like the hire. There's I like no the basis. Hire. There's no basis to make that assumption. I mean, now, you can you can present it as you're giving a take. Uh -huh. That'd be fine. We could go on like sure. hell. We have cash or trash at four thirty. We can make that take. But you're, if you're presenting it as a fact, then that changes everything. Because of how he handled spring training, like you could say it about D'Amico. You can say right. it about Ema. Yeah. Say it about a spotter. Yeah, I mean, it's too early. There's no, there's no basis to be able to make that judgment yet. I mean, we everybody thinks he's the right guy for the job. But until he's managed some Major League Baseball games for the team that he's going to be given credit for being the right man for that team, we don't know what we don't know. So I'm not that curmudgeon here? No. no. And honestly, I don't... But you're on a mission with headlines, though. I, I, I'm going to start... I'm Are going you the to be, critic? I'm going to be the roadblock for <laughs> clickbait. That's what I'm going to do. Because I'm, I'm tired of clickbait, Jeremy so I'm going to be the roadblock and the justice maverick for clickbait. Just Jeremy get this Branham, out of our fair city. Critic. Jeremy's headliners. Yeah. <laughs> so all you need to do is just do a segment called Jeremy's Look, Headliners. It just bothers me. Like it bothers me when Maybe I see this stuff because you're the like, like it's it's creating this. It's like you're literally creating a narrative for Jalen Green. Jalen Green said he's paying attention to the but, standings. But, he's not taking a shot at Draymond Green. But you know between Skip Bayless, who is the master of it and wants everybody to hate him and lash out at his stupid takes, to Colin Cowherd. This is what these guys live for these days. Oh, this absolutely. Is, this it, it's become. 80% clickbait media in the, maybe not 80%, but the right. media has become more than 50% clickbait. We see Yahoo Sports every single day with a headline. Like, if they sent someone down from the Astros, that's just one of the last guys. If they sent Cabbage down, mm -hmm. suddenly Astros send down possible key player in major move before they break camp. You click on it, you want to know who it is, and then you go, it was Cabbage? Well, that's, I mean, I get why it's done. Like, that's how you get eyes, but, that's how you get money, that's how you survive. Sure. Like, I, I get the game, I understand the game. I kind of, in a way, kind of do it with my Twitter, but it's more of a satire than anything else, to be completely honest. Like, I, yeah, I, I joke around that I engagement farm. Do I actually care for engagement? No, I don't. I, I'm, I'm kind of ridiculing it. I'm kind of, it's kind of a, a spoof more than anything else. But... I'm going to call it out when I see it because oh, it should. bothers me. And it's not just sports. You see it everywhere. Like, well, this happened here. And as you, you're like, actually do a little bit of digging on it. No, this headline is totally off base. It's not real. If you see the credible outlets, they don't need to do this because people are still going there every day to get updates on their favorite teams, to understand that they have a staff covering that team. And that's what they want. They want the true information. But you, when you see a true information source resorting to things like this with headlines, it's kind of sad. Because it yeah. never used to be that way. That's why I'm going to start calling it out. A roadblock for clickbait. The killer bees. 713-780-ESPN. Uh, HRMP listener line. 713 3776 You know that opening day is uh, Thursday? Thursday at 6.05. First pitch, by the way. Yes, we know it starts at 3. But it really starts at 6.05. The offseason is done. Astros are playing, like, exhibition games against the Space Cowboys, and they're losing games to the Space Cowboys because the batter's eye was not changed. What was your final Astros offseason grade? 713-780-3776. Killer Bees, ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5.
You're back with the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. He's Blank. I'm Branham. We are the Bees. 713-780-ESPN, HRMP listener line. Um, What is your offseason grade for the Astros? They play a real game on Thursday. Open up a four-game series against the Yankees. 605 first pitch. The bid is back. Um, what is your off-season grade for the Strohs now that we're here? Like, opening day is here, final exhibition game today, off day tomorrow, uh, opening day, Thursday afternoon. What is your off-season grade? I think for me it's a solid B. Uh, I think that they could have updated – I mean, you, they could have upgraded the bullpen a little bit more. They could have brought in another bat. But what they did in bringing in a massive free agent that I didn't expect in a guy like Hayter, uh, getting a, a backup catcher, uh, that has experience, that can do a lot, that, that has some versatility at the plate for you. I'm totally fine with what they did. I, I think that they did more than enough, more than I expected them to do, especially with the way the free agency started. So I'll give them a B. Yeah, I think B's a fair grade. The Athletic posted a, an offseason grade for every single team around Major League Baseball. Uh, they gave the Astros a B as well. I, I think where they hit here... I actually like what they did with – and one of their check marks was catcher. I like what they do with catcher because I think Victor Caratini, if – let's say Yiner Diaz, not that we are thinking this is to be the case. Let's say the Yiner Diaz can't handle the load defensively. I don't think that's going to be the case. But if he can't, Caratini's a capable starter in Major League Baseball. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe Yiner show – maybe he gets dinged up and all he can do is DH for you. I don't love that because, I mean, Jordan Alvarez is going to play some games in the outfield, which terrifies me. Definitely. Caratina is a is a more than capable starting catcher. And for you to sign him as your backup guy, and backup catchers play quite a bit, I think was uh, was one of their, like, the underrated move to me that I like that certainly helps out their bench. Like, Caratini's better than Martin Maldonado. Um, so I like that aspect of it. Obviously, the biggest star you got was Josh Hader. Hader elevates the bullpen. But why I don't give it, like, an A as opposed to a B is because your bullpen was already very good good last year like the overall regular season you had Hector Neris who was fantastic Phil Maton was solid Ryan Stanek was pretty good after two years ago had the lowest ERA in all of Houston Astro history for a reliever so you kind of added a strength to what was already a strength last year and you also have some holes in the middle relief unless some of these young guys can step up offensively you didn't really add a starter while I like the move of Caratini that's it like what's your next best offensive acquisition the guys that you're, you know, upgrading to a starter, like you think that Yiner Diaz is going to be an upgrade. You hope that Jake Myers is an upgrade over Jake Myers and Corey Jolks from last season. But other than that, like their key addition for the Astros with the next batch, Trey Cabbage, and Trey Cabbage isn't even breaking the, squad. the spring. Yeah. isn't even breaking spring training on the on the squad. Uh, I felt like they could have used another left-handed bat. I don't think the bench is great, so I think it's an okay offseason. Obviously, the Hater move saves it because if you don't get Hater, it's like a, it's an F. You had a terrible offseason. Haters what brings it up to a Absolutely. solid B. Uh, but there's a lot of other things that I wish the Astros would have done and it's why I'm not going to give it an A. I, I think I would go a little bit higher than a B, and maybe this is uh, creating a, a, an, an extra grade just to say I gave a grade You can work than for con.com. But I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go with A- minus just because, look, while I hear you, you know, left-handed bat, maybe middle relief, there, there certainly were some places where they could have added to – I just don't know how realistic those were. Unless you're willing to go to a place with the Astros, uh, you know, salary and, and where they spend in the luxury tax that they've never gone before, and I just don't think that was a reasonable ask, then the Astros weren't going to add this massive bat, left-handed bat, or another bullpen arm, or another starting pitcher to re- alleviate some of the concerns about the depth in the starting rotation that would have been someone that would have cracked the, you know, the starting lineup that made the difference that we were talking about and give them an A plus. So I just don't see it as all that realistic. And why couldn't you add a five million dollar left handed bat to have on your bench instead of John Singleton? I, who, well, who's the name? Who 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 out who out there signed for five million that you that you'd rather that the Astros should have signed? Um, I don't know. That's, that's I haven't kind of, looked that's in a kind while. Of the problem. It's kind of what we talked about with some of the NFL free agency was like, well, we like to say you know cut Robert Woods and use that five million on a wide receiver, but all the wide receivers are going for well beyond that. So, I, and I, I will push back a little bit on the Josh Hader thing. I know you strengthened the strength, but I don't think I looked at the Astros bullpen last year, and certainly some of the guys in the middle of relief had some moments 
but I didn't really feel comfortable about what they were throwing out there. Like, okay, they're going to go lock it down until you got to the eighth inning, until you got to a Abreu Presley. So now by adding Hayter, you've you've uh, you lengthened out that amount of time where you feel like you put in the bullpen and the game's over. But isn't that why you get that? In my opinion, that's part of the reason why I gave him a B because if they didn't go out and replace the volume you lost and the three relievers that you lost, you shorten the game on the back end by adding another lockdown closer so that you have those last three innings co covered better so that you, 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 one way or another, you still obviously need some arms. But this way, at least, you know you've shortened the game no matter who is trying to fill in. And you, you assume your starters can get you into the, at least the fifth. And when they can't, then, yeah, maybe it's one of those nights. But overall, there's a, di there's a couple different ways you can strengthen the bullpen. They tried a different approach to it. I still think they were they were lacking at least one more arm, but at the same time, I don't I don't fault them for hater. I think it's a playoff move. Uh, eight seven three six. Can you call it a strength though? If you lost all three bullpen guys you mentioned in the postseason, yeah, because one guy is greater than two. Uh, whenever you're talking about postseason baseball, now over the course of one sixty two, what helped you more? Probably the two or the three versus the one. But it's a move geared for the postseason because the Astros have postseason aspirations. Can you call it a postseason and bigger picture move too? Because Presley's in the last year of his deal. So therefore, you know, if you're going to lose, he might not be. He's got the vesting option. But even for if you, okay, so pitch. one, maybe two. But you know that Hater for five two. means that even if you lose Presley, you've got a closer built right in with a Brayu to where your eight and nine are still covered. Yeah, there's I mean, not, there's I like not only the that, but I think you also have to remember whether it be some of these injured pitchers coming back or a call up for Spencer Arigetti, there could be, uh, you know, names in the bullpen by the time we get to September and October that we're not talking about right now. And suddenly those that five inning, that fifth inning role that, oh, crap, our starter only went four innings. And now you got to, you know, bridge a couple innings. That concern that we have now isn't the same when we get to September and October. Yeah. And I mean, you but, could you can make you can pick up pick up relievers, too, at the deadline. Yeah, I mean, the deadline hasn't passed yet. I mean, you still have you can see what you and got. The have always seemingly always added yeah. a decent middle reliever I mean, so at the trade. There's deadline. time to make another move if you feel like, look, maybe we did take this too lightly and we, maybe we do need another arm. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of arguing for him, though. Like, you're you're arguing for Brian. Brian gave it a better grade than we did. Uh, a couple of the, the names but, that I would throw out. Go ahead. I, I'm just – I'm not – I, I I feel it very, no, very good about the hater. Welcome over to my side, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, mean, I feel really good case. about the hater edition, <laughs> but if if that wasn't enough, they can still make another move to make the middle of the bullpen better, or they could even find another bat if they need to before the deadline, but that's why I think that they did more than enough to get a B. I, I will say that the areas that they didn't add, like I would like another arm or two just because I like excess, right? Like I would love to just fill every hole, even though that's probably not realistic. Pause. Um, Clip that. You can, you, can, <laughs> you can find middle relievers pretty cheap at the deadline. Rental reliever, you can find that pretty cheap. A left-handed fourth outfielder, you can find pretty cheap uh, at the deadline. So the areas that I have concerns about, I do admit that if you need them and they're still concerned come July that those are the easiest ones to, to find. It, it feels a, li a little bit sometimes like when we complain about the, the, the needs they didn't fill, this is almost Madden roster building. Like Yeah, what, for sure. I mean, I mean, what – I mean, maybe outside the Dodgers because they have more money than guy. Like, what team is running out of a roster, a 26-man roster right. with, with zero Well, holes? I don't like that argument because I'm the Astros and I'm trying to win a World Series. I don't want to compare myself to the Florida Marlins and the no, Kansas City no, Royals. A, I want to, I want a to build there. a roster that's going to win a World Series. And where I think that this team could be strengthened is, is, is its bench. I'm like, I'm even okay-ish with Jake Myers getting a crack at being your everyday center fielder. But I wish there's an option in case that fails. What are your options? of Jake Myers is not an everyday center fielder. Either you're playing Jordan and left. I do not want that. Trey Cabbage, no. Jacob Melton had an awful spring, you, no. You Corey Jolts is in a starting outfielder. So, like, that's that's where I come into – like, that's where my mindset's at. I want a deep bench with some plan Bs. And you mentioned a couple of those, like, if you're giving me $5 million to add one more bat that I would have liked and going off of guys who actually signed contracts, a couple of righties that I like. I'll get you one lefty in a second. But a couple of righties that I would have, I would have liked. Adam Duvall on this team. He signed for $3 million for – or $3, 3 million for one year. Would I rather have Adam Duvall or John Singleton? Give me Adam Duvall. Mm -hmm. Kiki Hernandez, $4 million. He's a righty, but I'd rather have him than John Singleton. How about Joey Gallo? And I know Joey Gallo is going to hit a buck 90 and strike out so 300 Duvall. times. So will Duvall. But are they better than John Singleton? Yeah, I mean, well, I feel like we could say that about everyone in the league. Sure. So, I mean, well, that's, what, that's that my is. point, though. It's yeah. like that, that you're carrying that guy, though. So we can say everybody in the league's better, but you're carrying the guy that everybody in the league's better. Yeah, the only reason why I, I look at this, too, is kind of what you were – to your point you are saying about, hey, this is a ch championship-caliber team. Absolutely. And to Jeremy, your point, we've been in this, on the same page on this. 
I would have added at least one more arm too because if I got a championship caliber team, I need guys with experience. I don't want guys that I'm I'm bringing up from the minor leagues thinking maybe there's a chance this guy could be a middle reliever for us or fill a role for us. I need a guy that's that is very familiar with filling that kind of a role, has pitched out of the bullpen before, has major league experience so that I am as as buttoned up as I can be as a championship caliber team. If I'm a middle of the road team or I'm, you know, obviously I'm trying to build for the future, yeah, I, then I'm okay bringing up young arms and trying to experiment. With this team, I would have liked another arm because I think if you are a World Series team, experience matters. And I will say this to defend Crane, and he kind of talks out of both sides of my mouth a little bit. I can understand not signing Michael Lorenzen and having to pay a luxury tax on Michael Lorenzen. Like, he's not that big enough a game changer where you're like, okay, we must have him. You can wait a couple of months to see, uh, you know, see how it's going. Like, I, I get it. I would like a stronger bench. It's not my money. Uh, five eight four seven B because they could have made this lineup a next level with a bigger outfielder. Uh, pushing Pena to the nine hole makes this lineup the elite of Major League Baseball. That's from Eric. I mean, that could still happen without a free agent acquisition. Like if Jake, and again, it's a big if, right? When you're talking Jake Myers, but if Myers can hit two seventy and like have a little bit of power, hit fifteen to twenty home runs, that's amazing production from your eight nine spot. Yeah, no doubt about it. Look. I don't think that they're in a position where they failed. The, I don't think that they're in a position going into the regular season that I worry about a whole lot or I doubt a whole lot. My biggest thing is you're in a position where you could have gotten better this offseason by maybe doing a little bit more in free agency. But that doesn't mean that the window is completely shut on the fact that if you find out whether it's Jake Myers, the bullpen, a, 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 or another bat off the bench, injuries, uh -huh. you can still upgrade. Look, it's... We're, we're wanting more. Like, we, we're hoping for luxuries. They're not necessities. I still think the Astros can win a World Series with the roster they currently have. Uh, but I can understand Crane's side of it, too. I don't want to spend $5 million and then pay a 20% tax on a Joey Gallo. Like, why? Like, does it really upgrade you enough to where you're paying $5 million plus the tax? No, not really. Michael Lorenzen's an arm that I would have liked to have if I had Monopoly money. But if I'm Jim Crane, am I going to sign? What did Lorenzen get? $5 million, $6 million? I don't even remember what he got. But he got $5 million and then you're taxing him 20% on top of that? Yeah. Does that upgrade you enough where you want to spend $5 million plus the tax? No, no, it's not. So, like, I, I get his point of view. But me, the one that's not spending the money, hey, strengthen the bench. So, like, I get both sides of it. 713-780-ESPN. What is your offseason grade for the Strohs? 713-780-3776. There was uh, predictions in The Athletic today about Major League Baseball, and two of them pertain to the Houston Astros. What were those predictions? Would you take those predictions, and do you think they will happen? 713-780-3776. Killer Bees, ESPN 97.5, ESPN 92.5.
Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's the Killer Bees with Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. He's Blank, I'm Branham. We're the Bees on ESPN 97.5, ESPN, 95, uh, ESPN 92.5. We'll get to the uh, the predictions. W- would you take these two predictions in a moment? Uh, somebody texted Charlie Blackman. I think Charlie Blackman's still free. At least it is according to Spotrack, but you can never trust those guys. Uh, he played 96 games last year, 803 OPS. He doesn't play center anymore. He's really not good defensively at all anymore, but hey, a bench option, maybe. Um, I want a guy who can play a little bit of defense, so I don't love that option, but I would concede that it is an upgrade over at least one, maybe two of the guys that you're going to carry on opening day. Uh, someone else, uh, Nate and Seabrook, not sure why you were hating on Jordan playing left field so much. I've never seen him commit an error, and he's got a great arm. This has nothing to do with Jordan defensively, uh, and I understand that sounds weird because I'm saying I don't want to see him play defense. It has everything to do with his proneness for injury. I I'll, I agree with you. Jordan's fine in left field. Uh, he's probably a little bit below average to average as a defensive left fielder, but he's capable. Like He's got pretty good speed, especially for a big man. He does have a cannon for an arm. That's his best defensive attribute. But this has everything to do about his offense. He is not a good enough outfielder to where you're like, Let's, we have to get him out there because now you're jeopardizing how many games he plays, period. Uh, he has shown that over the course of his career that he is prone to injury. He is such a good hitter that I want to limit the chances he has to getting injured. So that's that's why I never want to see Jordan play left field. If Jordan never played the field again in his life and was only a designated hitter for the rest of his life, I would be perfectly okay with that. And I'm not saying that Jordan's a bad defender. I just love him so much offensively that I don't want to risk the chances of him getting hurt by playing an average at best left field. Yeah, I, I think that was the key that when we, you know, we always had the Jordan rules and everything else. The main thing is the fact that you saw that slip on the ice patch that he did with his back to home plate last year that made everybody hold their breath and go, oh, please, Lord, don't let anything serious happen on the way that he went down as the main crux for why you don't want to see him in the outfield, and I'm not trying to speak for you, but we've had the discussion, as much as, as you know, I think a lot of regular Astros fans would love to say, hey, it doesn't matter where he plays, just put him out there. If he wants to play left field, let him play left field, because you want you know he's got a bat. Well, that bat doesn't translate to if you're hurt, you can't play. I, want, I mean, you and I made the friendly bet. I want 51 games out of him, but I don't. I understand not playing him there regularly. I think that's more because you predicted that. I don't think you want to see him play 51 games. Like, no, if we I, I didn't agree have with the, the bet, if we didn't yeah. have the bet, yeah. like if, if you, I think if you were managing the club, you would limit the exposure of Jordan Alvarez in left field. You're rooting for 51 because we made the bet. Yeah, you're there's predicting a reason why, what they're going to do. There's a reason why David Ortiz became the regular yeah. DH for the Boston Red Sox. His bat was way too valuable to lose. To where if you didn't have a spot to put him for to play defense, so what? Yeah. There's a difference between predicting what's going to happen right. and then saying what you would do. Because I, I predict that he's going to play left field far more than I want him to. Mm-hmm. So that there, that's the difference there. Um, Jim Bowden of The Athletic today, he had some predictions about what's going to happen in the Major League season. There was like two dozen or so. But he had two that pertain to the Houston Astros. First off, would you take this prediction? And then secondly, do you believe it's going to happen? The first one was he predicts the Astros to make the World Series but lose to the Atlanta Braves. If I could tell you right now, Blankers, that you could have the Astros in the World Series but they're going to lose to Atlanta, would you take option A or would you take option B of the complete unknown? You have no idea what's going to happen. I'm going to take the complete unknown because this team's already done so much that they've already etched their their names in history in terms of what this team is. And if you make another run to another World Series, regardless of whether you win it or not, it just continues to build the legacy. But I firmly believe this team is capable of winning another World Series. Yeah. And then you solidify even more and you put yourself a little bit higher up on the notches of great teams of all time. So I'll, I'll roll the dice and I'll, I'll keep riding with this team. I will too. For the Astros, for me, and, and if, if they fall short and they don't win the World Series, I'm not calling the season a bust. I'm not calling the season a failure. But you're championship hunting with the Houston Astros. So if I'm not winning the championship and I could lock that in, sorry, I'm not doing that. I think this team's capable of winning it all. So I'll take option B, the complete unknown. If it were the Texans and the Rockets, though, I might go the opposite way because I don't really think that the Texans or the Rockets are championship worthy just yet. But if you told me I could lock in an appearance in the championship, Super Bowl, or the NBA Finals, I think I would do it with those two teams. But I'm not doing it with the Astros who are hunting titles. And that last reason is exactly why I would also take the unknown because this is an opinion you'd give about the Astros in 2017 prior to the season start. You say this about teams that 
are just, you know, maybe one or two years away that are, you, you think they're good, they're future contenders, but you don't think they can actually win the title yet. But for a team that's been to, what, four World Series and won two of them, why would you ever just sign up for second place? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. It doesn't I'm make not, any sense. I think that we would all agree to that. Is there anybody else that's in the hive, 713-780-3776, where you could lock in a World Series appearance now, but you're losing to the Braves? No one's taking that option, right? They shouldn't. Uh, yeah, I, are I you going to so. wear the ALCS champion T-shirt 10 years from now? Would you do it if it was the Rockets or Texans? You could lock it in. Ooh, it's a good NBA question. Finals. Um, NBA, I, I would. I would, too. I, I'd lock it in. I think for the Texans, for sure. Because, I, you know, they're already way above the curve for where we thought they were going to be and how long the time it was going to take to get to where they were going to be really competitive. If you tell me at the end of next season they made the Super Bowl but they didn't win it, fantastic. Because you know what? The window's wide open, and there's still many, plenty of years left for, with the team you got. 6-5-3-9, they're not even going to make it to another World Series if they can't score runs. I'm talking about them losing to a minor league team yesterday. It's baseball. It's not – it does not matter. It's spring training. It's an extension of the spring training. It's not even regular season baseball yet. Uh, the second prediction, the Astros, despite their reluctance to give a player a 10-year contract, make an exception for Kyle Tucker, signing him to a deal that resembles the 10-year, $212 million contract the Braves inked Austin Riley to in 2022. Do you think that'll happen? I don't. I just don't. I don't think Tucker's camp's going to rel relent and come back and say – you know, we're going to take less and we're going to take a, a lesser deal. I think they want to test the market. I think they believe that he's been, not that he's been a, a secret, but I think that he has been underpublicized compared to a lot of guys with similar stats. And I think that he believes that there is a bigger payday out there, whether the Astros want to match it or not. I think they want to test the market and see how valuable he truly is. 21 million feels light. Now, he said one that, that looks like it, not exactly it. 21 feels light. Like, they signed Austin Riley whenever he was further away from free agency. Tucker's pretty darn close to free agency now. He's already tasted arbitration twice uh, this year, and next year's it for Kyle Tucker. I, I don't. I think on both sides, this one is not true. I, I'm with you. I don't think Kyle Tucker would settle for $21 million. I think he's going to be looking for closer to $30 million, um, and he's closer to free agency than Riley was, so it, it wouldn't have the similar parameters of that one. And then secondly, I don't think Jim Crane's going to budge off of what he believes. He doesn't believe in signing these huge long-term deals. What gives you any sort of belief that Jim Crane's going to budge off of that now? I haven't seen one thing – or Jim Crane has given me any indication of him signing a 10-year contract to anybody, unless he's like 23, 24 years old, and Tucker's closer to 30 than he is 20. But the, I mean, with the AAV being basically $21 million per year, is that, isn't that that enough of a savings to get no. you to overlook, overlook I the years? I don't think that Jim Crane cares about AAV. Jim Crane has been willing to go above AAV for a lot of players. Abreu, maybe. Montero, certainly. Hater. Hater. Hater probably yeah. uh it's yeah. it to, to me he doesn't want to get locked into these long-term deals and have a player in the second to third year of a seven eight nine year deal all of a sudden turn into josh hamilton or miguel cabrera mm -hmm. and then the rest of his contract is the worst contract in all of baseball i think that's what he fears more than anything else he doesn't fear spending money he, he likes, fears these long-term deals being bad deals he also likes the big money on the big splashy almost certified guaranteed guy and, and for the shorter term but the last thing that this this team has showed you over and over again, the one thing they're not going to do is get stuck on a poor return on investment deal like Pujols, like the, Josh Hamilton, like Miggy. Th they don't want to do those deals. And, and if they did, they would have done it with at least one or two of the guys that they watched walk out the door. So the, the, the problem with that thinking, though, and comparing it to guys like Miggy and Pujols and these bloated contracts that you regret in year eight – is with with the AAV. That's where the AAV does matter. Like if you get to the year, right? You know, I also, of this contract, I also AAV, don't believe the AAV though. Like I said, he's going to get closer to thirty than yeah, twenty million. Yeah, no, a year. I'm with you there. I don't think there's any chance Kyle Tucker would take this. So it's all kind of a moot point. But right. if he were willing to take it, by the time you get deep into the contract, being at the point where you would regret it, that annual value is so low that it almost wouldn't matter if his production dropped off. I mean, you're going off the 212, which I I think is silly. Like, that's a silly number. He's not going to make $21 million a yeah. year. Again, like, moot point, he's not He's not going to take this deal. Tucker's uh, probably going to get 20. What's What's Tucker's arbitration now this year? Like, it's probably 15-ish, maybe yeah, 12 to 15-ish. Right. We can find it. His final year of arbitration, he's probably going to get $20 million. So why would he take $9 million? He's getting $12 million this year, BMAC. 
So I bet you next year he gets somewhere between 15, 17 million. That feels right. So why would he sign a $21 million contract when he's going to get 15 to 17 million in the final year of arbitration? And then when he enters free agency, he's going to get at least 30 a year. Unless he craps the bed, he's going to make a massive payday when he when he gets yeah. out on the market. And I understand that you're using the number that Bowden gave, which Bowden gave a bad number. He's looking more at Riley, and I don't think he really understood when Riley signed his deal versus where Kyle Tucker's at right now. And one other note, like with all these big bloated contracts and then they turn out to be awful contracts, they're not bad players when they sign the contract. There's a reason they got the contract because they were good at the time they signed it. And then they start to stink by the time they turn into their mid-30s and then certainly into their late 30s. No, you're absolutely right. Look, I just think that I actually respect what the Astros have done. If you look back at the way they've handled their business in the majority of these situations, They've all worked out in their favor. When you look at the guys that they passed on or just elected not to re-sign, and no matter what they got and where they went, you just don't know. Like Cole right now, we don't know what his situation is. And obviously, he's pitched his tail off with the Yankees, but he wanted to be a Yankee. You knew he was going to leave. But to the other guys, the Correas, the Springers, the guys like that, it's a tough thing to have to walk away from someone that's meant so much to your franchise. But when you look at to the, to the point you always make, we're not paying these guys for what they've done. You're paying them for what they're going to do going forward when you give them this big contract. They haven't earned that. I mean, they haven't lived up to it. 713-780-ESP and HRMP listener line, 713-780-3776. It's time now for the Killer Bee Fight Club bracket. What were the results yesterday? Who's surviving and advancing? And who is on tap to fight today? Three more fights in the Killer Bee Fight Club tournament coming up next. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Uh, you probably, this is, look, this is basketball season. We know that. You got the tournament going on. Uh, you're down to the stretch drive in the pro ranks to try to get into the postseason. It's a fun time to be a basketball fan right now. Uh, Sweet 16, you got some teams trying to get into the postseason in the in the pro ranks, as we mentioned, and you're jonesing for a little bit of hoops. You, you want to go up to the driveway and shoot some, shoot, some, shoot some hoops. Well, the way to do that is with a goal from Pro Dunk Hoops because they make the highest quality basketball goals you will ever find. They're unlike anything else you'll see in the big box stores. Uh, Pro Dunk has tempered glass backboards, give you the true, real, authentic feel with the games that you watch on TV. Breakaway rim, which is perfect for for dunking, hanging, keeping you safe. Also, they're height adjustable, anywhere from 5 feet to 10 feet. Their new goal, Thor, by the way, you can raise and lower goals with the drill. That's all you got to do. A lightning adjust feature, they call it, and you can raise it all the way up to 10 feet, anywhere to 5 feet, and you can do it in a matter of seconds. Get Thor. Make it easy to lower and, and bring those goals up to 10 feet. Also, their accessories are next level. LED night kits, uh, LED light kits for night play. We, you might only have time to shoot at night. We'll get an LED light kit so you can play at night. Backstop nets, pull pad lettering, lots, lots more. And you can order everything, including professional installation online. That's correct. The goals at Pro Dunk Hoops will professionally install your goal at the perfect height, perfectly straight. You don't lift a finger. Let the pros at Pro Dunk do all of the work for you. Give them a call at 3... Uh, to 281-351-9822. It's 281-351-9822. And visit ProDunk.com. It's ProDunk.com.
I don't know how I feel about uh, Michael Carroll saying we have faces for radio. <laughs> I just love him at the end bailing with, you're so strong. Who's he talking about when he says that? Well, whoever's beating him up. Uh, he's Michael talking Buffer. about uh, Michael Buffer's lawyers. Oh, the lawyers, yeah. yeah. All right, so yesterday in the Killer Bees Fight Club bracket, we had three matchups. Here are the results in the Cooper region. Paul Gallant advances. He defeats Brandon Scott in a close one, 51% to 49%. Congratulations to ESPN's own Paul Gallant advancing to the next round. At the final matchup of the... um, this would have been in the Cooper region. It was Sean Bajani and Joel Blank. Winner of this gets Paul Gallant in round two. Sean Bajani wins it 54% to 46%. Bajani advances in an upset. Yes. It's the fourth time you've told us you're happy you lost. I have. Which I'll is, make it five, six, 10, 15. Which and is I think usually it's a, fair a sign that you didn't like who, who, it. Who'd you vote for, Joel? I, I, could care less. I voted for uh, Sean. Couldn't care less. <laughs> See, you don't care less about anything, and you don't care less about my opinion. But I'm telling you anyway. I didn't oh. want. I'm glad I'm out, and I really like. Now I'm curious because I think it's a good matchup, Sean and Paul. I could no, care man. less. I couldn't Whatever. care less. You did get into an argument with somebody on the Twitter. I see because I keep getting notifications of you and this guy going. Yeah, I got to get you forth. out of that. But yeah, I just you know some days yeah. are better than others, and if you try you just to click it on the top, you, you might not names. care about the voting result, but you definitely care about the comment. Yeah, so what? you're letting them have. No, I'm just pointing out that it's funny. You, you get into them from time to time too. I mean, it happens. Nah, not me. Just the entire city of Seattle. <laughs> not me. I wouldn't do something like that. I don't troll anybody. I don't do that. So, Bajani advances, and in the first matchup uh, in the Rich Lord region, it was Chris Gordy and Brian McDonald, and Brian McDonald of this show is the only one that advances. McDonald- Acknowledge me! <laughs> Brian got 56% of the vote. Uh, Chris Gordy got 44% of the vote. Let let the record show, though, Blankers. I think you and I had much tougher matchups than Chris Look, Gordy. Is the, Brian got a cupcake. Oh, for sure. We had some heavyweights. Uh, not so much me. We You had a heavyweight in Look, this tournament. Look, as the only accomplished winning fighter on this show, I think I'm the only one that should well be, really should be weighing in from here on Brian out. Brian got a 16 seed. Yeah, oh, I mean, hey, a win's a win. All you, all you, all you, all you can do is face news on the schedule. That's all you can do. 16 seed, Brian over here. Johnny and I were texting, and I was like, hey, man, I voted for you. I want you to win. I think you got a <laughs> shot against Paulie. Go get him. You text rival shows and rival stations? Uh-huh. What is this? Friendship. I'm sensing betrayal. Friendship. <laughs> I'm sensing betrayal. I sense friendship. Sensing you guys betrayal. read it how you want. I don't care. Do you text that entire show? Oh, I don't have a choice. <laughs> if I don't, I get put into punishment. I see Sean all the time. He does PA at baseball games, so I see. I see. Uh, oh, just PA at U of H baseball games. Yeah, he That's does. Awesome. He's like their se- probably their second PA guy. Whatever Bob Ford can do stuff. It's usually well, it depends on the sport. Wasn't JP too for basketball? JP does. This, JP is the primary basketball guy. He's really good. JP JP's does, yeah, great. JP's awesome. Yeah. JP's the basketball voice. Bob Ford's the football voice. Bajani's the baseball voice. But then and, they and perfect when, for Sean who loves baseball. We talked. Yeah, about when that. Bob Ford doesn't do football, it's Bajani okay. that'll do it. And then whenever JP doesn't do basketball, it's the Rockets guy. He'll come over and do it. I don't know who that is. Red Hand guy, right? Yeah, I see sometimes on Twitter he'll little post Jake? stuff. I would say more Big Jake. He looks a little like Jake? I don't know. Did you say Little Jake or Like Jake? Like Little Jake. Like he looks a little like I would Jake. say he looks like Big Jake. I think okay. he's taller. Okay. I think he's taller. Well, who yeah, is it's it? Not, yeah, it's a low bar. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Low bar. All right. Double whammy there. First, I know all about the short jokes. First fight in our triple header today comes from the Rich Lord region. This one features Tyler Milner. The producer of uh, the Baytown Baddie in the Ooh. show. And then Sean Salisbury, used to be an ESPN employee, Gal Media employee, now, of course, is at the flagship. All right, who's arguing for Hugh here, Brian? I don't know Tyler. I know the... Uh... I'll argue for Tyler. Then I know Tyler. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. Right, that ahead. was what I was going about to I say. just think from a Salisbury perspective, I know that he is, a, uh, he is an ex-football player. He has a bit of a temper. Um, he, can, uh, deliver, he can deliver some anger... <laughs> And uh, he can he can direct it where it needs to go, and I, I think that he's still got plenty of venom left in the tank to take out whatever whatever Tyler brings to the table. Tyler is a fight in Texas Aggie, mm. so you know he's going to go down. Uh, he's not going to go down without a fight, and he's going to fight you to the bitter end, even when it's annoying to do so. I'm not bitter at all. Um, <laughs> he's younger, so he has the age advantage. I think Sal- Salisbury, I could see former athlete, you know, used to go back in his day. He's a little past. He's a little over the hill. It's a little past his time. Milner's young. Milner's a fighter. Milner's gonna win over Sean Salisbury. All right, second fight in the Killer Bee 
Fight Club bracket. Also in the Rich Lord region, this one pits Ross Villarreal against our very own Lance Zerline. Who's Ooh. arguing for Hugh? Oh, oh, I never well, even got, on, Brian. I, yeah, yeah, you yeah, didn't do the, the, the card for the Judge the, last the one. first one. My I, bad. That's I, my bad. I'm, I'm going with Tyler Milner here. You mentioned yeah. the age. Really? Yeah, you mentioned Younger. the age gap. I just looked it up while Jeremy was talking. Sean retired in 1996. It's been almost 30 years. So what? He's a big dude. Athlete. No, big I, doesn't necessarily mean still winning. working out quarterback. I, look, I got. How old is Sean? He was born in '63. Yeah, and I got really 61. Is he older or younger than you? Shut up. <laughs> way older. I, don't, I hate when you do that stuff. That he's, I will tell you. I he's hate. way older than you. Yeah, you're in your fifties. Yeah, I didn't know that. You when are did such you, an a hole. When did are, you, are you done? When did you start working the Rockets when you were twelve? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they didn't have child labor laws back then. Yeah. <laughs> Good yeah, for yeah. you. I you mean, look like you're thirty-eight. I mean, you you tell me about my because ba- I played baseball in Wisconsin, but guess what? When I was playing uh, at, at the age of a little leaguer, when I was playing college baseball, it's pretty damn good. <laughs> you strike guys out. Facts, facts. But high school baseball in Houston is better than college baseball in Wisconsin. Yeah. So t- Tyler, I don't actually know exactly how old <laughs> Tyler is, but he can't be er- he can't be any older than his uh, early thirties, like you said. I think he's in his twenties. I think he is too. I'm just saying he can't be any older than his early thirties. Yeah. I believe he's also from Baytown as well, so maybe a little oh, Baytown really? baddie rub off there. Uh, so, yeah, I will give the much younger fighter by 30 years the advantage, and I'll go 10-9 Tyler Miller partly because I want to correct me if I'm wrong, though, but Tyler's round, pretty but... good about, like, just tweeting other people at other stations just conversationally about sports. I've never noticed that much. I think he's he's said a couple my way, but that's the only way I know him. But I'm, Oh, really? Yeah. I haven't noticed that. I haven't noticed. I, I like. Oh, so Tyler. he's replied to some of your tweets. Yeah, or we've just discussed uh, something that one of us had tweeted about in sports. So just, just fine. totally normal, calm discussion. Yeah. Okay. It definitely was. I mean, <laughs> look, right. if it was on the enemy station, believe me, I would have no holds barred. Uh, I know he is on the enemy station. Yeah. No, I said if it was venomous oh, and, okay. on the enemy station, then it would be. Yeah. All right. Next one, Ross and Lance Erline. Yeah, I will. I will give Jeremy uh, Lance and yes. uh, and uh, Joel. You will argue for Ross Villarreal. Okay. Lance knows all about trench play, and because <laughs> he knows about trench play, I trust Lance in a scrap. A lot of fights, you have to be within arm's length of the other person. Of course, you have to to land a blow. Lance knows about that space. There's no one that knows more about trench space than Lance Zerline. So that's a huge benefit for Lance. He's smarter. He's wiser uh, than Ross is as well. And I think that Lance has had more athletic accolade in his life than Ross has. I think Ross works in the trenches every single day and deals with people like that. So all he has to do is use his reach. Maybe he used uh, to. I think that <laughs> I think that he has the ability to move around uh, in order to create avoid the ground game and use his reach to be able to stick and move, jab Lance. Uh, Lance is fully capable of actually tripping on his own shoelace and tearing an ACL and, and, and also have other injuries that no one could have seen coming because that's just how injury prone he gets. I think Lance can just stick and move. I mean, um, Ross can stick and move, use his reach to his advantage, avoid the ground game, and I think he comes out on top in a decision. Do we think he has a bigger, re- a longer reach? Oh, than Lance? oh yeah, he's, he's tall. tall and lanky. I know he's, he's tall. tall, but Lance he's, isn't short. No, but he's tall and lanky. I think he's got, like I said, I think he's, I think he's got the arm. reach advantage on him. Hmm, and okay. look, I, I I worked with Ross a lot. He's actually the one that came up with the uh, my Twitter handle. He was the one that came up with it. Ah. And I've watched a lot of boxing with Ross really out. I know he knows the sweet science. And like uh, Joel pointed out, Lance can't walk through the Superdome parking lot without tripping down and falling. So he can't walk through I, a crosswalk in Indianapolis. I, I will take the man who is 20 years younger. I will take the man with who's a big fan of boxing and knows the sweet science. I will take Ross Villarreal 10-8 over Lance. Sirline. I don't think there's any chance Ross wins the vote. I don't, well, think, I don't think there's any chance he wins. Well, I, Lance doesn't have to call his followers either or send out a direct message. I think Lance has the following. I think Lance wins the vote for sure. All right, yeah, final so matchup fortunate. in the uh, – is it? Uh, you're rooting against rival stations here, I told Brian. you I'd meet Ross and i go way back. I'm going to go with Ross on this one. You're currently co-workers with the other guy. <laughs> now I'm co-workers <laughs> with you guys. Final – you're not co-workers with Lance? Eh, it's drawing straws here or, or splitting hairs here. Brian, do you like Lance? I do like Lance, yeah. Doesn't sound like you do very much. I have just said I'm going with – look, you, you asked me for an honest opinion. I'm, I'm going for Ross here. Final fight of the day. We'll wrap up the Rich Lord region. Glenn Davis in Soccer Matters goes toe-to-toe with Brian Lalima and his big muscles. Ooh. You got big muscles, Brian Lalima. Well, first so, of all, sounds Brian like you need to La, argue for Brian Lalima. Brian La, La and Joel will argue for Glenn Davis. Okay. Oh man, you're up for Glenn. You've known Glenn forever. You're I've known you Glenn all? for we're paisans. Paisans, paisans, uh, paisans. Because we met in Matt Thomas's wedding. That sounds like something I would order in an Italian restaurant. We stood up restaurant. at Matt Thomas's wedding. 
Uh, really? Look, Glenn is athletic. G- Glenn is a... But Glenn right now is on the shelf. Yeah, There's so, a really good argument for Glenn here. Yeah, I, I'm struggling I, I wanna, to find. I want to vote for you, Joel. You got to help me out here. I don't know how I can. I don't know how I can build a case for a guy that can't move. That you was don't calling say play it. by play and fell over you a chair. You don't bring it to discussion. You hide it from discovery. Joel Blank world's worst. My whole, <laughs> my whole case would be pred- I'd have to. I'm going to have to decline and give the case to somebody else Mike because Clyde, the bottom line is the man. Glenn yeah. fully healthy is athletic enough to stick and move as well. Glenn with only one wheel going against Brian Lalima. You would have been the world's worst defense attorney. <laughs> Man, what a case for Glenn Davis in I soccer love matters. I can't make a case for a guy that's in a knee brace that can't stand up for long, longer than a certain amount of time then falls down doing a broadcast we, when he, his athleticism is his we best. Switch it, Joel. You actually, no, let's, we're, we're redoing <laughs> you this. You argued against this is, Glenn. This was not fair for Glenn. Joel, no. you're now arguing for Brian Lalima, and, and, and Jeremy is arguing for Glenn Davis. We're redoing this. Glenn's but, gonna win this fight because he's such an athlete. He's still like how old's Glenn? I'm not sure, but he's in incredible shape. He looks like I don't know how old he is. I don't care because he looks like he's 32. He looks like he's at the pinnacle of his life. He's got that soccer body where you know he runs 12 miles a day. Bad knee or not, doesn't matter because he's gonna he's gonna grind through it because he's a gamer. What'd you mention the other day? He fell down but still finished the call from his from his behind. Glenn Davis is going to get the job done because he's got the endurance, he has great hair, and because he has a lot of wisdom. And it all matters to Glenn Davis. Everything matters to Glenn Davis. Okay. Brian Lalim is going to win because he's younger. Brian Lalim, Brian Lalim is going to win because he's stronger. Big muscles. Brian Lalim is going to win because he can seek the weakness out in an opponent and go right for sweep the leg. And once he sweeps the leg, he is going to create the ground game that I, I love Glenn Davis, but I don't think that he can punch his way out of. And I think that you can you can get Glenn to be vulnerable because Brian Lalima is, is working at 100% where Glenn is not. So I think that Brian uh, fully zones in on that bad leg, goes and attacks it, as well as then getting Glenn on the ground and, and putting him down and finishing the fight. If the first two rules of Fight Club are don't talk about Fight Club, the third one is vote for the man who buys you empanadas on the regular. And Glenn Davis buys me empanadas on the regular. So Glenn Davis, 10-9 over Brian Lima. And if we're talking about legs and sweeping things. Soccer player. Soccer player. Glenn's got the advantage even if on one leg. that's his kicking leg, and I'm not sure that it is, but that could be a huge problem. His weak g- foot's better than Lima's strong foot. In your opinion. Which of these two I guys has Jer- you Glenn Derek Jeter in his Rolodex? A uh, weak foot. Uh, What's Glenn, the question? Glenn Davis. Glenn Davis. Which of these two guys has the phone number of Derek Jeter? Glenn Davis. Glenn Davis. Yeah, he's, he's related to him. Well, yeah, that's why. I, I yeah. know, so I'm, I'm taking I'm Glenn Davis. Thanks. Really? I didn't figure that one out. <laughs> Everybody did. You stated the obvious. <laughs> with with Glenn, I'm not sure he has the phone number. He doesn't need it. He just, oh. He just, family members can the, deliver uh, the message. What was the thing that you call you and Glenn or what? Pison. Um, Pisons? Pison. Do you think he calls Jeter his Pison? No. That's only you and him? It's a joke. It's part of a running inside joke. But isn't Paisan like what Italian friends yes, are? Yes, it's Italian yeah. friendship. Yep. I think he's calling you a friend, and you think it's a joke. No, I don't. I I, don't, I never take our friendship. Do you friendship have Italian heritage? That, what? Do you have Italian heritage? A little. Okay. I think you think Glenn's a joke by putting him down I, with his one I, leg. I think you can make all your assumptions, and you can be completely wrong, too, so that's fine. I don't know. My assumptions are usually pretty good. All right, who's advancing in the Fight Club brackets? You can uh, vote at Jeremy Branham and take a uh, play a hand on who advances to round two of the Killer B Fight Club bracket. Coming up next, Alex Bregman had a couple of a uh, couple of dongs on Saturday. Could have hit a couple of home runs. Bob Nightingale predicts that he's going to win the MVP. Are we cashing this or trashing this? It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Hey, before we go to the break, a few words from my friend Doc Linville. Doc Linville, best in the business at the Neograft procedure. If you don't know what that is, but you've been struggling with hair loss and you don't think there's anything you can do to fix it, you can. But you got to check out Doc Linville and his staff and let them explain to you what the Neograft is and how it could benefit you. Because of the fact that it's getting your hair back. It's not the sprays and the creams and the foams that mask the problem. It's actually taking your own hair from a place where genetically you're never going to lose it, that being the sides and the back of your head, 
and putting it where you need it most. Maybe it's in front at your hairline or up on top and back. Regardless of where you need it, Doc Linville can fix the problem by taking the hair that's never going to go away and putting it where you need it most. It's a phenomenal uh, procedure, and he is the best at doing it. And as a listener to ESPN 97.5, you can meet with him and his staff for absolutely free. It normally costs 150 bucks. You listen to us, and if you go to him, you get the consultation for free. Ask questions. Get answers. Figure out if it might be right for you, too. Just go to 975hair.com, sign up for the appointment, and then go in and let the, the, the rest take care of itself. There's no signing on the dotted line, no commitments financially or otherwise. You just ask questions, get answers, and figure out if you might be interested in doing the procedure. He does a ton of different procedures. He does a ton of plastic surgery. He does spa, Botox, all kinds of spa treatments. But the, the fact is, if you are a guy that's losing your hair, he has a solution to your biggest problem. Check him out today. Tell him I sent you by. Go to 975hair.com. You're locked in with the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. He's Blank, I'm Branham. We are the Killer Bees. People are being nice to us on the text line. Blankers wants us to talk about it. I don't want to. I, I'm, just I, 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 I'm putting words in his mouth. He didn't say that. Uh, Wheat Straw Bajani is the only show I listen to on the other station. He's solid. I love Bajani. But you should be listening to Glenn Davis and Soccer Matters and Hall of Fame. And Ian Fitzsimmons? Yes. Ian Fitzsimmons, Ian that's his Amber. name? We understand that you bounce around. We're not naive. Uh, 4958, I still remember when Sean would join Fred and AJ on the Blitz before joining the flagship. It was great. Rest in peace, Falcon. Yes, rest in peace. I don't remember that. Salisbury. Oh, okay. Yeah, Salisbury. Was. Oh, Sean yeah, Salisbury. Not, not the John. See, he spelled it. He spelled it in a way that you don't spell Sean. Salisbury, right. and he spelled it in a way that you don't spell Sean Bajani. So I had no idea he was talking Bajani about. Is he went with option three, right? What's that? Yeah, Bajani is S H A U N. Yeah, and, and Salisbury is S E A N. Yeah, yeah. And this one was with a W. So I had no idea who he was talking about. I took a wild guess. I figured it'd be the one with five letters and not four. Uh, shame AJ is gone. He would decimate everyone in the Killer Bees Fight Just Club ask bracket. Him. Would do you think he would win? Do you think he'd win every fight? I know he. I know he's dabbled in mixed martial arts. I know oh, he can undefeated, tell you right? No, I thought he was undefeated. Mm. I thought he was like two and zero. Well, even if you're undefeated, you can cherry pick opponents. Sure, but I think he was two and zero. I, I wouldn't pick him to win the bracket. No, I would take Seth Payne over him. I would take Booker T over him. I would take AJ over Booker at this stage in life. Lalima. I think AJ would beat Lalima. I think I'd take the Baytown Batty over him. 
Really? No, I wouldn't yeah. go that far. Boy, that would be a hell of a fight based on how bad AJ used to pick on him. That would that would make s- fun of him and imitate his voice in the Arkansas milk. That would be that would be a hell of a that would be a knockdown drag. I think it would fill up the Toyota Center. <laughs> I don't know about the Toyota Center, but Smart Financial might have a pretty good showing for that one. I'm gonna go Don King and try to book this. Be the promoter and then steal them of their money. Only in America. Steal steal the money from them. Promise them all of these things and give them nothing. Make all these promises and give them very little. Uh, 1317, this is the first formidable show in the Blitz's old time slot. Keep it up. Great. Thank you. Thank you? Question mark? I don't know if, I guess it's a, yeah, compliment. it's a compliment for us. We're formidable. Not good, formidable. That's always been my dreams. Don't ever be good at something, great at something. Don't be like elite. Yeah, don't create a legacy. I mean, what I want to do, whatever I grow up, I want to be formidable. How, how good at are something. they saying we are if we're formidable? I think average at best. Yeah. I think like, formidable is more like insulting. Passive, like if you're a passable. formidable opponent <laughs> to passable. like a championship bout, yeah, you're going to lose, but give up a good fight. you got a good potential. <laughs> you bring a lot to the table. It's better than saying you're crappy, you suck, yeah, you're, you're going to lose. lose. On no one's cards. saying that, but it's, it's also being less than great, good, above average. What above average feels, feels, yeah. there? Above average feels right. Formidable is above average? Yeah, I would say so. That's the weakest compliment I've ever been given yeah, in my life. It's not a great you compliment. You are a formidable son of a gun. Thanks? Question mark? Uh, seven one three seven eight zero espn HRMP listener line. Alex Bregman hit two uh, two dongs the other day. It's baseball season, if I'm saying that. Uh, it was on Saturday. Bob Nightingale predicts he wins the AL MVP in this little uh, final season he has. Uh, what do you think of that from Nightingale? You think uh, Bregman's got a chance to be an MVP caliber player this I year? I don't. I just don't. I think his MVP caliber seasons are over, no matter how much he's betting on himself, no matter how much going into free agency and bulking up and putting 23 pounds on. He feels like the power is going to come back and he's going to be his quote-unquote old self. I think that it's unfortunate because I think that he has those kind of aspirations as opposed to the Astros that just want him to be the Alex Bregman we've gotten used to knowing from a, from a standpoint of just take his averages and as long as he's consistent. I don't think he's going to fight for an MVP title in the American League. I think there's too many other guys that are ahead of him that do more. Some of our on his own team that I, I just don't – I don't see him anymore at this point in his career having the kind of season formidable for an MVP-type season. I think it's wild that he hits two home runs in a spring training game and then somebody's calling him an MVP candidate. Like, in what world does that make any sense? I don't, I don't think it was a reaction to the two home runs. What's going on upstairs? There's oh. people jumping above us. Oh, really? I'm a little upstairs. worried. I hope it's not the wall. I hope it's upstairs. I'm a little worried that ceiling's about to crumble down on I us. I thought I Larry said Bird's coming out of the attic you. after that commercial. Have you seen that? <laughs> no. When they say that uh, Larry Bird's got uh, raccoons in his attic or something like that, and then the he falls through the ceiling. Uh, Larry does. Yeah. That's <laughs> pretty funny. No, there was just a bunch of ra- like a huge thud. Right above oh, our head. Right as I gave that opinion, you guys just like look shocked. It's happening again. Yeah, it's, it's, it, you <laughs> think it's thunder at first, and it's not. Totally oh, yeah, I'm not hearing it at all. Well, Is there a, to you guys? There's then. a floor above us, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, there's multiple. I've never floors. heard things happening above us during the show, though. That was just about everywhere else. <laughs> that was interesting that that's going on. Um, Bregman hasn't finished top 18 in MVP voting since 2019. I don't. I don't think that Alex Bregman is capable of putting an MVP season together. Um, people are like, oh, this is his contract year, and he's gonna, you know, have great seat. I, I, I saw him do a piece with Mark DeRosa on, on MLB Network, where it's like, oh, you're gonna get back to hitting 40 home runs. What makes you think that Alex Bregman's capable of hitting 40 home runs in 2024? He's done it once in his life, and it was in 2019, half a decade ago. You guys think he's going to hit 300? No. I don't either. No. If you don't he hit 300, to, then you should probably hit 40 bombs. If you don't think he's going to hit 40 bombs and hit 300, he ain't winning MVP. I mean, he's never hit 300 in a season. That's what I'm saying. He's so, hit 40 homers I don't know once. If he, I don't know if he'd have to hit 300 I don't to get think MVP. To hit I think 290, MVP. I think it's fair. Yeah, but I, I'm looking yeah. at Jordan, Judge looking at guys that can put both average and power together sure. to where this is the reason why, to Jeremy's point, he's not going to fit. I don't – if he has a great year, maybe he finishes top 10. I don't I don't think yeah. – I don't know that I'm going to even realistically well, think he's going to finish top 10. Theoretically, hypothetically, let's say he hits 290, 35 bombs, 110 RBI, plays gold, go, RBI. gold glove uh, caliber defense, and the Astros win the division. Is Probably the MVP not. conversation? Probably not. Right. I mean, that is, to me, the top maximum five. of maximum I think he'd be in the top him. five. Okay, top five. So then he can't, yeah, he can't win it because I don't see any way he gets past 290, 35, and 110. I, I, I don't see a season like that in for him. So if that's not good enough to win MVP, if, if you throw in team success and his defense, 
that he can't win MVP. I don't think it's really fair to go back to 2018 and 19 and I say agree. that Alex Bregman has that club in his bag. I don't think Alex Five Bregman has 2018, 2019 in his bag. Especially, not only is it that long ago, but the offensive environment as far as the way the balls were reacting off the bat is completely different. No Goldilocks balls anymore. Yeah, exactly. Those are gone. Um, King of Twitch was talking earlier about the contract. Like Boris is saying that he's willing to negotiate. In, I think it was Bregman that said he's willing to negotiate in season. Bregman sounds a little thirsty to me. Yeah. He sounds a little thirsty. Well, to me. I think that maybe he's even thinking his own, thinking of his own predicament situation that he asked for that he wants to play through and going. You know, maybe it's better to take what they give me as opposed to hitting the market and hitting the harsh reality that I'm going to find out I'm not worth nearly as much as I was hoping I was. Yeah, I think he saw that Matt Chapman I, uh, I was contract about to say, to say doesn't uh-oh. he? Does oh, doesn't he see Chapman and Bellinger and uh, Hell Snell? All these guys that are represented by Boris, and like, well, maybe I should. We talked about maybe Chapman I should be being really kind of like that barometer. Yeah, I mean, he's a better player than Chapman, but I don't think he's ten million dollars better than Chapman. He's probably five million dollars better than Chapman. At best. Uh, so when Bregman said, like, when Bregman said that, I was like, he's a little desperate to get an offer. He's a little desperate to get an offer that, and I'm sure he's looking for a player friendly offer. Uh, but he sounded a little thirsty when he said that. Um, I hope that Bregman has a huge year in his walk year, in his contract year. Do you can know? buy another house in Houston then? I don't care about that stuff. <laughs> I know. There's a lot of people that watch it. Like, a lot of people play on teams they and they Scott never Stale. buy a house. It's over. Yeah. People, so there's some people that live in hotels throughout the season. Greg Maddox, when he yeah. played in San Diego, yeah. lived in a hotel. Lived in a uh, hotel. Yeah. I'm trying to think of there's There's been more than a couple. Yeah. That, because they don't like the moving and moving all their stuff across country and whatever, they get a furnished apartment or they get a hotel room mm-hmm. and just... Do it for the season. You probably need like big money, like Maddox had to be living in a five star hotel for the entire regular season. But most of them rent, like, and they live somewhere else. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't see Bregman having the, like, and I hope that he has like a good year versus what we expect of him in this walk year. I think sometimes we can overstate that. I agree that players maybe have like ten percent production boost whenever they're going to be a free agent. But that's not every single time. That's not every single season that a player is going to be a free agent. Do they go nuts? It happens sometimes. doesn't happen every time. Uh, hopefully, it happens for Bregman. I don't think that Bregman's going to be an Astro next year, though. I don't I either. really don't. And if he is, it's going to probably take a mediocre season and then signing a or, Chapman-type deal in the offseason. Or season. we get to about midseason, and he decides to settle because – he just he wants he realizes he ain't going to get what he wants and if that's the case then he'd rather stay here. But he's not doing that with a big season. No. Like the only way that no, the only right. way that Alex Bregman is an Astro next year if he has like at best a pretty good year. Cuz if he has a great year, he's going to price himself out of the Astros range. Yeah. Uh, yep. so, so I, I don't early yeah. favorites for AL MVP this year, Soto, Judge are the usual suspects. Would you from, of course from the Yankees. Would you rather Bregman have a great year and leave? then a pretty good year, and then sign a four-year contract. I'll take the pretty good year and stay. I'll take a great year and leave. Really? Absolutely. You got to replace him. Give me great years. But I'm. But now I'm replacing a pretty good guy. Well, I'd be replacing no, you're, you're a great guy. You're replacing a great guy. That's fine. Give me a great year on your way out. I'll take a pretty good year, and, and, and he, as part of this offense, I think that's just fine, and I think that you keep him for four more, three, four, four more years with the rest of the team that you have. I think you got a, a really good chance to keep winning. Great year increases your odds of winning a title, though. True one, and I right. care about titles more than yeah, I care about. I get it. Players sticking around forever. Seven one three seven eight zero ESPN. What would you take? Uh, Bregman having a solid year, extending his contract four years after this one, or one great year and then see you later. Seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. Also, when we come back, cash it or trash it. What are we cashing or trashing? What are you cashing or trashing? Seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. Killer bees. ESPN ninety seven five and ESPN ninety two five. I'm cashing that Pro Dunk Hoops is the best basketball goal on the market. Best basketball goal on earth. They make the highest quality basketball goals. There's no doubt about that. Uh, better than anything you'll find in a big box store. No doubt about that. Tempered glass backboard, stainless steel hardware. It's rust-proof, a breakaway rim, height-adjustable. That breakaway rim comes in handy because it's height-adjustable. You can lower it down to wherever to throw down some jams, and that breakaway rim is going to keep you safe. You'll be thankful for that breakaway rim, and you'll be thankful for a goal from Pro Dunk Hoops. You can lower it down to 5 feet, raise it all the way up to 10 feet. With their new goal, Thor, you can raise and lower the goals with a drill. It's simple, it's easy, and it's fun to do. Lightning-adjust feature, they call it. You can bring it up all the way to 10 feet, lower it down to 5 feet in a matter of of seconds their accessories are top notch too. led light kits for night play backstop nets so you don't have to chase the basketball around pole pad lettering and lots lots more and you can order everything 
online, including professional installation. That's right. The pros at Pro Dunk will professionally install your goal at the perfect height, perfectly straight. You don't do a thing. Let the pros at Pro Dunk do all of the work for you. Give them a call now, 281-351-9822. That's 281-351-9822. Or you can just visit them online, ProDunk.com. Order now at ProDunk.com. Cash or trash? Branham has pretentious takes. Scotch, Scotch in the Twitch said that. What is a pretentious take? I'm garbage. I wouldn't know. I don't know. <laughs> I would. I would trash that. Ha <laughs> ha. Well the, done. Um, that's a, a, like. Can you have a pretentious take? It's like an opinion. It's it's a, it's having a take on something. I would. I don't know if you can have a pretentious take. I could, why, some, couldn't you someone, have a, why couldn't you have one? What would be pretentious take, though? Like, somebody can certainly be pretentious. There's no doubt right, about right, that. Right. And, like, what? you call me pretentious, cool. But to have a pretentious take, like, what does a pretentious take sound like? What is I What mean, is that? Then what was the word we just used for, uh, uh, not a perennial, what we were supposed to be if we were the first in this slot? Oh, formidable. Formidable. Yeah. I th- maybe he should have gone with. I don't know what a pretentious take looks like. Please show me a pretentious take. Seven one well, three seven eight zero three seven seven six. If you have a, if you have a pretentious seven, opinion, that would, could be then a pretentious take. But what's in a pretentious, a pretentious opinion? Like your so, like your opinions better than somebody else's? Well, yeah, they, they, that you know that you know more that your opinion's worth more. But isn't and everybody's opinion? That, that's your opinion. Yeah, but all the qualities that make someone pretentious could then be given and they take this pretentious mm-hmm. maybe so do you feel like you uh Not in those takes are attempting no, sure. to impress by affecting greater importance talent culture <laughs> than is actually possessed someone's on merriam webster what the definition of pretentious attempting to impress by affecting greater importance talent culture etc that huh. is actually possessed i don't think so i don't think i do that king of twitch says pretentious take this caviar sucks okay I don't think I've ever. Maybe my food takes can be a bit pretentious at times. Although I like dives more than anything else, how could a sports take be pretentious? Well, maybe like Astros are better than the Yankees, or okay, 
I'm starting it, to get it a little bit. I don't know why this is. That I'm starting hard. to yeah, cash your trash. Really but I'm just, boggling your mind. Would it be I was you trying like, to understand what it meant. Like you're a like you your response would be like you're smarter or above. Well, that, that, that's a, that's me. That's true. Oh, All right, what are you cashing or trashing, Blankers? Uh, the Rockets are going to make the play-in game and advance to the second play-in game before being eliminated. You don't even believe this. You don't know that. I, I think I do. I'm starting to worry. <laughs> I I, no, I I'm starting to look at this thinking Golden State might, ju- might just be going to St. Our Year. Maybe something went over my head. What is the second play-in game? If you're the eighth, yeah. if you're the final, the 10 spot, you, gotta win you have to win two oh, games okay. to get it oh, to a okay, series. Okay, okay. I thought you meant, okay. Never it's like well. a gauntlet match. Yeah, I'm with you now. Okay. It's like a gauntlet match because the 10-9 the ten nine play, and then you have the opportunity of playing the loser of the 7-8. Right. Um, so the 7-8 have two chances to get in. Mm-hmm. You win the 7-8 game or you Which win is your the second game. reward for finishing in the top eight for the regular season, which yeah. doesn't matter as much anymore to a lot of people. I'll play the odds here and trash it. Trash. Because this means that you have to jump Golden State or L.A. Mm-hmm. I don't think you're getting to the eight spot. I mean, you're five and a half back of that from Phoenix. So that means you would have to not only pass one of those teams, but then you would have to beat the team you don't pass on the road, and then you would have to go on the road again to beat either Dallas and Phoenix. The math isn't on the Rockets' side there. I'm kind of a numbers guy. I will uh, unfortunately trash it, but boy, it would be cool if they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to trash. trash it as well just because I don't like the Rockets' odds of winning multiple road games against quality teams. As, as great as they're playing right now, and I, I understand they have road wins, uh, a road win specifically heads up against the Kings not all that long ago, but doing doing it multiple times, we don't even know if they have Shingun. I, I'm going to go ahead and trash it. Blankers? Look, I think that they're capable of getting there now. I think that they're going to to, to get the, to the 10 seed. I just don't think that this is the year where – I think Jeremy brings the biggest point that, that I factored in of anything. They're not a good road team. They're just not a good road team. It, it, you know, they play way better at home. It's weird. Yes, they're stacking some wins right now, but I just feel like it's a different animal to go in and do what they need to do in the postseason and a one-and-done do-or-die for this team in their first year of trying to get in. I just don't see it. I told you you trashed it. I did. <laughs> I doesn't did mean know it, but it doesn't mean it didn't I did make know good what for good you conversation. Thought. No, I, thought, I never said that, though. Huh? I said, I know what you're going to say. I thought cash it or trash it. You're cashing like your hot take or your, your overreaction that you believe. Yeah, I think there's got to be an element of you believing it. Yeah, I, I thought you were supposed to, to believe be. it. I don't think you guys made those. There's not, there's not like a rule book. I just throw it out there for the, the sake of the discussion that maybe someone will buy in. No, it's something that you believe, and then you're getting other people to cash your trash. Well, I faked it. But then you gave it away. You faked it and you did it (laughs) wrong. Because at the end of the day, I still have to give you my honest opinion. Oh, man, I'm never hiring you as my defense attorney, Joel. (laughs) You've already established that, and I don't have a law degree, so you're safe. Best part about the – some places you don't need a law degree now, which is terrifying. Uh, Best part about the Texans getting the Hall of Fame game isn't the game. Who cares about that? But that the week belongs to the Texans. Everybody's going to spend all week talking about D'Amico, all week talking about C.J. Stroud, how the Texans are this up-and-coming team, and you know how they're going to cap it all off? Andre Johnson getting into the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame week. Who cares about the game? It's going to be Hall of Fame week for the Houston Texans, and that's the best part. The game doesn't even matter. I'm going to cast this because I like the fact that they get to start practicing before everybody else, and they can start getting reps in, and they can start working in the new guys and and understanding what – the concept is, especially with all the defensive guys they've added and whatever, the, and, and with Mixon in the offense and Slowick, I think that this is great because if nothing else, because obviously we know the game itself doesn't matter, you get more reps, you get more of the new guys acclimated, and, and then at the end of the week, you get, like you said, you get to celebrate the one of the two greatest Texans of all time. Yeah. Brian? Yeah, yeah I, w- I will go ahead and cash it as well. And it's more kind of just by default because the game means – Less than nothing, almost. So anything, anything that we're talking about besides the actual game on the field there in uh, Canton will be greater than the game itself. Okay. What are you cashing or trashing, Brian? Uh, I'm going to expand upon Joel's point a little bit. We're going double Rockets here in cash or trash. And I think that the – unfortunately, the Rockets' uh, run this season won't end with their birth into the regular portion of the playoff bracket. But I do think next year – are we, are we hearing hammering above you again? No, I hit my knee no, twice on the stupid table. this is the third time table. that Jeremy has <laughs> yeah, this is the I feel like a, tried to injure himself with this desk. So, first time I tripped on my headphone wire. Last two times I've literally hit the table. I've never done this in my life. I'm brand new. 
So, so you, you can catch any ball thrown at Man. you at a sporting event, you can't catch but you his can't ring. run. You can't keep from running into I'm gonna, the desk. I'm going to go home tonight with a bruise on my knee and a bruise on my hip. My wife's going to be, what happened to you, huh? This I was is, talking this on the radio club. all day. That fight club gets my rough God. sometimes, I was just about Lopez to say, beat me up. Your, this is why you lost your fight to John Lopez. The oh, desk is beating my you up. My bad, Brian. My clumsiness distracted you from your cash or trash. <laughs> That's on me. I was just curious if someone was about to fall through the ceiling again. Oh, no, I'll keep it short. I'll keep it short. Uh, I think the Rockets uh, next season are – we're not even have to talk about, you know, play-in scenarios because they're going to be in a spot where they they have a top-five seed and not even worrying about – I know I know the play-in is 7 through 10, but I think they're going to finish with a top-five seed next year and not even have to worry about the playing game when it gets time to this uh, this part of the calendar next year. I'm trashing this. I, I think that the West Trash. I, I think the West has five better teams than the Rockets going into next season. I think that the West has a, a ton of talent. It uh, needs to be six. I understand, but he said top five. I did say top five. My bad. Yeah. So I, I think that as much as I'd love to see it, I'd love to see the the, the quick uh, ahead of the curve development like we saw with the Texans so far. I, I think that they're going to be a true playoff a team contending for a playoff spot next year. I just don't see them finishing top five, so I'm going to trash it. Top six? No. Yeah, I was looking Not at yet. this last night, actually. It's funny that, that Brian said this. I, I think they're a top eight team next year mm-hmm. that can fight for a top six spot, uh, but probably still outside looking in than in that top five. So I'll trash this one trash. as well. Uh, another one from the text line uh, about the Rockets. The Rockets will pass both Golden State and the Los Angeles Lakers. Well, if LeBron keeps sitting out like he's doing again tonight, the mm-hmm. Lakers are going to give you a chance to catch them too. I just don't see them catching both. Um, I, I, it's the same way. I don't see them winning the two games, but I think can see them. I think Golden State at this point, they just understand. Clay is a, a shell of him, himself. They just don't have enough talent right now anymore. They're going to have to really shake it up in the offseason and get creative. And I think they're basically done with this season. They're losing too many games they should win. And now it's getting too late in the season to, to, to turn the tide. I think momentum's on the Rockets' side, but um, I, I just don't – I mean, I, I think that's, that, that's where they get in. Uh, I'll trash this, too. Lakers trash. are still three ahead of them. They're still three games ahead with 11 to play. I, I, don't I actually think forgot the question at the end. But yeah, yeah. I thought you did. Yeah. Because you started talking a lot about Golden State when they have to pass both of yeah, them. Yeah, I, I think they get to pass Golden State. I just don't think yeah, they're same. Like they're three games I think is going to be insurmountable. But I also thought the Rockets had no chance of getting in the play in two weeks ago. So don't listen to a jabroni like me, Brian. Trash. Yeah, I'm trashing as well. Three games is too much to make up, I think, with the time they have remaining. Uh, I think Batten. the big key is like this Oklahoma City game. Was it tomorrow night? Uh, I think that that's going to be the barometer for them catching Golden State, too. Because I think that if they can compete with an OKC team again and get, they're supposed to beat Portland. If you go in and beat OKC, one of the top four teams in the West, they do have a they do have a head to head left with the Warriors though at home. So that, I think that plays a factor in their favor, at least in the specifically to the Warriors. Indirectly, they took a shot. Jimmy Butler's not playing tonight for Miami, and you need Golden State to lose. That's, not from the Houston area. Uh, Baton Rouge says, uh, "Cash or trash?" C.J. Stroud experiences a sophomore slump. Oh, trash it. I don't see that at all. Uh, I, I just think that now another year more comfortable in the offense, and he wasn't. He came in completely, you know, raw this this last season, and look what he did. I think I just I don't see that happening. Trash for me. Trash, Brian. Trash. All right, last one. Ocho, cash or trash? The Texans, uh, not the Texans. The Texas Rangers offense will be equal or better than last season's. That means they have to have the best offense in the American League. Yeah, by a greater margin. Trash it. Or at least minimum. I'm going to cash Trash. this. Trash. Um, they return everybody offensively. Mm-hmm. Evan Carter is going to be there the entire year. He draws comparisons to Kyle Tucker, fantastic player. And then they have a phenom prospect that made the club by the name yeah. of Wyatt Langford, who's going to be fantastic. I-, I think that their offense will be better than last year's. But I think there's offenses in the in the American League that got better too. So I just I don't I just don't think they're going to have the best offense in uh, in the American League this year. Okay. Brian, Brian? I, I'm, I'm going to cash it. I, I I have a big belief in Evan Carter and Wyatt Langford, maybe because I have shares of them in fantasy. But uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm buying the improvement even from uh, as, as good as they were last year. Is Langford a guy that came right out of high school, or is he a college guy? College guy, college. I believe from Florida. He's drawing comparisons to Mike Trout. Oof, boy. Yeah, a little. A little You're scary. adding Kyle Tucker and Mike Trout for the future. You're doing pretty well. Yeah, hopefully they're not there this year. Seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. Who's going to lead the Astros in slugging percentage? Who's going to lead the Astros in hits? 
It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Hey, if you're a golfer out there, let me take a moment to tell you about the newest and greatest golf simulators I've found, and that's X-Golf and Katie. Because whether it's raining or it's nighttime, if you want to hit golf balls and you want to get better and work on your game, you can go to X-Golf and Katie. And the, the biggest bonus is it's like the best sports bar you can find combined with the best golf simulators. You can use it like a driving range. You can play 50 courses worldwide and, and, and have the look and the feel of actually playing that course. Uh, the, the shot simulators are fantastic because they're going to calculate the distance, the direction, the spin. You can even play your own golf ball if you want, but they've got specials going on every night. You can make tee times whenever you want. They have eight simulators to choose from. You can even make one in, uh, rent one that's in a private room and have a party uh, and, and have your favorite golf fan that's also having a special event have a party right inside one of the uh, simulator rooms and, and have a great time. Everybody plays golf, hits shots, but it takes a third of the time. A lot of the guys are playing 18 holes because you don't have to drive or walk to your golf ball and hit every shot. You just completely eliminate all that and just hit all the shots, play 18 holes in about an hour and a half or less, and have a great time. Check them out today. Go to xgolfkady.com. You're listening to The Killer Bees with Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios. Blanker just showed me a picture of D'Amico Ryans. It's the uh, NFL meetings, the owners meetings. Mm-hmm. I think those are fake arms on D'Amico Ryans that you just posted. I'm going to try to find a picture of it and tweet it out and ask the audience. I think they're fake arms. I think that they're fake arms with fake muscles. He, I mean, he does, he's got a lot more time on his hands in the offseason. You don't prob- even know the picture. He's probably spending a lot of time matter. in the weight room. What do you mean it doesn't matter? Well, uh, well, if it's okay, photoshopped, who, who, it 100% matters. Who sent out the photo? It was Payne, right? Seth Payne. I, I don't it think it looks Seth, fake. It looks like. Uh, Seth Payne's not photoshopping anything. It looks AI I don't generated. Think so either. But he could grab it from somebody else. The lights in your office just went out. Yeah, there yeah, are weird we, things happening at this radio yeah. station today. <laughs> People falling through the ceiling, lights Larry going out. coming through Sheesh. at any minute to drop into the show. He's not talking, Sheesh. but he's coming through. These, I mean, these arms that he has on him look like Brian Lalimas with one clear difference. You seven one three. Glenn Davis is going to take out? Yeah. seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven. That reminds me. I'm late on these votes. My bad. All right. Let's go out to the HRP listener line before we say who's going to lead the Astros in slugging and hits. Uh, Matt's been on the uh, on hold for a while. Wants to talk some Alex Bregman. Matt, you're in the hive with the bees. What's up? Hey, guys. Uh, definitely Bregman. Great season. Get red hot just before the postseason. 
let's get that ring, then that boy can go get his bag and go rot somewhere else like Correa and Springer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's where I'm at. I agree with Matt. I agree with Matt. Give me one great year on your way out. We'll tip our cap, go cash in, and then go fade away into baseball oblivion. Like George? Bolivian, if you're Mike Tyson. Like Springer? Yeah, Springer hasn't been that good. No, he hasn't. Springer's been, like, okay when he's healthy, but he hasn't lived up. And, and Springer didn't even get paid like Correa. Springer got, what, $25 million a year? He's not living up to $25 million a not year. Not at all. Correa's not living up to his contract. There nope. hasn't been one Astro that has left that has lived up to his contract with the exception of... Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole. And now he's hurt. And then he also still has the second half of his contract, and now he's hurt. Will he ever be the same? And he, like, we're, we could be talking in three years where Garrett Cole never lived up to the contract. It's very true. Big deals are we, not good business. We've already we've said it over and over again. If you're not getting the risk of not getting the ROI, especially on the back end of the deal, it's, it's not worth the risk uh, to take. You know, in, in the Astros thinking. I agree with them. All right. Who's going to lead the Astros in slugging percentage? Uh, Brian has, Brian's been cherry picking these stats, by the way, which is going out of order. Cherry picking? Yeah, you've been cherry picking some stats. Okay. We've been cherry picking. I've we, noticed what you're doing. I've <laughs> noticed what you're doing. We've had the conversation through text about. We have. Okay. So but how, uh, that how, was before it dawned on me okay. that you're selectively you've picking Sour the grapes. stats, Sour in which he has like first pick and third pick. I've noticed, like, okay. We'll flip I, I have I have first order. pick today. I'm gonna you choose a stat where there's one obvious selection. I have the third pick on the second Flip category, so I'm gonna choose one where I have three different options, and there's not really okay, a great so I, gap from one. I, I'm messing with you. I'm, if I'm, I'm totally cherry picking, joking. I know, but I'm, I'm totally gonna lean joking. into. I'm leaning into the bit. If you want to <laughs> flip what, or the order for slugging and hits, by all means, flip it. I don't uh, care. No, I'm right. I'm just totally joking. All right, you have the first pick in uh, slugging, Brian. Who's going to lead the Astros yeah, in slugging? Yeah, you, you see what I'm telling you? Yeah. He's cherry picking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> flip He's the cherry order picking. No, I'm don't kidding. be a coward. Flip him. <laughs> it's just lunch. It's fine. Yeah, it's just, I mean, we're, and it's Star Pizza. All you can eat. Uh, right, right. I, yeah, so I it's a win I, loss if you lose. Even if you lose, we're still eating Star Pizza. No doubt. Yeah. So you, you're picking your yeah, on there? Of course. All right, second pick. Uh, okay, this stinks. <laughs> This, are we using the Major League Baseball qualifiers where he has to have the 3.1 plate appearances over 162, yeah. so whatever the math uh, yeah, is on that? So he has to qualify it. here. Yeah. That's our only hope. That's our only hope. Yeah, um, yeah I'll go with um, the MVP. What do you mean the MVP? I mean, uh, Le- um, um, Bregman. Bob I think there, there's set, actually though. there's a, Kyle Kyle Tucker would seem like the obvious pick here. He was fourth in slugging percentage last year yeah. on the Astros. And Briggs is going to have an MVP season. He, so. he was in top four. Well, but Briggs is going to have an MVP season. I just want you to consider that. Chaz had a better slugging percentage than Bregman did. I want you to consider by Chaz forty eight points. That's kind of. I think Chaz would be a great Myers. pick for you. <laughs> um, I'll go break out Kyle Tucker. I'll I'll go to Kyle Tucker Ooh. here. I think there's two other names though that you could throw in the mix and, and be fine here. But I'll, I'll just go Kyle Tucker hoping for a huge breakout and that Jordan oh, – I don't want Jordan to get hurt, but – Huge breakout. I mean, it's Kyle Tucker. I yeah, mean, but he it, hasn't – It wouldn't be that big of a leap if he if he led the team in slugging percentage. No, I'm, but I'm talking like 40 bombs. Okay. Like, there's a – there, yeah, 40 would be, bombs would be a breakout. That would sure. be a significant jump from 30. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. But I, I don't mean, think he has to hit 40 bombs. I'm not talking Pena hitting percentage. 25 home runs. I'm just saying Tucker taking that next step. Maybe, maybe jump was the wrong word as opposed to step. But I'll go with Kyle Tucker. I man, uh, at this point, I, I I'm pretty much at behind the eight ball. No matter who I choose, um, yeah, the guy that finished second still there. So is the guy who finished third. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll go Altuve. Okay, yeah, yeah Altuve fine. finished second, correct? No, no, he finished. Uh, I he thought finished about third. Nope. Yiner. Yiner Diaz. Okay. Uh, that's that was my okay. other one. Okay. It was between Altuve and Yiner. I was going to take a flyer on Yiner. Yeah, four guys had a 500 plus slugging percentage. Tucker was fourth at 517. Altuve third 522. Yiner been... third five or second 538. And then you were on first 583. I think I was thinking about OPS. I think Altuve finished second in OPS. That might be one of worst. That's correct. About. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Altuve that's finished second about. in OPS. Um. All right. So we're good with that. I have hits. I have the first pick on the hits category. Mm, I will go. With a guy who finished seventh in hits last year. I'll go Jose Altuve. Yeah, Jose Altuve is a free brainer. swinger. <laughs> Stay healthy for me, Jose Altuve, and lead this team in base hits. I I'll love go that Jose you Altuve. throw out he finished seventh as it was some off the radar pick. Yeah. Okay. He finished seventh. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you try to spell Altuve? 
It was a it was a, a fat finger. Typo. Dip. It wasn't a miss. No, it wasn't even a typo. It was a fat finger. I mean, with, that's what I'm saying. You're typing. There's a difference between a fat finger and a typo. Well, it's hard to type while you're running your your knees into the desk every two minutes of the show. I had my I had my fingers positioned in the wrong uh, letter. I hate when that happens. Yeah. Happened Ooh, a lot to you. Um. Let's see, boy. Which, I, by the way, you misspelled a word yesterday that you texted oh to God. us. Oh God. Just just saying. Where's Jordan. I'll just take Jordan. Jordan and hits. Yep. Not a bad pick. He's your best offensive player. Yeah, yeah he's got to stay was, healthy, though. I was, he has to, and he draws a lot of walks, but he's hitting second, so more opportunities. I Jordan's was, a good pick. Yeah, I was hoping Jordan was going to make it. I, I, for some, I don't know. I, I had some hope that uh, that Joel would go off the board a little bit. I did that be, once. Uh, That's yeah, something I, I still Never regret. Again. So, Never yeah. again. Uh, gosh. Um, it may happen again, but I'm hoping not. Kyle Tucker. I don't know. I don't I don't think there's a great third pick here, uh, but I'll take Kyle Tucker. At least he's top four in the lineup, and i like him to hit for a better average than Alex Bregman, so give me Kyle Tucker. We only took one of the top three in hits last year for the Astros. Was Bregge there? Bregman tied for first in hits last year. See, but that's also because Altuve and Jordan missed significant yeah. time, right? That's- Bregman and Tucker tied for first. Guess who was third? Chess? Tucker? Nope. Nope. Tucker tied for first. Oh. Bregman. Um... Pena? Pena was third. Pena had 152 hits last year, was third on the team. Guess wow. who was fourth? Suck it, Aggie Matt. What? Guess who was fourth? Y'all haven't said it yet. Um, Fourth on the team in, in hits? Hit? We fourth? haven't said it yet? Y'all haven't said it oh, yet. Oh, 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 oh. Um, um, uh, utility guy. Uh, no, yes. Uh, it was the utility guy. Oh, really? Rajiv Dubon was Maurice fourth on the hits Dubon. last okay. year. He was fourth. Abreu was fifth. Jordan had the sixth most hits, and Altuve had the seventh most hits. And Chaz had the eighth most hits. Well, how is the Astros offense going to be better? Because your better players play. Yeah. Yonder Diaz was ninth in hits. So your seventh guy, your sixth guy was Jordan in hits. Your seventh was Altuve. Your eighth was Chaz and Niner was, uh, Yiner, Niner. Yiner was your ninth. Like, just stay on the field. Just stay on the field and this offense is going to be great. That's why that's, I, that's why I feel so strongly. Everybody's, everybody's losing their mind over everything that this offense hasn't done so far. Just get to regular season games. It's going to be fun. Now, the counterpoint's the batter's eye. Counterpoint's the batter's eye. Especially last night, right? People yeah, are losing their mind last over year. that. Last year. All right, Texans win projection is out. Nine and a half wins. The Texans going to win more than nine and a half games? 713-780-3776. Killer B's ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. Hey, a minute here for Vanderford, uh, the Vanderford family, because Vanderford is v- known for a lot of things. If you have plumbing issues, you need repiping done, you, you want to talk to them about possibly with, with it, getting something that with a humidifier, doing things differently so that the climate can really, you can take control of the climate in your house. Well, Vanderford is your go-to for all of that. And then, of course, Vanderford Air is known for their HVAC and their air conditioning. You never know when you're going to need an air conditioning company, but when you need them, you need them immediately, right away. And Vanderford takes the time to to be prideful and say, if you call us in the middle of the 100-degree heat, we'll be there within 24 hours. We're not going to make you wait days on end trying to work you into the schedule knowing that you are going to absolutely sweat and, and be in misery until they get there. Nope. They're going to try and get to you as fast as they can to handle the problem the best way that they know how. That's with a 100% money-back guarantee. It's the best value at the lowest cost to you, whether it's work that needs to be done with a repair or it's a complete replacement. When it comes to your HVAC as well as your plumbing and everything they do for you, they're going to guarantee it 100%. Book that. Mark that down. If you need them, you got them. And when you don't know you need them and then you do – That's the company you call. You go to them because they take care of you in a variety of ways. They'll be there within 24 hours, and they'll guarantee their work. 281-557-COOL. Maybe you should get a checkup now to make sure that your system is up to snuff before it actually gets to the 100-degree heat. And maybe you should be prepared in case anything happens by writing down the number. 281-557-COOL. 100% satisfaction guarantee or your money back. That's all you need to know. VanderfordAir.com.
Coming to you live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's the Killer Bees. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Here's Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. He's Blank. I am Branham. We are the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5, ESPN 92.5, 713-780-ESPN. Um, 8311, is Verlander living up to his contract? I think he, in a lot of ways, he already did because you got to remember that the Mets are paying a good portion of that contract, and he did what you needed him to do was help get you to another uh, long playoff run when the pitching was a bit of an issue. Yeah. Um, you're also not paying for the full contract. I, I don't think that he's living up to his $43 million. Um, but what you're, the Astros are paying him, he has. He did the second half of last year. Let's see what he does this year. But, yeah, the, the Astros, Astros are paying, paying him, him, what, like 16 25 70? I think. I thought he was even less than that. I thought it was like 16 17 per year. But regardless, the uh, yeah, he's living up to the Astros portion of it. Uh, three seven two six. All fat fingers are typos. Not all typos are fat fingers. I don't even remember what side I said. Um, I don't remember. Seven one three seven eight zero ESPN eight zero nine four says couldn't agree more with that take. I don't know which take you're talking about. Uh, context matters. Zero three one five sophomore season for both Ryan's and Stroud will be tough, even for a nine and eight season. Um, and then eight eight three five said Mike Clevenger to the Astros per source. I don't know if that's true or not. Anyways, Texans. Did, he was critical of the Astros in the past. Isn't that the guy that like beat up his girlfriend? I he shouldn't have said Indian, that. He was, he was an Indian, and then he was a. Let's strike that. In. Let's Padre, that in then a White Sox. Yeah, don't let Joel defend you when you get down. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You get sued oh, okay. for defamation. Right, he look. got he got accused of some stuff. Clevenger did. Um, he also was not pretty critical though. of the Astros too. Yeah, he got. Uh, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. I think he said something when he was with the Padres. Uh, anyways, the Texans, uh, the piled over-unders are out. Where was the over-under out, Brian? Uh, I looked for it today on my I got a couple of them. Yeah, I couldn't it was, find it. It was uh, from Bet Online, Jimmy, yeah, I, the Jimmy Shapiro email. I couldn't find it on the – I don't use I know draft. I know DraftKings is also I got it from Josh lines. Barton and from Jimmy Shapiro, yeah. You ever lay bets with them? No. That's what I'm saying. What's sports book? Um, yeah, Bet Online. There you go. Thank you, Brian. Do the Texans win more than nine and a half games? You playing the over or you playing the under? Play the under. I just I I look at it right now until I see the schedule and how it all lays out and see what they're doing done doing uh, at the start of training camp when they're done making all their draft and personnel moves. I just feel like not that they're going to call it a slump. I just feel like their schedule is a lot tougher. Um, and, and I think that realistically, I'm I'm looking at nine wins for this football team. If they do some things and and the draft goes their way, maybe I'll change that. But for right now, I'm leaning uh, by a half game. I'm leaning under. Okay, you're going under, Brian. Oh, over well, under? I, I, I'm no, I'm going comfortably over. I'm going comfortably, comfortably over. over. Yeah, look, they won ten games last year, and I think we could all agree that the they had one of the best off seasons in the entire NFL. Like I, I know Joel's uh, hang up is with the schedule, but uh, we've had this conversation. Well, and there's still holes to fill. Sure, but I mean, again, this kind of goes back to the monopoly bill or the uh, the Madden building that we're talking about with the Astros roster. Every every team has, I mean, has holes. I mean, the Kansas City Chiefs have tons of holes, but it's carried by you know an all time great quarterback. Uh, What's comfortably over? Thirteen? Eleven? That's not okay. <laughs> what? I, was... <laughs> I thought he was thirteen too. I'm yeah. with you on this. What's I? <laughs> he said eleven. That's barely over. It's a game that's and a, a half. It's a game and a half. You're, okay, you're not stressing it going into the final week. How's that not comfortable? <laughs> you're rolling at 13 and four, going no, no one's catching comfortable. me. Comfortable is a 20 point win. BMAC went with a two possession game. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> fine, I'll, I'll go 12. I'll go on record as 12. That's fine. That's uh, fine. I think that the Texans win double digit games. I'm on the overside too. Well, I don't think it'll be. Year, I don't though. think it'll be comfortable. I don't think it'll be comfortable because of the schedule. But I think the Texans are to that point where they're beyond that. I think the Texans have a roster where they're beyond the schedule being tough. In a weird way, I kind of relate it to the Cougars a bit. Well, the Cougars are going to the Big 12. They're going to play a tougher schedule. Cool. Cougars are better. They're going to win games. Uh, I don't think that the Texans are the best team in the AFC, but I think the Texans are a double-digit win team no matter the schedule that you give them because of Stroud. I think every team in the NFL has holes. Sure, the Texans do. I still scratch my head on the Malik Collins trade. I don't get that. Right. Uh, I, I hope that they have well, I- other ideas on at the one tech, uh, but I still think that the Texans win – 10 games I would I will be playing the over at nine and a half and it wouldn't surprise me if this gets bet up to 10 wins by the start of the season I think after the draft it could change but I, I think to me the reason why I want to see the schedule too it's not just why, the, why you, is that like you should know what you're adding though but yeah, if they're, you, they're only gonna be adding second round picks I don't think they're gonna move the line yeah they shouldn't move round but what if you get a, a corner adjuster. and a wide receiver you get but a corner a but pick, you could though. you could plan for that now and I think butch makers plan for that now 
We'll see. Uh, I don't know. They, they still could make a trade, too. You know, you well, know. Trade, yeah, a trade can move the line, but I don't think a second-round draft pick can move the line. They can still add players. They can make a trade. They, the draft matters to me. But the big thing for me with the schedule, too, is not just the opponent, but when they play them. Like, it's one thing if you lead the season off with Kansas City or, you know, or Baltimore. But, but you it, don't know that yet, so how can you use that as part of your argument? No, I'm saying, but it's going to hurt them if it's later in the season. I think that they got a better chance to win if it's earlier in the season. Right, but we don't know when they're stand. playing. Right, that's why for me right now, I said I'm staying under the nine and a half for now. But if they catch some of the cold weather city teams and the better teams earlier in the season, I might bump that up a game. Then it's over. Uh, 713-780-ESPN. HRP listener line. Are you betting the under or the over nine and a half? You have to make the call today. So there's some unknown. There's unknown on who you're playing. You know who you're playing, but you don't know when you're playing mm-hmm. them. Um, you don't know the rest of the offseason, not only for your team, but also your opponents, because that could influence, of course, uh, the spread in some of those games and then the overall win total for your team. 8244, 10 wins for the Texans, tougher schedule, and better team should equal out for 10 wins in another division title. The, the, other key here is you do play six games in division. I think the Colts are pretty good. I think the Jags are pretty good. And I think the Titans are going to be pretty bad. If you, at minimum, you should go four and two in your division. I agree. You should go four and two in you the You split AFC with South. Jacksonville. However and, you get there. I don't care how you get there. I think you split with Jacksonville and Indy and you sweep the Titans. And I think that's the worst you should do. Like, if you mm-hmm. go five and one, it wouldn't shock me if they go five and one in the division. I, I though I think that's fair too because I think that in, in Indy the quarterback situation's up in the air. Is Richardson going to be healthy to start the season? And even if he is, is he going to stay healthy? And what you know? And is he going to continue on the path that he was in for the first game and a half, two games or whatever it was? Or are they going to be in trouble? So I think that they realistically could go five and one, four and two in the division. Yeah, yeah. five five and one is definitely realistic. I mean, obviously they well, want you. It is because they're going to win comfortably. <laughs> they they are going to win comfortably. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you, you, they they won at the Colts last year. Uh, you don't know if uh, if if the, the Col- who, which quarterback the Colts are going to have. Yeah, if Anthony Rich could even stay healthy. And Trevor Lawrence, let's be honest, he took a step back last year. I I know they added a weapon with Gabe Davis, but I mean, I think we've all called that Gabe Davis signing, you know, one of the worst free agent signings of the year. I don't think it's going to be this ultimate difference maker for the production uh you know losing calvin really and replacing it with gabe davis so yeah i, I think the texans i uh, have a really good chance to go five and one in this division eight one four three bet the over you start with a win over the bears they play the bears division this year they do they play yeah, the, the bears, bears. Yeah, they do they, they go to the green bay they do all right we were talking about they going. Go to green bay. what's the other division what's the afc division uh i'd have to look it up i don't know at the top of my head oh it's the east it's the east because they play the dolphins the patriots the bills Okay. Saves the East. So then the other thing you can start doing is looking at the projected win totals for those teams. You could. They should be baked in, but you could. Um, they play at Green Bay, home for Indy. I'll go win against Green Bay. That team's terrible, terrible organization. You're right. Uh, well, home win for the against team. the Colts, home win for the home win against the Jags, home win against the Titans, Bills, eh, Miami, eh. I'll give them one win out of that. Chicago, yes. Lions at home, eh. At Indy. At Jacksonville, I'll give them one win between those two games. At Minnesota, I don't know about that one. Depends on what they add. I'm going to go yes. I'll go eight. At New England, I'll go nine. At the Jets, eh. I don't think at so. Tennessee, that's ten. At Dallas, eh. All I have to do is, I mean, I'm already at ten. At Dallas, Baltimore, at Kansas City. You get one there, you have yeah, 11 you wins. you get one upset, you're 11. Yeah, I'm going over well, here. that's comfortable. I think the Texans are to the point now where they, you know, the, whatever schedule you throw <laughs> at them, I think they should win 10 games. Same thing with that's Kansas That's your favorite City. sweatshirt and sweatpants. And Baltimore. <laughs> like, no matter the schedule that the good teams play, you're expecting them to get double-digit wins. I think the Texans are in that conversation. Whatever the schedule, you get 10 wins. I mean, what are, what are what are the other teams around the NFL saying about looking at the – like, if they're having the exact same conversation about their, their win total projection, they see the Texans on the schedule, they're – Considering that that's at best fifty fifty for them, but you know could be good, you know a loss unless it's the we're talking about the Chiefs or Ravens. So I, I think we have to start looking at the Texans in that light. Eight six nine three continuity with Bobby coming back has me on the over key from L A. Texans go five and one in the division. They will compete for the best record in the AFC. That's a bit lofty. It's a bit lofty, but maybe in that conversation. Uh, eight nine four six. You really questioning the Yankees contract with Garrett Cole? He just won the Cy Young. Been an All Star every year. There's no structural damage to his arm. Silly take. I right said now, that Cole's lived up to it to this point. Right. What does the second half of his contract look like? And now he has an elbow injury. Was it eight years, ten years? What did he say? Ten years? Uh, ten, and, ten and three hundred, or what did he? I think there's some opt outs and stuff like that. I think it was eight. 
Let's pull it up real quick. If it's 10, you better damn well hope. 324 for nine. Now, there's some, like, opt-outs and stuff, but the overall deal is 324 for nine, which is $36 million annually. Do I think he's lived up to it to this point? Yeah, sure. I do. I think he's lived up to it to this point. And, yes, his elbow doesn't have structural damage. You know who we were saying that about? I was just going to say the same thing. Two years ago? Lance McCullers. Lance McCullers. Like, you start – your elbow starts to howl at you as a pitcher – it's more inevitable Whew. than you're going to like rehab and be fine. Facts. Same thing with shoulders. Uh seven one three seven eight zero ESPN HRMP listener what about lines. Head? What? What about head and toes? Mm, Fromber's head. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes could be a problem. Great the joke. Seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. Oh, you shut your mouth. Just be comfortable. I'm gonna go with a two point eight. Two point eight on that one. Uh, Cal McNair is the official owner. Of the Texans. Who are the best professional sports owners in Houston? You got Tillman Fertitta. You got now Cal McNair. Karen McNair is not too happy about today's news. And then, of course, you have Jim Crane. Name or rank those three. 713-780-3776. Killer Bees, ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. You know what's the best, General Ben? I love telling you about General Ben because... I love Gentle Ben. Just try Gentle Ben. That's all you got to do. I was talking about this with somebody somebody else. Gentle Ben's an easy sell because all you have to do is have them try it. Just have them try Gentle Ben, and they will never go back. Gentle Ben is the best, whether it's the vodka, best in the state, the gin, best in the market, or the bourbon, which is the double platinum winner at the prestigious Ascot Awards. Gentle Ben uses their innovative, revolutionary technology that eliminates all impurities for the cleanest, smoothest spirits you'll ever taste. One of those impurities it eliminates are the heavy alcohols. You can find heavy alcohols in that stuff that you use to clean up cuts. That's not in Gentle Ben. Gentle Ben's smooth. It's clean. It eliminates the burn. Don't labor through your drink. Don't work through it. Enjoy it. Savor it. Kick back. Relax with some Gentle Ben. Head to the Gentle Ben tasting room. Stop at your favorite liquor store. Pick up a bottle today. Ask for it the next time you're at the bar or restaurant. Or if you're going to an Astros game soon this week, you can stop by Ben's Bar on the way to your seats. Picks up, pick up some Gentle Ben at Minute Maid. They have Ben's Bar at the Toyota Center as well. Pick up some Gentle Ben as you go watch some Rockets or go to a concert there at the Toyota Center. If you don't want to do any of that, we'll just order straight from the website. I don't, I don't blame you. GentleBen.com. Head to GentleBen.com right now. Learn about their incredible story, but also order straight from the website, the vodka, the gin, the bourbon. Add it to your cart. Have it delivered straight to your door. GentleBen.com. GentleBen, you'll love what's not not in it.
Now back to the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. He's Blank. I'm Branham. We are the Bees on ESPN 97.5, ESPN 92.5. A couple of grades on your joke. What you gave it a three? Can't wait for this. What I give it? Yeah, I gave it a three. You gave it a two point eight. Two point eight. Uh, six eight five six gave a thumbs down emoji on the joke blankers. Okay. Um, I thought there was another one in here. Maybe I overlooked it. Okay, those are the three. Somebody's okay. All right. Who are the top three professional sports owners in baseball? Seven one three seven eight zero ESPN HRP listener line seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. Someone said Ted Seagal, owner of the Dynamo and the Dash. I don't even know if I said his name right. Did you just it's, say it's in Siegel. baseball, or you just said in the city? I said the three professional sports. No, you said three, the, who are the best three owners in baseball, but I knew what you meant, yeah. so I let it go. That's why I My just bad. wanted to clarify. The three professional sports Siegel. owners in baseball. Ted Siegel? Yeah, what did Siegel. I say? Siegel? Siegel. I think he's Siegel. I think he Steven said Siegel. Siegel. Steve's brother? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so are, we, are we putting the owner of the Dynamo and the Dash in the same conversation? I wouldn't. I don't I'm even think Glenn it. would because he's been unhappy. Well, maybe I shouldn't say Easy. this too loudly. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't say this too loudly. But, look, they haven't won a title since, what, 2007? Back-to-back. Robertson I know, Stadium. I know. 2007 was a long time ago, though. But, but they, they been, have won two Lamar Hunt U.S. Open. They've teams. been more competitive. They, no, they yeah, they made the Western Conference Finals last year. They were they were Kansas they City were right. a uh, better team than any of us expected. But I don't think they've had the amount of success to where we could put them anywhere but fourth on this list. I don't I don't like including the non three majors. And yeah, a lot of people that, are going to be mad at too. me. What are the saber? Who's the SabreCats owner? No where does idea. he belong? Great question. List? I don't know. Mr. Sabre you can win a lot of trivia qu- contests if no, if you want everybody to get that answer wrong. Was well, it Hilton from Hilton Furniture? Was no it? No chance. He owned the Comets for a time. Yes, believe me, I he know. did right before they, went, they before they ceased to exist. Oh, I saw I saw a Hilton commercial me. the other day. I thought yeah, I was like, I didn't know there. this guy was still around. Yeah, I thought I mean, he was gone. I honestly didn't know they still had stores. You didn't open. see that he was piggybacking off Mac. No, I saw one random commercial with Hilton the other day. I was like, huh, I haven't seen Hilton in a decade. Pi- when you say piggyback off of Mac, is he dressing up as wrestlers? No, 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 no. He's going out <laughs> with the same commercial that if you buy the the, the mattresses, if a certain home oh, team wins, okay, okay. you get your purchase back. That's gimmick of Mac's a sponsor like so that. he can say the names of the teams. He just capitalized on the promotion. I don't like the gimmick infringement. I don't like it. What are the old school commercials you remember from like l- regional sports networks? Like now we have the Shin, and you see the commercials on uh, the Shin. Who, who you can go was back the, to like HSE and there all were, that there stuff. There was a there, who was the Joel. You'll probably remember this because it was aired all the time during Rockets games. But there was a there was a uh, a, a company that would take like two dollar cans. Oh, it's two dollar well, bills. Two dollar bills. Yeah, they're yeah, paying, yeah, paying two dollar bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who was that? It was the recycle guy. Yeah, it is. I. What was the company? That was the name? one that I was thinking. That of. That was the one you're thinking of. Too? Yeah, we'll pay you because the Kembe does the. You get yes, paid in yeah. two dollars <laughs> bills. Yeah, I haven't seen that guy in a while. <laughs> no, I, no, no. I use those commercials used to be in every break. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't see many more. I at don't all. see that guy. I don't think. I don't know if the company still exists. I think it does. That's the, really the only one that Same I remember. Same thing with Hilton Furniture though, because he always had the chain. He had the, always had the chainsaw. Ah. Yeah, yeah. You would see it in every break, and then I don't know if the comets sunk him, but uh, you don't see the commercials oh, anymore. It, the comets did not help him at all for a, quite a while. Yeah, I don't remember. Those are the two that stick out to me. Hilton Furniture and the Recycle Guy. We'll pay you in $2 bills. Yeah. That really the only I really two. Wish, I really want to know the name of that recycling company. Now. I'm looking it I'm up. I'm sure crazy. Will. C&D Scrap Metal. That's yes, it. C&D that's Scrap it. Metal. Yep. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Dennis two. is, uh, I think we're, he's still on Facebook. I, 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 C&D's got to still be in existence. They probably, probably. just stopped spending money because you know if you need to dump some scrap, you know where to go. Yeah, it feels like a recession-proof business. I don't know. I mean, there's always aluminum cans. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to stop you know how having many people aluminum these cans. days are trying to sell copper. And- Everybody remembers C and D. We're getting flooded with C and D. Those commercials, like it was every break. It's open. C and D scrap break. metal. Someone said uh, <laughs> um, the hand model, Doctor Brown. Oh yeah, well the he, Brown got, he got in trouble though, right? Daddy's baby girl. <laughs> Didn't yeah. he get in trouble with the law? Well, his wife is now Mrs. Bagwell. Yeah. 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 I, I, and, and, yeah, and he's doing. Uh, a this, lot of time. Yeah. What no, did he get in trouble dead. for? I thought he was dead. I think he's dead. Yeah, he had, he they got, had to auction off all his stuff because he had debt. He, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he he didn't. I don't want to dive too much into this, actually. <laughs> well, there's you a lot to a it. defamation suit? Yeah, he's he was uh, controvert. This was this was a story in 2013. Yep. Controversial ex-hand surgeon Michael Brown dead at 56. Yep. Daddy's little girl. Oh, I remember that one. Oh. Daddy's yep. little girl now calls Jeff Bagwell her stepfather. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> Jeff Bagwell's daddy little girl's stepfather. 
And that's GM Jeff. Be- you think he called? She calls him GM Jeff Bagwell? I uh, know. Uh, I wonder if that. Re- I don't know. I don't want to. Stepdaddy speak on that GM Jeff Bagwell. Maybe they, maybe they have a fantastic relationship. I don't remember. I, I don't. Well, I don't know. It's not a matter of remembering. It's a matter of not knowing. Well, everybody remembers everyone's internet back then. Oh yeah, everyone's yeah, internet yeah. was massive. Yeah, that's true. And then they sold the company. Who was that? Uh, who was that guy that Bill Warrell would call to email? It was like a manual. It was a point guard. Oh, uh, I was thinking about this Randy Livingston. No, 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 no. No, it wasn't. It was a manual. Um, I was thinking about. I Bill Warrell used to call a guy an email. Yes, he because his email. name was a manual. It was, like, it was like the early days of the internet. I know exactly who you're talking about, and I thought about this the other night and, and thought of his name. Now I can't. It's a short name. He wore number fifteen. Was it not Randy Livingston? No, I'll get it. I think he played on the same teams as Randy Livingston, if not. It, it, yes, because it was the uh, the pinstripes. Think Young, Rodney D. Young. That's a good one. You remember yeah, the yeah, Think yeah. Young, Rodney D. No, Young? I remember D. those, yeah, for sure. Uh, Thunderbolt Transmission. Oh, I do, yeah. That's where they threw the transmission yeah. through the window? It was the old, it was the, no, the, wait, we're thinking, uh, it was the old discount tire commercials where the old lady would, would throw the, the tire back through the window. That was a discount tire one? But they, Thunderbolt might have done it, too. I don't, me- I don't remember. But, yeah, I just remember the jingle, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out the to- yeehaw back in your motors and transmission. Yeah, yeah, that was the yeah, jingle. That was the jingle. <laughs> those are like those are the OG great oh, commercials. Yeah. Uh, shout out to those guys Emmanuel who Davis. wore Emmanuel Davis. Yep, Emmanuel Emmanuel Davis. War number fifteen. I'm pretty sure that he and Randy Livingston were like battling it out for like backup point guard or starting point guard duties. Maybe after. I, I just remember we practiced at Westside, and definitely email was on those teams. He called him email. And Oscar was- Torres. Oscar Torres was a guy that they Torres. got from Brazil that for one year made the squad. He's supposed to be a sharpshooter. Yeah. But those three guys were definitely on those teams. He called it Manuel Davis, you said? Yeah. He called him email because he was so quick, like email. <laughs> like, that was, <laughs> That's it was a very it was, dated joke. At the time, at it was time, great. At the-, at the time, it was a great nickname. And now uh, it's Oh, I got another good one for you. Who's that? Bill Hurd Chevrolet. Bill Hurd they Chevrolet. They spent all their marketing oh, yeah. dollars with the Rockets and Calvin Murphy for years. Really? Oh my this God! This guy says uh, Lawrence Marshall Chevrolet and Hempstead. Lawrence Marshall, yes. that's Ray Children. Yes. Ray Children's, right? Yep. yep. You ever yes. dri- have you driven by that lately? <laughs> no. It's just like a big. I feel like they might have put something there, but it's just like a big open area. I W Marks Jewelry. Oh, for sure. They're uh, closing. Education uh, connection. I don't remember education connection. I, I remember this. I remember the company name, but I can't tell you what the commercial was. Someone said ponchos. Oh sure, yeah. I Casa Olay because Raised you had um, what's his name, the pitcher. That did all the Jose commercials. Lima. Lima. Yeah, it's Lima, Lima time did the Casa Jose Ole, but they Ole. ran them on all the oh, yeah. Houston uh, broadcasts. Casa Ole. Hey. Or, what was every it? Fresh every today. Day. Fresh every day? No, fresh every today. Day. Fresh today. Casa fresh Ole. Uh, yeah, fresh today. My great uncle uh, helped build his house. Uh, we clobber big city price. <laughs> was the, that was Ray Children's. Yeah, yeah. That was the one. That was Ray Children's. Poncho was always raised the flag. Yeah. Uh, Cal Worthing in, in his hot dog spot? No clue. I, I don't remember that one. Landmark Chevrolet. <laughs> I thought the one of the, the greatest commercials during that time, though, when I first got here, was the 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 Geno audio <laughs> with the anvil on the ledge for the Rockets when he's the the, the fan is sitting on the edge uh, of the ledge ready to jump off yeah. with an anvil tied to his ankle. That was that was a that was a local that was like the that station lo- commercial. That though. was a local station, but that's yeah. what I'm just saying. But that I was that one. Oh, we're forgetting. One. I don't remember that one. We're forgetting one, and I can't remember the name of the furniture company. But we're low prices live. That's that guy. He's still doing it, Sam. Oh, but from, that was uh, on, that was on a ton of. Bro- it was exclusive like, furniture. Exclusive, exclusive furniture. furniture Sam. That was it. Yeah, but he, he does was, that. I did a uh, ton a, of ton of spots. I did a reading event at an elementary school with him. Really? Yeah. Did he do the voice? I think he's Lance's no, buddy. He didn't. Uh, he didn't buy right furniture where the bean bags are. That's right. Oh yeah. That's the right. Bean the, bags. Yeah. I re- yeah. I remember the bean bags. I forgot totally what it was called though. What was the one where the two where the bean old bags guys, are? Was it Suit Mart or whatever? The two old guys always fist bump. Yeah, they would always have like the young teenagers in, and they would do the spot where they're all fist bumping. Yeah, really they always have the other. fist bump at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah, guy, yeah. Um, the the guy's brother, used to be a member at the golf course I worked at, and would always give us like a hundred bucks for Christmas bonuses. Yeah. Like we we're just you know, um, bag room guys. Nice. Yeah, it was a it was a great high school job. All right, let's pick the uh, what's your top three owners in Houston sports? Cal McNair is officially an owner today. Unanimous vote. Cool Cat Cow. We all thought that Cool Cat Cow is not popular, yet he's unanimously getting voted into the NFL to be an owner, taking over for Janice McNair. Poor Kerry McNair. Never got to hear his side of the story. I- I've invited him on the will? show. He's always welcome here. 713-780-ESPN. There's a chance. I, uh, I contacted uh, Kerry McNair on his website. I said, hey, if you ever want to tell your side of the story, Killer Bees are here for you. 
You so he got back on. to you just like Spotrack, he, huh? He, he and Spotrack ghosted <laughs> me. Yeah, like an ugly guy in high school. Uh, anyways, Cal McNair, the official owner of the Texans. So your big three professional sports owners, Cal McNair, Tillman Fertitta, Jim Crane. Your, what's your one, two, three? Jim Crane's number one. He's one. He consistently puts his money where his mouth is. He's not afraid to take the big splash. Um, so I'll put him number one, and I know we're up against it a little bit, so I'll go quick. No, no, we don't believe in that But, anymore. I mean, <laughs> number two for me is Cal because Cal has turned it around. Cal finally got – he got the right coach. They got the right quarterback. He got his wife involved, which was a massive 180 to help this thing go in the right direction. The memos started getting there, whoever was giving them direction on how to act as owners. Mm-hmm. And I think third for Tillman is you're trying to groom your kid as a general manager. I don't know that you're you you know you, you're, you're on the way up. It's not a bad thing here to be third because of who the other two teams are. But I think there's still some work to be done, but I'd put him third. I, I don't know how you don't pick Jim Crane first. He's won a title most recently. People still criticize Crane, though. Oh, this guy doesn't spend any money. Jim Crane's the top owner in Houston professional sports. I'm actually going to go Tillman, too. Over Cal. Cal was not a good owner right away. Cal needed a lot of help. Cal, now we're luck, like Cal willingly went out and got that help, which I tip my cap to. But I have Tillman two and then uh, Cal third. Brian. Yeah, I guess I'm caring more about recent results. And because of that, I'm going to side with Joel on this one. I think obviously Jim Crane's the runaway one. There's no argument against it. But I would go with Cool Cat Cal as number two. Just what we've seen over the last year and a half since Hannah got involved, since they seem to become more, you know, cognizant of their brand, since they got rid of Jack Easterby, that version of Cal over the last year and a half to me is better than what we've seen from Tillman Fertitta, who seemed like for a long time was kind of checked out on the organization. Nine three three nine Crane. He delivered Cal. Two, let Hannah get involved. Three, less. What's his name that owned the Rockets? He delivered. Alexander. Uh, Tillman ain't done squad. That's not very nice. Uh, 4661 says Crane, Tillman, Cal. That's Texan Matt. Have to look at the complete resume. Uh, this texture said Cougar basketball claims Tillman. If that's the case, then I got a new number one. He's not the owner, though. It says owner. His name's on the arena. You can't th- you can't throw that in. The- I know you're joking, but you arena. can't throw that in the resume. If he if he gets to, if he gets Cougar basketball, he's my new number one. If we're not allowing to have Cougar basketball, he's a close second to Jim Crane. Fair enough. Fair enough. Three three one two says Johnny Dang's grill commercials with Houston rappers. I don't remember that. I one. don't either. I don't remember yeah, that one I don't at all. Those. Wheat Straw says Fannie Mae. I don't really remember that one. I don't either. The Dump. I remember the Dump. The dump oh, yeah, the Dump. The Dump. The Dump. I remember the Dump. Yeah, I, have, yeah. I still like. I have dreams with that little jingles in my head. 7428 says J.G. Wentworth had a jamming tune whenever it came on. J.G. Wentworth. Yeah, yeah, Wentworth. Call 877 Cash Now. Yeah, that was like a bit. Yeah. I got a that... cash settlement, but I want cash now. That was actually a, 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 a shockingly K. big part of That's this what it was, current season of Curb Your yeah. Enthusiasm. I, uh, yeah, it's a huge part of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I have a, <laughs> I have a cash settlement, but I want. Oh, I have a structured settlement, but I need cash now. I, I have a structured settlement, but I need cash now. Call JG Wentworth. I don't know the number. Of that. How in the world? Eight seven seven cash now. How in the world is that on Curb? I, I get well. Obviously, it's, he's, a, it's obviously not a, that's Larry not a Davis heard him. JD Wentworth is national, right? Uh, well, yeah, I know that. So that's but then how, it how gets is on it curb. like on the? But it's funny that it was like a regional thing. I guess they were just buying out I'm local sure that, commercials yeah, sure all over the all country. country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, I'm sure they bought commercials all over the country. But I mean, you you've seen the re- le- latest season of Curb, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so you know. Oh, I, well, you know, you know the plot. I didn't watch Sunday's episode. Though. Okay, well, the the plot point with that is over anyway, so it yeah. doesn't really matter. So you know how it came in. <laughs> I have a they structured were, They were trying to make this woman as annoying as possible, and one of the ways they did was have her sing the song nonstop. Oh, my curb's so funny. I uh, have a structured set. All right, let's go out to the HRP listener line. Lamont has a, Lamont has a commercial. What do you have, Lamont? Hey, man, I got a, a few commercials. Uh, uh, I don't know if Jeremy is too young to remember this. Probably. But uh, I have a couple of them. I have a couple of them. <laughs> I have Big Sur Waterbed. I vaguely don't remember, remember big surf water bed. Bed? I don't remember the company, but I remember the water bed. I remember beds. there was a big water bed one, but I didn't remember the company. I don't know that. Uh, 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 it, it, it was Superior and Big Surf Water Bed. Superior Water Beds? Uh, uh, and, 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 and a dude used to uh, 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 drop from the ceiling and, and fall inside of a water bed uh, <laughs> back in the day. So the full flotation water bed, it was very cheesy, but I got another one. And uh, I'm sorry if you guys have a said this, but I, I think when you say Houston, it has to be this one, uh, Thunderbolt. Oh, yeah. What Thunderbolt. Yeah, we said Thunderbolt transmission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that commercial go, Lamont? I kind of rem- I remember the name, but I don't really remember the commercial. Do you remember? 
Uh, we put the yeah, that, yeah okay. back in your soda bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, covered, Hi, man. yeah <laughs> we put the yeah. They had like a famous address too, or like an address that was very easy to remember. I don't remember those two. The yeah, because I remember they would say the address. You don't and it was remember like, the that just rolls off the tongue. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. See if you can find man, that, that on the jingle, That jingle is classic. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. We've um, I think we're done. With like the cool local commercials that are memorable, I don't feel like we ever get those again. I like those Mac, are the glory days Mac, of local commercials. Even Mac is changing yeah. so much that he's getting away from saves you money. Like those, that was the glory day of local commercials. No doubt. Like you got these silly, goofy <laughs> commercials that will never leave our heads. Uh, I don't think that ever happens again. Seven one three seven eight zero ESPN. Any commercials that you remember? Uh, who are your top three owners? Cal McNair, Tillman Fertitta. Uh, and then now Jim Crane as well. Those are your top three. 713-780-ESPN, HRP listener line, uh, 713-780-3776. Killer Bees, ESPN 97.5, ESPN 92.5. It's time, basketball bettors. It's March Mania. Branham here to tell you all about BetUS.com. I endorse one sportsbook and casino, and that's BetUS.com. They've been driving to the basket for over 30 years. This year, BetUS has an epic three-pointer, a 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. That's right. The industry's craziest 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits, plus 10% gambler's insurance, and there's even more. BetUS accepts crypto and is offering a massive 200% crypto sign-up bonus. Gambler's insurance and crypto. You don't see that everywhere. March Mania basketball can get even more exciting with their live in-game betting. It's also a blast to check out their casino after the game. Blackjack, craps, roulette, where you could get a 250% casino bonus. Get started by visiting BetUS.com or just call them. 1-800-MY-BETUS to learn all about their bonuses and special offers. BetUS, where the game begins.
If your transmission's got you down or your motor falls apart, that's the time to come to Thunderbolt. You don't need a brand new car. We still believe in value, and we pass it on to you. At Thunderbolt, we fix it right, and we'll guarantee it too. Our Thunderbolt rebuilt motors and transmissions are dynamically tested and guaranteed. With our efficient installation, free towing is included. We put the yeah! in your motor and transmission. Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's the Killer Bees with Joel Blank and Jeremy Branham. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Put the yeehaw on your motor and transmission. They, they still believe in value. You don't get they these commercials these days. They pass it on to you, man. They pass on the value to you. You don't remember that? I don't remember that one. They played every single commercial. And I, I remember know, the discount tire acting. when they throw the tire through the front window. See, no, you, I mean, you worked tire. there, so you didn't yeah. have the same perspective as we did, you know? Because we well, were watching. But I was watching. producing all the TV back then, so I was seeing a lot I of them. I can't believe you don't remember that. I don't. Yeah, that, there's that the, Thunderbolt spot played <laughs> we so the, much. Oh, back in your so motor much. and transmission. What was the one? Uh, O'Reilly was one, but that was more of a national one. That yeah, wasn't necessarily. Yeah, oh, they still do that sing, jingle today. My oh, kids oh, sing. Oh, oh, oh yeah, they still do that the today. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was one that sticks out. That's and a John, really good jingle. Call John, get more. Yeah, call still, John, get more. Yeah. They still do that What's one the today number? too. Yeah, no clue. Something to something. To 30, 30, you know what? Thirty-nine, you... seventy-nine, seventy-nine. <laughs> It was three two zero zero. That was the best. As soon as it came on, I started singing along. Everyone, well, everyone but Joel knows the. They put the yeehaw. Yeah, I just don't remember that one. <laughs> so I don't know why. Good. That's probably the. That's probably the goat. That is of all I of these so. commercials. That's so. probably the best. The, where the beanbags are is like up there, but that's got to be the best one. I think Mattress Max. Some of his early ones. Yeah. <coughs> we say, really yeah, we'll there. save you money. Certainly, Those are yeah. good. Certainly his catchphrase when, was up there. Yeah. That and the fact that he would dress up at, with a mattress as like a mascot. Like yeah. He, <laughs> yeah. Inside a mattress. Those were the, those were the days, like, this man. This started more thirsty back then with a the showroom business. that were circus tents. The production's gotten too good, though. That's true. The, like the production's too good for you ever to be able to go back and do commercials like that. You I mean, can't do you it. Can, well, you can put filters on it. Uh, yeah, but, but you, you don't just, want to be like that. Just the creativity. Yeah, not the local creativity. And all that. Yeah. Oso says Cars for Kids has oh, a jingle. Oh, yeah. That's I don't remember how jingle. it goes, but I do remember that. Seven, seven Cars for Kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. It's, it's horrible. I used to have to. I, I spoke for them for a while. Did you? Yeah. Here. Live reads? Yep. Mm. Burger King has a good jingle now. The. Um, Oh, the Whopper Whopper. Yeah, that's probably yeah, the yeah. best one going now. And it's gotten a little bit older I thought now. I you meant the, the uh, club techno tune that those two dudes do in that commercial now for the uh, March Madness. I don't know that one. I, I don't know they that. They take a club song and, they, and they're like <laughs> I don't know. bobbing and doing their heads. And then the music stops so they get them to shut up. And they start doing it like manually, trying to do it themselves. It's annoying as hell. 50-30, back, 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 order slips. Yeah, that was another. <laughs> yeah, Mattress Mac had very That's good catchphrases. I think Mac is right up there. Yeah, very good catchphrases for sure. Well, I don't remember the Toys R Us ones that people were telling us. You remember any Toys R Us? Yeah, yeah. That was I don't want Giraffe. to grow up. Buy my Toys R Us. Oh, kid. yeah. Yep. I got I a million different toys that, that yeah. I can play with. Yeah. Cal Worthington dealership commercials. Go see Cal. He also had a tiger. I don't remember those. I don't remember those either. No. A lot of people said that one. Huh. Uh, Y'all forgot Jim Adler? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Jim yeah, Adler's a good one. How yeah. could I forget the Texas Hammer? I thought you were going to go. You can no. you can do the Texas Hammer? Come on. And I hammered him $18.43. <laughs> and now he's got his son involved. <laughs> I see his I see his billboards all throughout the state. Everywhere. His in son's the state. doing the commercials now. Is he really? Yeah, I haven't seen the commercials. He looks just like him. I saw the billboards like in Dallas. I've seen him in Waco. Oh, yeah, they're all, they're all, all over. over the and place. And in his main office, he's got like the fourth floor, and yeah. the entire fourth floor has a I've, banner I've, across the I've fourth floor. I've driven by it. It says I can't the remember Texas wh- Hammer. I can't remember which freeway it's on, but I've driven by it. I 10, I think. Is it I 10 on the way to I Beaumont? I've I see it when it. we go to Beaumont. Not Baytown? No. 8515 Scruff McGruff. Scruff. That sounds familiar. I don't know that one. Not placing it. I don't know if that was a local one, though. I think that yeah, might have been national. I I, just Scruff McGruff was the crime dog. He was the crime dog. Scruff oh, McGruff, oh, the crime for, dog. Oh, for, oh, for dare, to, the dare to Stay Off Drugs? I yeah, believe yes, he was okay. the dare dog. Yeah, yeah, take McGruff a bite was the crime, crime yeah, dog yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. wasn't local, but yeah, that was another one. Whenever I had we to were do, that, yeah, we did Berman that ended up calling Fred McGriff the crime dog because of it. You think Berman came up with that name? It was part, one of, oh, you're yeah, talking about he, on Sports Center. I one. thought you were talking about Mark Berman for a second. No, no, no. <laughs> I was no, no, like, no, no. what would Mark Berman Chris do Berman that? doing the Sports Center stuff? <laughs> I thought you said. I, I promise you, oh. I thought you meant Mark Berman, and I thought I gave you the this guy is so stupid look, <laughs> and then it just occurred. Oh, I'm the stupid one. You meant Chris Berman. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, we have a. There's a couple of McGriffs that I know. We call the. Uh, we call one the crime. Actually, we call one guy the crime dog, but we also call him Pooh. 
It depends on the day. He's either crime dog or he's who? A uh, carpet giant. I do remember the carpet yeah, giant. Yeah, I remember the. I remember the, big the guy. I do remember the carpet giant. Yeah, ones. carpet giant. Who was the one that had the wacky inflatable uh, arm tube men waving out front? Was that? I think it's carpet giant. Was it carpet giant? Yeah. Okay. The Sonic Guys commercials. Those weren't really locals, more national. I hated those commercials. I thought they were so annoying. And I those are a little more, more recent that, than what we're talking about. I hated those commercials. Hated them. I cringe when I watch those Sonic commercials. Never bothered I don't me. remember. I what? hate stupid like comedy. And like him just being an idiot drove me nuts. Oh, I, to, I know what you're talking about to now. The kind of reddish blonde haired guy with the comb over that looks well, like was, Ken was, Jennings from Jeopardy yeah, and his of. buddy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yep. two guys I, in the car. I hate idiot comedy. Like like the dude who stole my car type of stuff. I I hate that. <laughs> I've I, seen that movie I many hate, times. I hate that kind of stuff. <laughs> Cannot stand it. Napoleon Dynamite? You do not like it. I don't either. Do not I, like it. I did not like that movie at all, and I know people love it. Yeah, I, I'm in the my look. I understand. I'm in the minority there. I like more clever humor. People said the dump, Rodney DeYoung, the HEB commercials that always use like the 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 player, <laughs> the local players. The um, yeah, that's more new school. But a little yes, bit, yeah. the Astro World commercial with the weird old man oh, suit dancing yes. around was great. Da, that was da, really da, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to have season passes to Astro World every year. That's it. I had I had season. Past Astro World. Un- Uncle Barney would hook us up with season passes to Astro World. We would go to Astro World all the time. Grease Lightning, best ride at Astro World. Ooh. I, no, you have I, objection I with Grease Lightning? Yeah, yeah. The Taz roller coaster, I thought was. The, and now that was. That, that was, was kind of a newer one. It was. It was later in the run of Astro World. It was always closed. A lot of them had issues, but yeah, I wouldn't. The Mr. Freeze roller coaster. What was the big wooden roller really coaster? Good. That was the Texas Cyclone. Yeah. Yeah, the big wooden one was Texas Cyclone. Yeah. That always looks safe. No, well, <laughs> if you rode ra- in the back, it would you would feel like you got punched by yeah. George Foreman. It rattled you around. Quite Remember, a bit. you had to be like four inches taller uh-huh. to ride in the back two rows. Oh yeah, like two or four inches taller to ride in the back two rows. Why? Why is that the case? I don't or know. I don't because know. they're it's going to kill you if you're less than that. <laughs> Grease lightning was the best though. Let's take one call on this. Seven one three. One more call. Seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. Ryan, you're in the hive of the bees. What's up, Ryan? Hey, what's going on, fellas? Hey, y'all forgot one, and it's a guy at the station. What about Lance Mitchell? Eyelids for kids. Do y'all remember that one? I remember the. I remember eyelids for kids, but I don't remember the. I don't, I don't remember the jingle. The, I don't remember the commercial, the jingle, or the people in it. Eyelids I just remember the name. I thought you said eyelids. Yeah, that's what I thought he said too. I don't think it was eyelids. Maybe I it was know. eyelids. Yeah, and honestly, it's 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 escaping me. Yeah, That's I don't a know. Creepy. Yeah, it does sound a little keep a little creepy. Uh, <laughs> don't blink, you'll miss it. <laughs> Astro World rides. People are texting in some of their favorite Astro. There's, I mean, there's only so many. Astro World rides. All right, seven one three seven eight zero. Star furniture used to have a lot. Star furniture was Rach, solid. Wasn't Ray Childers also a star furniture guy? I don't remember. I don't know. I thought he was. I don't remember. Seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. Terrence said Lance made that up. He might have made that up. Maybe we just got got there. Maybe. Who knows? Moving conveyor. Please watch your step. Coogblaze just said that. Which ride was that? That was Grease Lightning, wasn't no, it? No. Moving no? Conveyor, Please Watch Your Step was Ultra Twister. Oh, I forgot about Ultra moving Twister. Moving Conveyor, Please Watch yeah, Your Step. Yeah, I forgot step. about Ultra Twister. It was Twister. Ultra Twister. Ultra Twister on the front was really cool. Jimmy, you go straight down. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was unique to the other rides, too, because of the way they strapped you in. You're in yep. the tube that would do the 360 spins. What was the uh, the drop? I can't remember the second drop ride. The first one was the, um, the Sky Screamer. Uh, yeah, Skyscreamer is the one I remember. Was there was there a second one? I think it was. There was a second one where it was taller. Because there was, it was the, the, a straight drop. Well, yeah, well, there's the Skyscreamer because it was right next to Viper. Skyscreamer the, the, was the, the green, one that the like, green roller coaster. You were like in a cage. Yeah, the Viper was the green one. Skyscreamer was like the old black one where like it would take you up in a cage. Yeah, it would push it was, you over the top. I and remember it was drop right it. next to Viper. But the the top one. I remember there being a second there drop. There was a second. I can't remember. I think it was like Texas drop, or I don't can't remember. Yeah, we can look it up later. Uh, 713-780 ESPN. Yeah, I think we got got with that eyelids thing. Oh, well, it happens. All right, what's your car wreck of the day? 713-780-3776. Car wreck of the day, 713-780 ESPN, HRMP listener line. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5, ESPN 92.5. Guys, we know we got another weekend of the madness, and the best place to go if you want to put some money down and try and cash in is MyBookie.ag. MyBookie.ag, best in the business, taking care of their customers right now. They're doing it again, especially on new signups. If you are new to mybookie.ag and you open up an account, you put in 200, you get 300 in your account instantly. More money in your account, more games you can bet on, and of course, more chances you can win. You get a friend to sign up, you get a bonus for that too. They take care of you, and they take care of you so much that whether you're betting on all the different games that are going on, or maybe there's a time when you want to do some gambling, 
like casino games, and there's no games going on, or even when there are, live dealers standing by with casino games as well. Blackjack Poker, they got it all right there with live dealers standing by for you. To get your bonus, though, you got to remember our promo code, BET975. Use it whenever they ask for it. Look for a place where you can put it, and when you put the promo code in, that's when you really do cash in because they take care of their customers. Been in business for over a decade. Money's not going anywhere, and they love to take care of you. They've even got their website now at mybookie.ag where you can actually get the games live while you're betting on them with the in-game betting as well as lots of different experts giving you advice and so much more. Check them out today, mybookie.ag. Remember our promo code BET975. Remember what I always tell you, bet anything, anytime, anywhere with the only place I tell you to do it. It's mybookie.ag, promo code BET975. Thank you to the uh, Twitchers and the Texters. Dungeon Drop was that uh, droppy, right? I was thinking of the big tower that dropped you. That was after the Sky Screamer. Um, we also got got by the caller. Eyelids for kids was a joke that the bench made a thing. I guess it was a bench bit. I never I never heard that one, which surprises me. That I never heard of that. Was it, it was the be- was the, just John and Lance back then? I don't I guess maybe it was back old school John and I think, Lance. I think it was I think it was quite a ways back. I tip my cap to the caller who got us. You get you get us. I I have to give you my credit. And so Credit to you. That was well done, sir. I I applaud you. Uh, Batman gave you a concussion. All right, let's get to our car wreck of the day. What are we nominating for the car wreck of the day, Blankers? There's a couple. Uh, I, we we kind of passed over this one, but then when more details came out on this Jonte Porter thing with the NBA, it's one thing to try and do what you were trying to do to cash in. Jonte Porter was taking the unders on himself with prop belt bet, bets on himself and then faking injuries, allegedly, the way the story lies now. Now, it turns out that he's Michael Porter Jr.'s brother, and he's brother's got more money than most and if you needed a loan or were short on cash your brother probably got you instead of screwing up with the potential to have whatever career you could possibly have in the league because he was a two-way player but he was actually when he played pretty good having some had put up some decent numbers and now he's basically done with the nba i would fix an nba game before i asked my brother for money (laughs) absolutely your brother's making 80 to 100 million dollars so what it's still asking i don't like asking people for things I know you don't, but I'm just saying mm. that, that to me it's a lot better than screwing you up your career an NBA and, your game and lose your livelihood life. over asking your brother for some money. Yeah, I would. I would. It seems like cutting off your nose to spite your face. This guy was also a fringe NBA guy. Like I'm not sure he had much future in the NBA. Well, he's he's younger than Michael Porter Jr., mm-hmm. so he had some potential. Like I said, when he played for the Raptors this year, he actually had some decent games. 
to where they saw something in him and he was getting more run. Now he's done for the rest of his and he's labeled yeah. the rest of his life. It's kind of funny. He was prop betting himself and playing the unders. <laughs> yeah, and then getting hurt, faking injuries. I, well, that's the only way to assure it, right? I actually like this story. Uh, look, this has been going on forever. Now that like these companies have become more bigger scale and national, now the policing of it's gotten better. This is why gambling is good. That's this right. is why all these like big gambling companies are fantastic. Yeah, because you would have not heard about this in the past, the college baseball betting in the pa- with a coach giving right. information that, that would have never been discovered. Like this stuff is actually good for sports. Yeah. Not look, I mean the money aspect of it alone. Who's outing these people? It's 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 not the government, it's not the league. Well he outed it's himself the, it's, it's, because yeah. well, they, I know, but I'm just overall it's usually the you know DraftKings and these different companies tracking it because they know they have to keep within you know government regulations. <laughs> they're the people that are getting they're outing these athletes and not not the, the fact that there's themselves. a prop bet on a on a two way player is one thing. But the second thing was that he had somebody put down twenty thousand dollars on two different bets on him to go under on his prop bets. You don't think that throws up a red flag? I saw somebody, uh, it might have been a Chase, my buddy Chase. He said that um, he said that these prop bets for these little fringe players, and that it's, <laughs> it's no one really wants to bet on this. This is their way of catching the guys that are betting on it, like in this case. They said it's Porter's normally brother. like minimal bets. The most on a player on most nights was like a grand, two grand. 20 grand throws up yeah. the biggest red flag on the planet. The, those bets are in there to catch these guys. It's, it's hilarious. It's awesome. I have a cash settlement, but I have a structured i have a structured settlement but i need cash now JT JT JT. how about vince young can't take a punch oh boy vince young he... cannot take a punch he got clocked a little sucker punch no doubt about it so you don't think he would do well in our uh no, in, our, in our bracket then he's, he's got a glass jaw he's got yeah. a weak chin that he's, also, vince young. he's also got a ring i don't care he has both things are true he's got a glass jaw Vince Young, what are you nominating? For uh, I'm going to nominate uh, Joel's uh, non-future career as a defense attorney. Mm. Did not not Thanks, not, not his man. best performance uh, promoting Glenn Davis earlier. He today. was arguing Glenn Davis in uh, our fight Thanks, bracket. Oh, uh, he's banged up. He's old. <laughs> he's, he's bringing. He's, he's old bringing. He's got one wheel and he can't move. He's bringing one leg to a butt kicking contest. He was putting. Glenn, he was burying Glenn he was in the burying H. Glenn. He was burying Glenn in the H. He was burying Glenn. You have another one. Oh, not off the top of my head. Uh, uh, the people in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, that forced the Utah team because of call. race, racial slurs and everything, and they had to switch hotels before they got beat in the women's NCAA tournament. Why do you got to throw out they got beat? Didn't they, already, didn't they already have enough happen to them before because you I had think to they're say kind they got of beat? Lending, lending that to part of the reason why they got beat. Not great. Uh, onside sneaks are done in the NFL. I don't, I don't like, like the new kickoff rule. Uh, there's some things I like. There's some things I don't like. I don't like that the onside sneaks are done. That that, that part I dislike. I do like that we're actually going to get more returns now. Yeah, I do, do like, like that tackle thing. The hip drop. The hip drop. Uh, I think there were guys in the league intentionally trying to hurt guys by the way they were doing it. But I think sometimes it, there, it's inescapable that you have to do a tackle similar to catch a guy from behind. Yeah, but NFL wants more points. So there's that aspect of it. And Wednesday night NFL games should not be a thing. They're going to play not. two games on Christmas. Should not. Yeah. <laughs> it's so Terrible. bad. I don't like Thursday night games. I think Thursday night games are inhumane. Wednesday night games, I know they're going to have the True. same amount of days are inhumane. All right, does it for us. Thanks to Brian for doing all the hard work. He's blank. I'm Branham. We'll talk to you tomorrow, Houston. Coming up next, ESPN National. And then Hall of Fame with our guy Booker T, who advanced in our bracket. Brad Gilmore coming up at 7. It's the Killer Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5.